God of Slaughter. Chapter 1 Reborn in Another World Shi Yan woke up with a start. His head was throbbing in pain. Once he had recovered slightly, he looked around and found himself in a dim stone cave which was as big as a basketball court. Piles of bones were scattered all over the place and a dozen corpses in strange clothes lay beside him. The clothes looked new and bright. These people had died recently. Where am I? Is this still the Bahamas? Shi Yan, 27 years old, was an extreme sports fanatic. His mother died early, while his father died of cancer in the prime of his life. This left him with such a large amount of wealth which he could never use in a lifetime. He owned many things at an early age, which other people would pursue for their entire life. Although young and rich, he had no future goals, which made him unhappy for a long time. It wasn't until he was 17 that he had his first taste of extreme sports, which brought him unspeakable excitement. Given his large amount of wealth, he could undertake these sports as much as he liked, while ordinary people would not able to afford this. Those classic extreme sports, such as free climbing, crocodile bungee, low-altitude parachuting, volcanic skateboarding, cliff diving and limbo skating, brought Shi Yan the greatest pleasure. He enjoyed the thrill of death that invigorated him and made his blood boil. In ten years, he had tried all sorts of dangerous extreme sports which had built up Shi Yan's extraordinarily strong body. Hundreds of near-death experiences made his nerves as hard as steel. He once joked that he was the man who was the closest to the Grim Reaper. The Blue Hole exploration in the Bahamas was the most dangerous extreme sport he ever took part in. Some of these blue holes were hundreds of meters deep, while some were complex like mazes. What's more, every little move could stir the sand up on the bottom of the cave. No matter how bright your light was, you wouldn't be able to see anything in front of you. Even if you were an experienced diver, you had to wear a steel wire before you jumped into a blue hole. The steel wire was the lifeline of explorers, the length of which decided the distance explorers could go. Moving beyond that distance was tantamount to suicide, because nobody could get out of that maze without a steel wire. According to the statistics from the Bahamas Maritime Institute, there was an average of 20 cave diving-related deaths in the Blue Hole, most of whom died from losing direction. In this most dangerous extreme adventure, Shi Yan threw away his lifeline, the steel wire, entering into a suicidal adventure, and finally lost himself in the mysterious blue hole. And in the blue hole, getting lost would mean certain death. Dash. Shi Yan lay collapsed on the ice-cold rock ground, looking at his surroundings with the aid of a dim light coming from the cave walls. In his mind there appeared some memory fragments that didn't belong to him. This was the memory of another Shi Yan. That boy was 17 years old, and had the same name as himself. Attracted to antiques, that boy was obsessed with all kinds of historical remains, and because of an ancient map, he strived for half a year and eventually got here with his guards. Feeling weak all over, Shi Yan frowned and slowly lifted himself up. Just then, to his surprise, Shi Yan noticed that this body was not his own but that of the other Shi Yan who was only 17 years old. He was dumbstruck for a moment. Did I die in the blue hole? No. I am still alive, but in an unbelievable way. According to the other Shi Yan's memory, this place was called Grace Mainland, where there was no science or technology. No soldiers or wars. Many dwellers here showed mysterious abilities not long after they were born. Some had the power of lightning, some could control plants, some could tunnel into the earth, some could use the chill of frost, and some were capable of communicating with demon beasts. People with these various abilities would all become warriors, and their abilities were referred to as martial spirits. Martial spirits were something one was born with, and only very few could acquire a spirit through some stroke of luck. That is why this mainland was named Grace Mainland as the warriors believed that martial spirits were a gift from God. The majority of warriors weren't blessed with a martial spirit. Ordinary people could train hard to become a warrior, but there was no way to obtain a martial spirit through training. Martial spirits were so powerful that they could benefit a warrior's training, 
increasing their combat potential significantly and granting them their own special abilities. As a result, among warriors of same level, those who owned a martial spirit tended to be stronger, and achieved greater results. They did half the work with double the results. There was a higher probability where one inherited the martial spirit. In general, if one of the parents possessed a spirit, there was a high possibility that their kid would inherit the same spirit. If both of the parents had a spirit, their child would have an even greater chance to inherit one of their spirits, either from the father or the mother. There was only a one in a hundred chance that a couple, who both possessed a spirit, would give birth to an ordinary child. Even rarer was the situation where the kid inherited both spirits from his parents. This inherent type of martial spirit was called twin spirits, and those type of lucky individuals which possessed them were also known as a son of God. It only happened to one in ten thousand couples who possessed different spirits. Shi Yan stood there and continued to put the foreign memories into order. The original owner of this body came from the Shi family. They possessed the petrification martial spirit which could make the body as hard as a rock in battle, preventing damage to the body. As said fighter raised their cultivation, the petrification martial spirit would become much stronger, to the point where they were almost indestructible. Unfortunately, this guy didn't inherit the petrification martial spirit, and was thus considered a poor successor for the martial arts that the Shi family trained in. He also showed no interest in martial arts, and never learned anything about them either. All he had been devoted to was the exploration of historical remains. Thanks to that ancient map, he had crawled through numerous heavy bushes and suffered a lot to arrive at this ancient cave. Woo woo woo. Hoo hoo hoo. Suddenly a devil-like cry came from the deep within the cave. Astonished, Shi Yan looked around to find a blood pool in the direction the voice came from. The blood pool, about ten square meters in size, was located in the middle of the cave, filled with a red fluid which looked just like blood. It was bubbling on the surface and was giving out horrifying shrieks and howls when the bubbles popped. He realized that his escorts were driven insane by the howls, and they had started to kill each other. They all died in succession, while the 17-year-old Shi Yan fainted. It was all because of the blood pool. Shi Yan stared at the blood pool with a rigid face. The howls slowly evoked the desire to kill within him, and made him want to kill anyone around him. His head was still aching and the howls from the blood pool never stopped tormenting him, which made it hard for him to concentrate. Must be the blood pool. His countless near-death experiences had steeled his mind and Shi Yan managed to calm down. Although his head still ached, he was able to stay focused, and walked towards the blood pool. Crack, crack, crack. Shi Yan looked dignified, while grey dry bones shattered under his feet. Judging by the pile of bones in the cave, he could only guess how many people had previously died in this place. The pool was the source of this evil. If he wanted to examine the secrets of the blood pool, he had to be prepared for death. The howls were getting louder and louder as he got closer to the blood pool, which drilled into his head like sharp knives. The sound of slaughter contained in the howls almost destroyed his reasoning. He wouldn't have been able to bear this pain if it weren't for the extreme conditioning he faced for so many years that had slowly formed his spirit. A heap of bones was situated beside the blood pool, some milky white bones also floated in the center of the pool. This small blood pool was like the Shura Blood Sea, which had devoured an uncountable number of lives. Shi Yan had a feeling that his soul was summoned here because of this bizarre blood pool. He thought maybe this blood pool was his ticket back to the blue hole in the Bahamas. When he got closer to the blood pool, Shi Yan suddenly found something strange. The blood in the middle of the pool was scarlet and thick, but he couldn't detect the slightest whiff of blood. On the contrary, the air around him was very fresh, even filled with an unexplainable fragrance. After careful inspection, he determined that the exotic fragrance actually came from the blood pool. Shi Yan was full of curiosity, and thought that there must be something weird in the blood pool. Again, he took a few steps forward. All of a sudden, an illusion of an endless sea, filled with scarlet red blood entered his mind. Countless corpses had accumulated to form islands. 
some of the bones were like those of the Cretaceous period dinosaurs and were as large as a small hill. There was a sound coming out from the Blood Sea, repeatedly screaming kill. 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 Shi Yan tried to stay calm, but he couldn't. His heart started to beat faster and faster. A suffocating and terrifying pressure overwhelmed him. He felt a familiar touch knew that he had never been this close to death before. He knew that the next step likely meant death. However, those dreary adventures over the years hadn't terrified him, but instead had given him the utmost pleasure. Being face to face with death and surviving all perils was the true definition of extreme sports. Step by step, one after the other. Under the call of the blood pool, Shi Yan finally went up to the edge. He stared at the small blood pool, the insane side of his character had been triggered. He roared, let's see what you have to offer, small blood pool. Then he jumped into the pool. Chapter 2 The Body Remodeled As Shi Yan entered the blood pool, the blood was already up to his waist. Suddenly the blood in the pool started to move around as if it was alive, creeping up and down his body like vines. Seconds later, his whole body was covered with blood and tightly bound. The crimson blood in the pool was like vicious snakes, untiringly wrapping around him until it formed a bloody cocoon. A wave of intense pain spread throughout his body. Shi Yan felt as if his brain was being sliced into pieces. It felt even worse than death. It was as if tens of millions of tiny worms were drilling into his body and squirming around in his arms, legs, bones and viscera eating away at his blood and flesh. Shi Yan couldn't see anything. He wanted to scream, but couldn't make a sound, and neither could his body move. A strange liquid started flowing slowly along his ribs like a small stream and tore open his veins wherever it passed. Then the liquid rapidly accelerated and divided into numerous strands, madly surging into the 720 meridians within his body. The pain in his head grew stronger. Shi Yan felt some weird changes happening within his meridians. He felt that his 720 meridians had enlarged significantly, as they interchanged between feeling scorching hot and biting cold. It felt extremely uncomfortable. Soon after, his meridians turned into a little cyclones and were swirling madly. A small amount of the liquid infused itself into every cyclone and was swiftly absorbed into them. After absorbing the liquid, the cyclones became enlarged and the process accelerated. The intensity of the pain was almost unbearable. He felt that his body was like a huge vessel, filled with the strange liquid. It was transforming him in ways he couldn't possibly comprehend. The liquid is transforming the meridians in my body. As this thought flashed through his mind, he fainted. Dash. After a long time, Shi Yan awoke again. The searing pain had disappeared and was replaced by a numb pain in his meridians. The liquid had returned to its origin and blood pool was tranquil. Unexpectedly, he felt a warm sensation flowing through his body. After this sensation made a complete cycle, he felt extraordinary comfortable and his body had increased in strength. Profound Qi It dawned on him that it originated from the blood pool. This is the precious qi which could only be obtained by warriors. Within the memory of the other Shi Yan, he came to know that profound qi was the source of power for warriors. It was the foundation for warriors to support and release powerful martial arts. Warriors were strictly ranked into ten grades, according to the strength of their profound qi. These were elementary, nascent, human, disaster, earth, nirvana, sky, spirit true god and king god, with each grade containing three divisions. Warriors were stronger than commoners. Profound Qi determines the status one would have. One could be called a warrior as long as he possessed the slightest amount of profound Qi. The vast majority of people couldn't obtain any profound Qi throughout their entire life. Once obtained, they could strengthen it simply by training. Therefore, as long as a warrior possessed Qi, they would always have a place to return to. As the weak profound qi gently circulated throughout his body, Shi Yan came to his senses. Even if he couldn't go back to his world, he would survive here. 
just then he noticed that the blood cocoon was still tightly wrapped around him. Shi Yan spared no effort to struggle. Heya! The blood cocoon cracked, and Shi Yan jumped out. Looking around, he found himself in that odd cave with the bones everywhere. However, the blood pool had all dried up. Only a few pieces of broken bones were left. A huge glittering blood cocoon, as thin as a wafer, towered in the center of the empty pool. After Shi Yan glanced at, a small flame ignited at the bottom of the cocoon. The flame grew wildly and started to burn the bones. In a few minutes, the blood cocoon and the bones were all burnt to nothingness. A red light sparkled in the dry pool. There was a sparkling delicate ring quietly lying there. Shi Yan stared at the strange ring for a while and assumed this ring must have some connection with the blood pool. After a few seconds of hesitation, he stepped in again, picked up the ring, and wore it on the ring finger of his left hand. The ring conveyed a warmth that made Shi Yan feel strongly connected to it, as if the ring had become a part of his body. All at once, the weak profound chi in his body lost control and rushed towards the crimson ring. However, it was blocked by the skin of his finger and failed to enter the ring. Shi Yan was shocked and tried to take off the ring immediately, only to find that the ring had been firmly placed onto his ring finger like an unmovable boulder. No matter how hard he tried, the ring wouldn't move an inch. Now that the profound chi couldn't break the skin, it went back to normal after a while. The warmth and red gleam on the ring faded away as well. The ring kept silent after that, thus Shi Yan started to analyze the situation. The blood in the pool must have purified my body. The blood pool was 10 square meters in size. Though not huge, the blood it contained would weigh at least a few tons. There was no way for an elephant to hold that much liquid inside its body. Shi Yan turned pale. He subconsciously looked around and wanted to see how his body had changed. Had it swelled up? He was incredibly anxious. To his surprise, his body was only skin and bones. The clothes on him looked ridiculously large now. It was better to call him a withered mummy. Shi Yan turned even paler. He never expected that this blood pool would not only fail to send him back to his previous world, but would make such inconceivable changes to him. Guru Guru. His stomach began rumbling and he suddenly felt extremely ravenous. He thought he could almost devour an elephant. But there was nothing to eat in the cave. He glanced at the dry blood pool and was sad to find that he could no longer return to his world. Shi Yan decided to find a weapon. He remembered those escorts had fought against each other with all kinds of weapons. However, after he examined them, he found that all of the weapons had rusted or been destroyed, none of which could be used anymore. Crestfallen, Shi Yan could only leave empty-handed from the stone cave. Dash. There was a heatwave in the moist air, with the sound of rippling water running in the distance. Ancient trees rose from the ground and blocked the sun like a giant umbrella. Only a few spots of sunlight could be seen on the wetland. The dark forest. Shi Yan recalled this place with the help of the memory of his new body once he got out of the cave. The dark forest covered a large area, where the trees were too thick to let the sunlight in. Thus the forest was damp and dark even in the daytime. That was the reason it was called the Dark Forest. The Dark Forest was surrounded by the Merchant Union, the Fire Empire and the God-Blessed Empire. The Merchant Union was to the north of the forest, the God-Blessed Empire in the south, and the Fire Empire in the West. Merchants from the three countries had to pass through the Dark Forest to trade. Demon beasts always made their appearance in the Dark Forest, some of which even reached the sixth or seventh grade. As the trade caravans, soldiers and warriors crossed the Dark Forest now and then, they knew that demon beasts of a high level only appear in special areas, and those of a low level were usually vagrants. In general, Trade caravans wouldn't come across high-level demon beasts as long as they traveled along their usual routes. However, soldiers and warriors often adventured into the beast-infested areas looking for fights. Great risk yields great benefits. Once a soldier killed a demon beast of the sixth or seventh level, he would immediately obtain a large amount of crystal coins. 
each demon beast above level 6 had a monster core inside its body. This monster core was of great use to warriors, alchemists, and blacksmiths. Apart from the monster core, its fur, fangs, bones, flesh, and poison were all very valuable. The body of a high-grade demon beast was full of treasures. This attracted bold soldiers and warriors to adventure into the dark forest. However, only a few people would achieve their goals and gain some benefits. The majority of them underestimated the wisdom and strength of a demon beast and thus, paid for it with their lives. Shi Yan observed his surroundings for a while and heard the sound of water off in the distance, combined with the sound of women talking. As Shi Yan was hesitating, he noticed a slight rustling sound from the bushes not far away, as if someone was fiddling with the leaves. Shi Yan subconsciously looked towards that direction. Through the thick bushes he saw a slim and graceful female body. The woman took off her white belt, squatted down, and showed her peach-shaped white bottom to him. Her snow-white hand was waving off annoying mosquitoes, as she was about to urinate. The woman apparently didn't notice the eyes behind her, as she began to sing happily. At first Shi Yan was stunned. However he was soon enchanted by that charming white butt and couldn't move his eyes. Pa! The woman suddenly clapped on her smooth, white left hip to kill a mosquito. The movement of her butt captivated Shi Yan. Soon the woman finished urinating, rebuckled her belt, and muttered to herself, Damn mosquitoes! Unexpectedly, the woman turned around quickly. Her hands sent out a green arc of lightning which targeted all the surrounding mosquitoes and killed them on the spot. As she turned, Shi Yan finally saw her delicate appearance. She looked around twenty years old and five and a half feet in height. Her face was glowing like a bright moon and she had a slim waist, full chest, and nice posture. She was wearing an exquisite lavender robe and silver soft armor which couldn't cover her fascinating figure as a legendary wild vixen. Shi Yan focused on her hot body and thought to himself that she was more beautiful than the most popular superstars in his world. Shi Yan couldn't stop his eyes from wandering. Suddenly, the woman looked directly into his eyes though the huge banana leaves. The beauty's eyes flashed like lightning. Chapter 3 First Encounter Did you see me naked? The beauty was apparently annoyed, but still dangerously charming. Yes. I never miss anything in front of my eyes. Shi Yan nodded, not even bothering to deny it. Did you enjoy it? Skin like porcelain, breasts like flowers. I'd say it was a feast for the eyes. Shi Yan was strangely honest. You want to see some more? Mo Yanya was furious. She had never met such a shamelessness man. Well, if you wouldn't mind taking your pants off and don't mind me staring at you, then yes, I would love to take a closer look. Shi Yan smiled. Apparently, Shi Yan didn't want to pretend to be somebody he was not. Before he came to this world, every time he finished some extreme sport, he would have to find a woman for pleasure. Extreme sports was his biggest enthusiasm, while women were the most important spice in his life. Mo Yanyu almost jumped up and down on her feet. Who the hell is this guy? What a bastard. Looks like a ghost and came out of nowhere. Every word he says is so shameless and he even seems to be proud of himself. If there is a competition for shameless bastards, he would be holding the crown. Mo Yanyu had to take a deep breath before she began to talk again, while her beautiful breasts heaved up and down, a surge of rage bloomed in her chest. Surprisingly, she laughed, nice. Good. Very good. Hearing her say this, Shi Yan was even happier, and a horny smile appeared on his face. Wow, it seems you don't mind at all. Well, please go ahead. I am really looking forward to it. I didn't pay much attention the last time, but this time I won't miss anything. Mo Yanya was completely shocked by Shi Yan's response. After she figured out he wasn't teasing, she couldn't control her rage anymore. Won't miss anything my ass. Cursing, Mo Yanyu crossed her arms. Her hands were suddenly surrounded by shining green light. She spread her arms, 
shooting a green beam as sharp as lightning towards Xi Yan. Verdant crescent slash. Within seconds, a green light flashed by. All things between the two were cut into pieces. With an unstoppable force, the green lightning struck Xi Yan's right in the chest. Boom! Xi Yan was lifted off the ground and tossed backwards. His skeleton-like body couldn't balance himself and fell hard into a thicket. His chest was badly lacerated to the point where bones were visible. Feeling such a searing pain like that, he almost felt like dying. Following the verdant crescent slash, the path between the two people was clear. Everything in between had been turned to dust. Mo Yanyu made her move towards Shi Yan, her face as cold as ice. Shi Yan finally came back to his senses. The intense pain in his chest made him realize that the girl in front of him wasn't easy to deal with. In the world where he came from, even if he did the same thing, the worst case scenario the girl calling him an asshole or filing a lawsuit against him, nothing like this. He was still new to this place and was not used to the cruel way of life here. Especially in the dark forest. Because this forest was not subject to any country's jurisdiction and also contained a large variety of demon beasts as well as precious and exotic herbs, warriors took the forest to be their training grounds, while mercenaries and merchants saw this place as a natural treasure trove. There were no restriction and no rules in this forest. Due to the demon beasts and precious herbs here, robbery and murder were never strangers in this place. Betrayal and backstabbing were also old friends within this forest. What an insane place! The law of the jungle ruled the dark forest. The strong devour the weak. This was exactly why he got hit so hard. He let his guard down, never expecting a girl like her would attempt to kill him for such a trivial reason. Shi Yan's mind was suddenly crystal clear. The weak remaining profound chi inside of him gradually gathered around his wounds on his chest and began to heal him. With his profound chi moving around his body, the searing pain lessened. Footsteps on the wet ground indicated that Mo Yanya was approaching. Shi Yan jumped up nervously, calmed his mind, and looked straight at the girl walking slowly towards him. You intended to kill me. Still breathing. Mo Yanya frowned slightly, and stopped about 25 meters in front of Shi Yan. She took a curious but careful glance at him, and thought, there is profound Qi inside of him. A novice warrior. It seems I should have hit him harder. Shi Yan got serious this time, with no more teasing or joking. He focused his attention on the girl because he knew that she'd strike again soon. He could feel his Qi was more concentrated than ever. This was a matter of life and death. He couldn't afford any mistakes. Shi Yan quickly adjusted himself and returned to the cool-headed state he always maintained during his extreme sports. At that moment, he couldn't feel any pain in his chest. He could feel nothing but the weak profound chi flowing through his body and rushing through his veins, getting faster and faster. The next moment, a wild surge of energy erupted from the deepest corner of his body. The feeling was mind-blowing. He felt like his brain had exploded. After that, the whole world suddenly became silent. Badump! Badump! Shi Yan could hear his own heartbeat loud and clear. With his heartbeat racing, the cells throughout his whole body were activated. Every inch of his body became so sensitive and he could feel everything taking place around him. He could even feel the slightest tremor on his skin when a little light breeze brushed against his body. The strangest energy started to spread from every pore of his body, pouring into his veins and bones. It felt like electricity speeding throughout his entire vascular system. After an acute pain in Shi Yan's eyes, the world in front of him became incredibly colorful and vivid. He was able to see the tiniest details on every leaf. He looked at the woman who was a combination of extreme beauty and cruelty, feeling her profound chi flowing underneath her skin in a beautiful rhythm in her veins. The forest was still the same. But to his eyes, it was like a completely different world out there. Before Shi Yan could enjoy this wonderful feeling some more, he suddenly sensed that the profound chi inside the woman's body was flowing at double the rate as before. Shi Yan could even feel his nerves trembling. Subconsciously, 
he pushed his left foot off the ground with all the force he had. With a strong power rushing out of his foot, Shi Yan quickly moved away from where he was standing. Another green blaze in the shape of a dagger almost left a mark on him. The green lightning cut everything by his side with a horrifying force. This time the attack was much more precise and stronger than the previous strike. Shi Yan couldn't help sweating, maybe it was nervousness, maybe it was excitement. This was the first time that Shi Yan had experienced the type of fight that could kill within seconds. How cool was that? This was truly a battle of life and death. He enjoyed this more than any kind of extreme sports. In the old world where he came from, there were all kinds of extreme sports available. However, the law, moral codes, and rational thinking were like a huge cage, keeping him prisoner. He couldn't do things without boundaries, he couldn't indulge in his passions, couldn't touch the wires of law and moral codes. But here, in this world where only the powerful ruled, nothing was prohibited. Nothing was impossible. Shi Yan suddenly felt excitement growing inside of him. He felt this might be the right place for him. This might just be his paradise. Um, Emo Yanyu couldn't hide her surprise. She didn't expect Shi Yan to evade this attack. She was so sure that he would be torn into pieces in this strike and didn't prepare for Plan B. Hearing her voice, Shi Yan who was still enjoying his survival had just now come back to his senses. Without hesitation, Shi Yan jumped up like an agile monkey. He grabbed a vine on a tree and swung himself forward. He then grabbed another vine with lightning speed, flew forward, and reached for the next vine. In a series of smooth movements, he managed to approach Mo Yanyu within seconds. When he was bouldering, the vines on the mountain were indeed a handy tool. For an extreme sports enthusiast like Shi Yan, swinging with the support of vines was a natural instinct. Like a wild monkey, Shi Yan was moved quickly through all the vines and trees. He didn't follow a specific pattern, but managed to approach Mo Yanyu. Mo Yanyu had scorn on her face, and shot more and more green light daggers into the sky, destroying every vine in the direction of Shi Yan. However, he was able to escape her attacks by a hair's breadth every time and quickly grasped onto another vine. The truth was, Shi Yan could already sense the movement of Qi in Mo Yanyu's body. He everything was crystal clear to him now. When he saw a surge of profound Qi underneath her skin, he would quickly move in another direction. During his movements, Shi Yan started to feel that the blood in the pool had changed him somehow. He was not that strong before, but now, not only did the high-intensity movements not tear him apart, they also made him even more sensitive and agile than ever before. His senses became sharper and his body became stronger and more flexible. Shwish! With a loud noise, a sharp green lightning flew towards him, tearing apart dozens of vines behind him. Apparently, Mo Yanyu almost exhausted her profound chi after such strong attack. This is my chance. Shi Yan suddenly jumped down from the trees, taking Mo Yanyu in his arms like a greedy eagle. Before she could gather enough profound chi to strike back, Shi Yan was already on top of her. Boom! Mo Yanyu fell on the ground with Shi Yan on top of her, tightly bringing her body under his control. Face to face, Shi Yan could feel her soft body more closely. Her plump breasts felt so delicious and fragrant, he squeezed the buns up close to his burning chest. Shi Yan felt pleasure that was beyond any words, secretly appreciating the woman's body. What a piece of art! Unlike the ordinary women from his old world who looked sexy and plump on the outside, they were nothing without bras. Let go of me! Mo Yanyu expressed her disgust but didn't really struggle. She cursed, fucking let go of me. If you ever want to see the sunlight again. Bitch. Shi Yan sneered, you almost killed me. Why should I let you go so easily? Mo Yanyu suddenly became nervous. Before she could do anything, she felt the kiss of this creep on her beautiful and sacred face. At the same time, the bastard's hands didn't rest either. Shi Yan was touching her ass and began to rub it in an insatiable way. Mo Yanyu flew into a rage, 
the martial spirit inside of her exploded with a terrifying power. Shi Yan who was still enjoying this wonderful feast suddenly felt a horrible electric current flowing through her. He was instantly electrocuted, as if he had been struck by a taser. Shi Yan couldn't feel his own body anymore, nor could he gather any qi inside his body. Mo Yanyu pushed Shi Yan away, her eyes were cruel and icy. She glanced at Shi Yan who was lying on the ground for a while, and cursed again. I won't let you die that easily you bastard. Mo Yanyu picked Shi Yan up like a feather, passing through the forest towards the crowd with a cold face. Chapter 4, Guinea Pig Tall trees formed a huge umbrella above a small river, beside which was a dragon drinking water, carrying several bags. Ten strong, tall warriors were dining and talking lewdly near the dragon. Behind the dragon, a group of malnourished men were crouching and having a coarse meal. They were all wearing chains, their eyes dim. In a sedan chair on the dragon, a poker-faced thin old man was sitting motionlessly. He was wearing a black robe embroidered with five white cauldrons on his chest. He kept staring at the warriors and the chained men. Every warrior was frightened and turned silent once the old man looked upon them viciously. Are you done? Then move your ass and walk. Mo Yanyu showed up from the bush with a rigid face, lifting Shi Yan up in her hand. The warriors wrapped up their unfinished meal and were embarrassed, yet, yeah, we're done. We're done. Mo Yanyu went up to the old man and showed an unwillingly smile, Master Karu, have you finished your meal? The old man nodded coldly and murmured, Miss Mo, it will still take three months to get to the merchant union. However, we have only sixteen medicine slaves left. I'm afraid we won't make it. Do not worry, Master Karu. We will catch more medicine slaves for you. Mo Yanyu threw Shi Yan onto the ground and laughed, Look, a new slave. Hum Karu nodded as he examined Shi Yan with his evil eyes. Too skinny. He won't even survive a week. He frowned. Yes I know. But, he has profound qi in him, Mo Yanyu explained. He is a warrior. Apparently Karu was now interested, and his eyes lit up. Definitely. Mo Yanyu confirmed. That is good. Master Karu smirked. He continued to focus his eyes on Shi Yan. After quite a while, he nodded slowly. Very good. Miss Mo, feed him. I want him to be strong first. A severely injured warrior cannot bear what I am going to do. It would be a total waste if he died through the course of my medicine when he is still too weak. Do not worry master. Mo Yanya wore her rigid face and scolded, Johnson. What are you doing there? Shackle this man as soon as possible. Yes, ma'am. This bald, fat man appeared to be six foot six. He took out a new set of shackles from the bags on the dragon and swiftly shackled Shi Yan's hands and feet. This giant wore heavy armor and his robust muscles looked extremely powerful. The heavy dark armor seemed as light like a feather and didn't affect him whatsoever while he was moving. Johnson, take care of him. And always keep an eye on him. Mo Yanyu glared at Shi Yan in hatred, and rushed to the head of their caravan, not bothering to waste one more second on him. I can handle it, miss. I'm the best at it. The bald man chuckled cunningly and reassured her, punching his chest. Shi Yan observed silently despite his body hurting all over. He knew it would be useless to say anything at the moment. In this dog-eat-dog -dog world, morals was the last thing one should believe in. He will receive no pity and would only become a skeleton and if he didn't adapt to this world soon. As the profound qi flowed slowly within him for a while, Shi Yan felt less pain. However, the newly added shackles were like a mountain on his exposed and feeble body, making every step much harder. Bang! Shi Yan suddenly got lashed by a whip, which was so fast and powerful that his back was cracked open and ached badly. He turned around to see the big man Johnson smirking with a whip in his hand. Damn medicine slave! Move faster! Or do you want one more lash, hey? He laughed with an evil smirk on his face. 
Shi Yan gazed at him for a few seconds and didn't reply. He staggered towards the medicine slave in front of him, before Johnson could lift his whip again. Every step consumed a lot of energy. After Shi Yan moved forward, Johnson's smirk disappeared and was replaced by a weird expression. Along the way, many stumbling slaves had been taken care of by Big Johnson, who was famed for his brutality. Two slaves were even beaten to death by him before Master Karu could even test his medicine on them. All of the medicine slaves looked at him with either fear or hatred. However, this man didn't show the slightest hint of fear or hatred. There was only an incredible silence, cold and solemn. This man didn't seem to realize his status as a prisoner. Maybe he didn't clearly understand the situation. The solemn eyes gave Johnson the illusion that he was prey. This made him uncomfortable. However, since Shi Yan had begun obediently marching, Johnson couldn't find a reason to make a fuss. He swore to himself that he would force Shi Yan to be frightened of him. Big Johnson enjoyed the sight of others' frightened eyes so much. He found an interesting pleasure in being in control of the life of another. In the following days, Shi Yan stayed mute and obedient. He obeyed every order that was given by Johnson without any resistance. No change of temper, no interest in anything. Shi Yan was different from the other medicine slaves. Even Johnson, who was always waiting for a chance to give him a lesson, couldn't find any excuse to trick him. Shi Yan was unbelievably cooperative. Johnson was confused. Shi Yan only talked when he asked for food, which was under Master Karu's permission. In no time, the warriors noticed that Shi Yan had a big appetite and he enjoyed the inferior food. He ate what seven medicine slaves ate as a first meal. And day by day, he ate more and more. The warriors couldn't believe their eyes. How could that weak skinny body contain so much food? At the beginning they worried that he couldn't digest it but it soon turned out to be unnecessary. It was clear that Shi Yan had not only digested the inferior food, but also grown much stronger. The changes in Shi Yan's body pleased Master Karu significantly. This cunning old man allowed Shi Yan to eat as much as he wanted. As Shi Yan grew stronger day by day, Johnson gradually became worried. Every time he looked into Shi Yan's solemn eyes, Johnson got the premonition that Shi Yan would be a calamity in the future. But still, he couldn't go against Master Karu's order and had to supply Shi Yan with enough food. Nevertheless, Johnson knew who Master Karu was and what he could do. Thus he was relieved, and hoped Master Karu would take action soon. After eating enough for twelve people, Shi Yan put down his bowl, licked the last grain of rice from the corner of his mouth, and closed his eyes, neglecting the dumbstruck medicine slaves beside him. That huge amount of food was soon digested in his body, which was like a bottomless pit. It was also like a precise machine that transformed the food into nutrition, supplying his blood, bones, tendons, muscles and inner organs, strengthening his weak body secretly. The injury on his chest had long since recovered. It took only a day and a half and didn't leave a scar. He felt like was a different man. Only Shi Yan knew precisely what had happened to his own body in such short time. He could sense the transformations in occurring within himself every second. While the nutrition from the food strengthened his body, the weak profound qi inside him had also risen by a level during its continuous circulation. Shi Yan could feel a great strength now and the heavy shackles didn't weigh him down anymore. As he concentrated, he could tell the qi was flowing from his danshan, up to the governor vessel, down the reception vessel, and then balancing the water and fire in the heart and kidney. After it completed a small circulation, his profound qi grew stronger. Thanks to a little knowledge of Qigong, Shi Yan knew the difference between a small circulation and a big circulation. A small circulation only included the governor and the reception vessels, while a big circulation contained the twelve channels and the other six vessels. Since there were only two vessels, the governor and the reception vessels, which were open among his twelve channels and eight vessels, he could only complete a small circulation. From the other Shi Yan's memory, he concluded that only warriors of the elementary level could open all the channels and vessels to conduct a big circulation. 
Shi Yan carried on, for he believed that as long as the profound qi residing in him was strong enough, he would open his channels and vessels sooner or later. One more death. Two slaves have died from the medicinal trials in just six days. I saw that. That guy had already grown weak before he died. Terrible. Hideous. It's better to commit suicide than die that way. We will die that way too. There is no hope in sight. No suicide, no. Our family won't get a single blue crystal coin if we commit suicide. Alas. Endure it. We will be free if we survive half a year, and get some money. We must endure until we make it back to our wives and kids. Hearing this, all the medicine slaves went silent. They decided not to commit suicide and made up their minds to carry on. Chapter 5, Lightning Martial Spirit Shi Yan opened his eyes, staring at the medicine slaves at a distance. Those slaves mostly came from poor families. In order to survive, they had no choice but to sign the contract with Moyunyu, selling themselves as slaves. If they were lucky enough to survive the first six months, not only could they regain their freedom, but they would also get paid 200 purple crystal coins. If they were unlucky and died from medicinal trials, their family would receive the money instead. In the Grace mainland, one black crystal coin was equal to 100 purple crystal coins, which equaled 10,000 blue crystal coins. The annual income of an average citizen was merely 5 to 6 purple crystal coins. 200 purple crystal coins were almost the savings for 40 years of work in another job. Upon signing the contract, their family would receive 50 purple crystal coins on the spot, with the rest paid within the next six months. If something unfortunate happened, their family would be compensated regardless. It might take someone's entire life to make 200 purple crystal coins. But for the medicine claves, all it takes is six months of painful suffering. It was all worth it. At least that was what they thought. However, when they signed the contract, it never occurred to them that the medicinal trials would be so cruel and tormenting. Every few days, some of them would drop dead in the most horrible way. This made them so terrified that they began to make their own secret plans. But a contract was a contract. Once they signed their name on it, there was no way out. This meant, for the next six months, the M.O. family owned their lives. Any attempt to disobey the contract, or escape from the M.O. family, would be a death sentence. There is no such thing as a free lunch. It was already too late for them to recognize the danger of these medicinal trials. They had no choice but to accept all the pain as well as their miserable fate. Shi Yan knew that none of these slaves would make it. Sooner or later, they were going to die. Maybe tomorrow, or maybe later. He knew he was powerless to change all this. Therefore, he avoided contact with these slaves, thus avoiding any hurtful feelings when they died. Shi Yan frowned as he took a quick glimpse at Master Karu sitting in the sedan atop the ground dragon, trying his best not to be discovered. There were five white medicine bottles embroidered on Master Karu's chest, which meant that he was a level 5 mortality alchemist. In the Grace mainland, an alchemist was even more distinguished and rare than a warrior. Every alchemist had to be a warrior. The medicine they refined could help enhance a warrior's capability. There were special pills refined by a small number of extraordinary alchemists which could even enhance a warrior's martial spirit. Compared to the ten levels among warriors, the ranking of alchemists were based on their expertise in the field of medicine. There were five categories of alchemists in the Grace mainland, mortality, mystery, soul, royalty, and divinity. Under each category, there were seven sub-ranks. Every alchemist would carry a special token corresponding to his ranking. Alchemists of the mortality category would be embroidered with white medicine bottles on their chests. Mystery category, red flames, soul category, medicinal herbs, royalty category, wonder pills, and divinity category, medicinal cauldron. There were five white medicine bottles on Master Karu's chest so it was clear that he had the expertise of a level 5 mortality alchemist. 
since the medicine provided by alchemists could enhance the profound chi inside a warrior, this small group of people held a prestigious status among all warriors. Due to the low number of alchemists, every group were desperate to hire a good alchemist, which made the alchemists even more revered and exceptional. As a level 5 mortality alchemist, Master Karu was invited by Emoyanya from Medicine Valley within the God-Blessed Empire. Like the Shi family, the Emo family were also one of the five distinguished families of the Merchant Union. The Emo family were famous for their own martial spirit which had the power of lightning. A lot of people from the Emo family were naturally born with the lightning martial spirit, which would improve with the growth of their own skills. Emoyanya was from the youngest generation of warriors born with the lightning martial spirit from the Emo family. The Emo family were working in the medicine business within the merchant union. They never stopped searching for great alchemists for their own use, no matter where these alchemists came from. However, most alchemists had quirky personalities and had weird demands. Above all, they were the haughtiest people on earth and held very high opinions of themselves. Therefore, very few of them would accept the influence of powerful families like the M.O. family, and thus the M.O. family had tasted more failure than success when recruiting these alchemists. Although Master Karu was merely a level 5 mortality alchemist, the M.O. family had exhausted every means to convince him. Nobody knew what M.O. Yanyu had offered this time in order to persuade Master Karu to leave Medicine Valley and come and work for them. However, Master Karu was not the type of person who was fond of the orthodox. He was more interested in crooked ways of applying his skills to make poisons. However, the production of the finest poisons required a huge amount of medicinal trials, and the subject must be a living, breathing human. This was why these medicine slaves existed. Let's move. With Emoyanyu's order from the distance, the resting warriors all stood up and got ready for the march ahead. The medicine slaves resting on the roadside also quickly got up, for fear of the punishment they would face if they didn't manage to keep up. Shi Yan stood up, still and silent. He took a sniff at the woman who had the appearance of an angel but the heart of a scorpion. He had no choice but to follow the group before him obediently. In the merchant union, the relationship between the M.O. family and the Shi family was not that smooth. The fifth uncle of Emo Yanya was killed by Shi Yang three years ago due to a dispute over the mining rights at a mountain. After that, the Emo family started a relentless vendetta against the Shi family, causing the death of dozens of Shi family members. With this kind of hatred rooted between these two families, there were endless conflicts and fights going on. Shi Yan understood that death would be his fate if his true identity was ever discovered. But luckily the original owner of his body kept a low profile. He was not endowed with a martial spirit, didn't take much interest in the martial fights, and barely showed up to any martial activities organized by the merchant union. Therefore, there was no way that Emo Yanya would ever recognize him. Otherwise, Shi Yan wouldn't have been this lucky. As night fell, the moon was like a silver plate floating in the dark sky, accompanied by several sparkling stars. The M.O. family troop was camping and resting by the river. The ground dragon was resting quietly with only the sound of its heavy breathing permeating the air. The M.O. family warriors were gorging themselves on dried meat and laughing aloud in a perverted way, exchanging gossip about some notorious whores in a merchant union's brothel. When M.O. Yanya was not looking, a few audacious warriors would gaze at her sexy body in secret, lusting after her body. They knew that for people of their level, Emo Yanya was way out of their league. All they could do was fantasize. Shi Yan sat down in silence. When he was ready to circulate the profound chi inside his body, he noticed Emo Yanyu and Master Karu coming towards him from the front of the troops. Shit. Shi Yan felt that something bad was going to happen. His face suddenly looked like hell. The gut cutting poison is way too strong for normal people. It has already killed six slaves within the past two days. I guess only warriors can sustain its influence. That boy looks better than before, with much of his profound chi recovered, he can be our new lab rat. Master Karu said with a viperous smile on his face and a bowl of some black sticky liquid in his left hand. Well, 
Master Karu, please. Help yourself. He is all yours. Don't show any mercy. I want him to die as miserably as possible. Mo Yanyu also laughed. Haha, <laughs> no problem. Miss Mo, your wish is my command. I promise you that there is no way he will die easy. As you have seen in the previous trials of the gut-cutting poison, all the slaves died with their flesh and skin slowly decaying off their bones bit by bit. This boy looks tough. The stronger the subject is, the longer and more painful this decaying process will be. Just wait for the grand show and enjoy. Master Karu burst into wild laughter, as if Shi Yan were not standing right in front of him. That is perfect. Mo Yanyu smiled in consent. Her eyes were obviously shining with excitement, her hatred of Shi Yan churning in her gut. It was only a matter of time before the two of them finally arrived in front of Shi Yan. Master Karu didn't even bother to explain. He handed the bowl of black sticky liquid to Shi Yan and ordered with a cold voice, You, finish this. While Mo Yanyu took out her left hand, generating a snake of electric power circling around her fingers, her skin like porcelain and the electric power sparking like lightning. This was the perfect combination of the lightning martial spirit and profound chi. The energy was like a catalyst in the air with sound of small explosions all around. Woohoo! Johnson sneered from behind, boy. If you ever dare to resist, you know what's gonna happen to you, right? Master Karu couldn't contain his excitement. He clapped his hands, and shouted, Hey boy, the gut-cutting medicine is lots of fun. You are going to decay from the inside, little by little. The whole time, Mo Yanyu was staring at Shi Yan with an icy expression on her face. She assumed that he would say no. Her plan was, as soon as Shi Yan showed any disobedience, she would kick his ass with the electric sparks on her fingers, showing him who was the boss here. For days, every time she looked back on the humiliation she received from this man, she couldn't help but rage inside. Even her fiancé wouldn't dare to do that to her. Who the hell was this guy? How dare he? She would never forgive this guy. Sure. I'll do it. Shi Yan said dismissively. He took the bowl of nasty medicine and drank up with no hesitation. Chapter 6, Immortal Martial Spirit As the gut-cutting poison went down into his stomach, Shi Yan could feel a dull pain spreading inside. Then his gut and stomach was corroded little by little as if he drank sulfuric acid, and the pain inside his body gradually grew stronger. This gut-cutting poison is potent. It doesn't show its effects all at once, but releases its power gradually. A normal person will be corroded by it in two to three days and they will die with a decayed body. Karu narrowed his eyes and added, No hurry, let's wait for a day and see. Good. We will check on him at this time tomorrow night. Mo Yanyu nodded. She glanced at Shi Yan in satisfaction, and left with Karu happily. He <laughs> he. Fellow, your good days have come to an end. Johnson laughed loudly, showing his teeth. He suddenly felt quite relaxed when he thought that Shi Yan would die in no time, and a heavy burden dropped from his heart. Shi Yan lowered his head with an icy glint in his eyes. The gut-cutting poison began to take effect in his stomach and gut, which Shi Yan could sense clearly. It felt like tens of millions of ants were nibbling at his stomach and gut in order to compete for territory. The profound chi in the lower part of his belly circulated quickly into the gut and stomach. It was like a gentle stream quietly washing away the drug under Shi Yan's control. Wherever the profound chi went, it made the drug effects milder, thus Shi Yan became a little relieved. As a moist breeze blew softly, Shi Yan took a large deep breath. He sat down where he was, not paying any attention to Johnson beside him, and concentrated his mind to guide the profound chi to fight against the drug. The profound chi which had been growing much stronger recently, became Shi Yan's lifesaver. It kept moving in his stomach and guts. Every time it made a circle, the effects of the drug was softened a little, and his body was not corroded any faster. At that moment, Shi Yan realized what benefits profound Qi could bring, 
and was determined to train hard to be a top warrior with strong profound qi. If profound qi could bring such great benefits, how much more powerful would a God-blessed martial spirit be? If I could possess martial spirit I could definitely be much stronger and would feel less pain. For a moment, Shi Yan regretted that the owner of his body didn't inherit the petrification martial spirit of the Shi family, or he could have plucked up his courage and fought against Mo Yanyu. Maybe he could have won against her lightning with petrification and escaped without being made into a guinea pig. Time passed by and soon it was late at night, the moonlight bathing the land in its silver light. The warriors became quiet since it was an exhausting day of marching. They found a comfortable place and sat down respectively, training their profound chi in order to break through the limits of their bodies and entering higher levels and gaining stronger power. The medicine slaves looked up at the dark sky one by one. In the silent night, they tended to become homesick and scared. They would be filled with hopelessness whenever they thought about the fact that they could be a dead body the following day after the next medicinal trial. Under the pale moonlight, Shi Yan sat cross-legged on the ground, a dignified expression appearing on his serene face. After five hours of circulation, the profound qi had prevented the gut-cutting medicine from rapidly diffusing. Nonetheless, unknowingly, he realized that his profound qi had been consumed by one-third, and was continuously being depleted. But the gut-cutting poison didn't seem to fade, on the contrary, it was still quite potent. The gut-cutting medicine was waiting for the profound qi to run up and it could fight back. Shi Yan suddenly felt a severe cold shiver all over his body. Once his profound qi had dried up, he would have nothing to protect himself with. Then, like most commoners, his body would starting decaying from the inside out. He couldn't do anything about it. He could do nothing. But in this situation, he couldn't gain more profound qi by training. Once he took away the profound qi in his stomach and gut, the gut-cutting poison would gain strength and made him die faster. Thus he could do nothing but wait for it to happen, even if it meant death. Two more hours passed by. The effects of the gut-cutting poison didn't weaken, but increased continuously. He could clearly feel his profound chi was depleting faster and faster. He felt that he was getting closer to death's door. Once his profound chi ran out, his insides would corrode, but he wouldn't die quickly. The corrosion would spread throughout his body, and in five or six days, he would decay and die, just like every other medicine slave. Shi Yan was unyielding. With a cold glare, he stared at Mo Yanya who was sitting on an old tree far away. Under the bright moonlight, Mo Yanyu sat upright on a thick tree with a serene face. Her skin was like frost, while her long hair swayed with the wind. A spirit in the dark night. She didn't notice Shi Yan's cold eyes as she was wholehearted training and nourishing the vessel which contained her lightning martial spirit with profound chi. Master Karu was at the end of the troops. He stood against another ancient tree and was carefully reading a book about poison in his right hand his left hand in his cuff. Now and then, he looked in the direction of Shi Yan with a slippery smirk in the corner of his mouth. I can't let it go like this. Shi Yan thought with knitted brows. He operated the profound chi and at the same time pondered on the ways to solve his dilemma. If it went on like this, his profound chi would dry up before dawn and he would die without any doubt. He couldn't change anything even if he ran away, for the drug was in his body. The only solution was Master Karu. He invented the gut-cutting poison, thus he must have the cure for it. He could change his destiny of a decaying death only by getting that cure from Master Karu. Yet Master Karu was not only an alchemist, but also a warrior of the nascent realm. It was suicide if he tried to grab the cure from him. Shi Yan observed him for a while. He found that although Master Karu was reading, he was also looking in his direction every now and then. Apparently, he was not against taking precautions. He might have even figured out what Shi Yan would do and was waiting for him to take action. Several ideas flashed through his mind. Shi Yan knew that there was almost no possibility that he could succeed. Yet he had to turn to Master Karu and take action soon. Because it would become impossible to survive if his profound Qi ran out. 
Shi Yan adjusted his breath secretly and despite the poison in the stomach, he drew the profound qi back and prepared to fight. As expected, the gut-cutting poison became stronger and spread faster after the profound qi was drawn back. He was attacked by a wave of agony throughout his body. Just as Shi Yan was about to attack, he felt a sudden change in the corroded part of his gut. The cells there came back to life. A weak power wove through the corroded areas as if an invisible hand was sewing up his gut and stomach. Shi Yan was stunned. Although he was fully prepared, he didn't rush out irrationally. He quickly calmed down and concentrated on observing the changes inside of his body. His cells were full of life, while the rotten flesh twitched slightly and recovered gradually. After half an hour, the rotten parts had recovered and the pain had disappeared. A bolt flashed through Shi Yan's body and he was ecstatic in his heart. However, his face still looked as calm as a lake, as if he was deep asleep. Every ability that could operate without profound Qi must be a special martial spirit. The description of a martial spirit dawned on Shi Yan at that time. Pondering on it for a while, Shi Yan was assured that it was a special martial spirit that brought about the changes to his body. Self recovery of the body is a special ability which hadn't been discovered by people. The gut-cutting poison took effect again. Without profound qi as his defense, Shi Yan's insides started to rot again. But magically, it happened again. With his cells full of life, the rotten part recovered in a short period of time. The effect of the drug broke out continuously and corroded his insides many times. But every time, the self-recovery martial spirit activated and cured it before next round of corrosion. A martial spirit increased in strength as the level of the warrior increased, and sometimes it might undergo a special change. The higher the level of a warrior, the stronger the abilities their martial spirit showed. Another definition of a martial spirit appeared in his mind. Shi Yan was overjoyed. According to the ability of the self-recovery martial spirit, his self-recovery ability would increase as his level increased. Maybe when he reaches the sky and spirit realm, he could even cure broken limbs with the self-recovery martial spirit. If he could do that, maybe he could recover from a stab to the heart and survive? If that happened, once he reached the true god realm, maybe he would be immortal? A lot of ideas crossed his mind. After careful thinking, Shi Yan named this martial spirit the Immortal Martial Spirit. After observing for a while, he was certain the immortal martial spirit could block the gut-cutting poison. Shi Yan set his mind at ease and paused his plan of getting the cure from Master Karu. He sat where he was and began to recover his profound qi, regardless of the battle in his gut and stomach. Chapter 7, The Second Sky The next morning before the sun rose, with a layer of fog still around, the troops had already gotten ready for the path ahead. Shi Yan was mingling among the medicine slaves, maintaining a calm expression and behaving as normal. As usual, he marched in silence with the troop. Johnson was very surprised to see Shi Yan so calm and peaceful. He was wondering when Shi Yan was going to go belly up like the other medicine slaves before him. In the past few days, every single one of those medicine slaves who took the gut cutting poison would wake up with a pale face and a weak body the next morning with no exception. For the weak ones, they could barely walk, for the strong ones, you could clearly see the pain and terror on their faces. However, Shi Yan was still walking. His face looked healthy with a rosy color in his cheeks. He didn't look like he was in pain at all, which made Johnson very confused and curious. Johnson stared at Shi Yan for a while. After he made sure that Shi Yan was indeed healthy, Johnson came to the front of the marching troops with a frown. He reported Shi Yan's strange status to Mo Yanyu and Master Karu. Don't panic. Master Karu was very confident of his medicine, that boy is a warrior. He is pretty tough and not that easy to break down. Just wait till the profound Qi inside him is depleted. He will be no different from those slaves. I know my gut cutting poison very well. Okay. You go back there and keep an eye on him. Mo Yanyu said with an expressionless face. Since the two of them were so calm about this news, Johnson had no choice but to obey. 
he didn't insist anymore. He went back to the back of the troop and continued to monitor every movement of Shi Yan closely as he was told. Master Karu, how long should it take for that bastard to start suffering? After Johnson left, Mo Yanyu started to look worried. The result she was expecting is for Shi Yan to start dying from hellish pain now. The more suffering Shi Yan felt, the more pleasure she would be able to enjoy. Don't worry. It is about time. After the end of the day, the moon replaced the sun and rose in the sky. After the troop had settled, Master Karu and Mo Yanyu over walked to Shi Yan together. They saw Shi Yan sitting on the ground, stuffing himself with some scraps of food. Master Karu, that guy doesn't look quite, Mo Yanyu said in hesitation. The way Shi Yan was engorging himself in his food was not that decent, but he didn't look to be in pain at all. Master Karu was apparently offended, what? Are you questioning my skills as an alchemist? No, no. Mo Yanyu said, the power of the gut-cutting poison has already been proven on other medicine slaves. I was just wondering why this guy could survive. Did you forget any ingredients in his dose? Miss Mo, although I am not a top alchemist, I couldn't have made such a ridiculous mistake. Master Karu was apparently offended. He said, if you don't believe in my ability, I can leave right now. Master Karu, please don't. That's not what I meant. I was just wondering why the medicine did not work on him. I didn't mean anything else. Mo Yanyu looked panicked. Hmm. Master Karu didn't even bother to reply. He rose up from the ground, and flew right towards Shi Yan as fast as lightning. Shi Yan kept his head down and pretended he wasn't paying attention. However, deep down he was surprised at the speed Master Karu was moving. He felt lucky that he didn't try to fight against him yesterday. Otherwise, he would have definitely suffered. Apart from being an alchemist, Master Karu was also a warrior of the nascent realm. However, Shi Yan was just a warrior of the elementary realm, who only made it to the second sky and could barely operate the profound chi inside his body. There was a huge difference between the two of them and there was no chance Shi Yan would survive a fight with Master Karu. If he ever fought back, he would be asking for death. Fwoosh! With a strange sound in the sky, it only took seconds before Master Karu arrived in front of Shi Yan. Shi Yan put down the food in his hands and looked up at Master Karu. Master Karu had a skinny, stone-cold face. He suddenly grabbed Shi Yan's left arm with lightning speed, put his fingers on Shi Yan's skin, and quickly inserted his electric-type profound qi into his veins. His profound qi flowed into Shi Yan's body, circled around his entire system, and returned to Master Karu's fingers. The profound qi of Master Karu was so strong that Shi Yan felt a little overwhelmed with just the circulation of his profound qi, with all his veins aching and burning. Hmm. Master Karu frowned with doubt. He said in a low voice, It cannot be. The gut-cutting poison is apparently still inside his body. Why is there still profound qi remaining in his body? His gut is not corroded either. He is just a low-level warrior. He cannot have such fine profound qi. He shouldn't be breathing right now. Shi Yan just let him grab his arm and didn't fight back. Master Karu, how does he look? Mo Yanyu also arrived. Just wait for one more day. Master Karu said with a cold look. He couldn't figure out what was going on either because he had never considered a martial spirit. For an ordinary warrior like him, there's no way he could possess a martial spirit. Moreover, Master Karu had never heard of any martial spirit that could heal one's body. Although Mo Yanyu also had a million questions, she had no choice but to nod in agreement. She didn't say anything but stared at Shi Yan for a while with a strange look. Shi Yan guessed that she was planning something awful for him again. The next night, Master Karu and Mo Yanyu came over to check Shi Yan's body again. They found that Shi Yan was still fine, no decay, everything was healthy. Master Karu looked more embarrassed than yesterday and told Mo Yanyu to wait for one more day. The next night, when the two of them checked again, 
still nothing. On the fourth night, Master Karu came again. This time, he had two bowls of gut-cutting poison in his hands. When he arrived, he ordered Johnson to bring another medicine slave called Kuro over to Shi Yan. He commanded the two of them to finish the two bowls of gut-cutting poison that he had just made. Again, Shi Yan drank it obediently. I made these two bowls of gut-cutting poison with the same ingredients. Master Karu added after the two of them had finished their bowl of gut-cutting poison. Moyanyu said with agreement, if that Kuro's body starts to corrode, it means there's something wrong with this guy's body. I understand you now. Yes exactly, Master Karu nodded, just come over again tomorrow night at the same time, and then we will see. At night, Shi Yan sat on the ground, slowly operating the profound chi inside his body with a heavy look on his face. The profound chi was slowing stretching in his body. It became longer and longer and gradually expanded throughout his veins. With a thought, the profound chi gradually became extremely flexible, flowing from one vein to another. As long as he was giving it a command in his mind, the profound chi would move all around his veins, just like a snake. Gradually, the profound chi moved to the index finger of his right hand through the veins in his arm. Shi Yan concentrated and moved the profound chi back into his veins in the arm. Suddenly, his profound chi speed up and rushed towards his right index finger with an unstoppable force, faster and faster. Shoo! There was a strange sound on the tip of his right index finger. With an intense pain, the profound chi forced itself into his index finger. Shi Yan's finger couldn't help trembling just like the tail of a rattlesnake. The profound chi was now concentrated in his index finger, expanding and pushing around, but couldn't break through the skin on the outside. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't manage to make the profound chi break the skin and leave his body. Who? Shi Yan breathed heavily, and gathered his profound chi back into his abdomen, looking pretty disappointed. I failed again he said in a very low voice to himself. There were three stages to the elementary realm. If you could cultivate profound chi, you would have reached the first sky. If you were able to operate your profound chi skillfully and make it circulate through your body with your mind, you would have reached the second sky. If you managed to make your profound chi break out of your skin and into the air, that was the third sky. Now that Shi Yan was able to operate his profound chi skillfully all over his body, he had reached the second sky. In past few days, he had been collecting and concentrating more and more profound chi, trying to force it out of his fingers, hoping to reach the third sky. He had tried many times. However, so far he failed to break the boundary of his skin. It seems that the training of a warrior cannot be achieved overnight. My profound chi is still not strong enough. Maybe I should try again later after I collect and refine more profound chi. After another failure, Shi Yan couldn't help but sigh. Maybe it's due to his dangerous situation, he seemed a little hasty. He knew that by this time tomorrow, his body would still be the same, unaffected by the gut-cutting poison. However, that slave called Kuro wouldn't be this lucky. His gut would have already been decayed together with his other organs. As soon as Master Karu saw this, he would instantly figure out that there's nothing wrong with his poison, but the problem was lying inside Shi Yan's body. He would know that Shi Yan's body was different from the others, and this is exactly where the trouble would begin. There wouldn't be easy life for him from then on. Probably Emoyanya would just kill him in case he created some new problems in the future. He wouldn't even wait until tomorrow morning. If Kuro started to show symptoms tomorrow morning, Shi Yan's secret would have been discovered instantly. By that time, all the warriors would have been up and would all be paying attention to him. He would have no chance to escape. Looking at the night sky full of bright stars, Shi Yan's face became more serious and determined. He knew that if he ever wanted to survive, he must escape tonight. Chapter 8 the Jade Blade Spider. The moon was like a silver plate hanging on the night sky. The warriors were all training quietly. Emoyanyu hid herself amongst the foliage of a huge ancient tree, taking long breaths. Master Karu stood against another tree, 
reading a volume of his poison encyclopedia joyfully. Medicine slaves were lying disorderly on the wet ground behind the ground dragon. Shi Yan woke up from training and observed his surroundings quietly in a calculatingly manner. Mo Yanyu was at the head of the troops while Master Karu at the rear. The two seemed to not care about Shi Yan, however their position gave them away. Apparently they were both on guard against Shi Yan who was in the center of the troops. Johnson seemed to know that Shi Yan would make his move tonight, so he didn't train, instead he focused on Shi Yan who was 10 meters away. Once Shi Yan made a move, he would notice it and stop him. Too bad. Shi Yan thought to himself. He waited for them to let their guard down. As time passed, the bright moon disappeared. Dawn was about to arrive. However, Shi Yan hadn't gotten a chance to escape yet, so he was a little anxious. After a moment's hesitation, he decided not to wait and was about to take action. Kaka. Kakaka. At that moment, a strange sound came from afar. Something was heading in this direction slowly. As the profound chi flew forth and back in his arms, Shi Yan's eyes suddenly shone with excitement. Everyone on alert. Mo Yanyu shouted, when she lifted herself up from the ancient tree. Staying in a high position, she looked into the distance for a while, then screamed, A Jade Blade Spider. All the warriors woke up from their training process. The warriors were all wearing a rigid face. Before Mo Yanyu uttered anything, they took out their weapons and crowded around the ground dragon in a circle, five or six meters away from each other. Master Karu packed the book away and frowned. He walked up to the ground dragon and ordered in a low voice, Keep an eye on the medicine bottles on the dragon. Yes Master Karu. The warriors responded in unison. The medicine slaves woke up one by one. Hearing a jade blade spider was nearing, they were all frightened and ran to the ground dragon. Apparently, they all knew how cruel a jade blade spider was. Jingle. A bunch of keys flew out from Mo Yanyu's hand to land under Johnson's foot. Johnson, open the shackles on them. Or they will be killed by the spider. Hurry up. Mo Yanyu urged. Johnson picked up the keys and looked up at Mo Yanyu, then pointed to Shi Yan, including him. Yet. Yeah. I don't want him to die easily. Mo Yanyu showed no patience on her face. Kid, be well behaved. I will keep an eye on you. Johnson snorted. He released the shackles on Shi Yan first, then walked over to the rest slaves and freed them one after another. Thank God. As the shackles were released, Shi Yan felt extremely relaxed and smirked in his mind. The Shi family was an aristocratic family with a martial spirit. Although the owner of this body wasn't a warrior, he loved adventures and searching for historic remains immensely. He was also familiar with all sorts of demon beasts. So when Mo Yanyu mentioned the Jade Blade Spider, Shi Yan was extremely happy as he knew his chance to escape was coming. The Jade Blade Spider was a level 2 demon beast whose eight legs were as sharp as knives. They liked to wander at night and always appeared in groups of five or six. The spiders were cruel and loved eating humans. Once they came across humans in the dark forest, they would never spare them. Demon beasts were always much larger than humans. They had thick, coarse skin and could move faster than humans. Commoners would either die or be injured whenever they met one. Only skilled warriors could escape. Although the Jade Blade Spiders were a mere level 2 demon beast, they made their appearance in groups of 5 or 6, and normal warriors couldn't move faster than them, thus it was hard to compete with them. To meet jade blade spiders in the dark forest was a bad situation for anyone, as there was nothing valuable on its body and they were aggressive and moved like the wind. They would start attacking as soon as they saw a human and would never leave without getting something, even ignoring their injuries. Shi Yan approached the ground dragon quietly and stood by the panicking medicine slaves and started to observe what was happening, not in a hurry to escape. Shit. Eight of them. Mo Yanyu cried from the tree, frowning with a rigid face. It will be a nasty fight. Get ready. Remember, do not pursue an attack. 
the spiders will have the advantage if we retreat into the thickets. Do not fight in the there. Kakaka. Kaka. Ka -ka. The sound of a knife cutting the earth approached. Soon, they saw two jade blade spiders who were 10 meters long and 1.5 meters tall. The whole body of the spider was snow white and as large as a bus, with eight legs like daggers, bright and sharp. The spiders moved their dagger-like legs and advanced in extremely quickly and nimbly. They arrived in an instant. Their legs reflected an icy light while moving and easily scared everyone. It was not hard to imagine what tragedy would happen once one was cut by those legs. Seeing the spiders show up one by one, the warriors were all silent. Emoyanyu had jumped down from the tree minutes ago. She was standing in the front of the troops, getting ready by intertwining her fingers with radiant lightning. Master Karu sat relaxed in the sedan atop the ground dragon with indifferent eyes, not showing any indication of fear. Soon, all eight spiders appeared. They were not stupid, as they separated and surrounded the ground dragon, and then shooting forth like eight cars. With a harsh whistling sound, the eight spiders started the battle at the same time. White legs were raised up into the vast sky, they flew forward at the same time, rushing towards the warriors who were around the ground dragon. At that moment, the air was filled with silver and white knives. The warriors reacted quickly. They thrust their weapons, while deflecting the spider's attack, towards the beast's waist and eyes. Everything descended into chaos. The jade blade spiders surrounded the ground dragon. White legs crashed down. Warriors dodged to the left and the right, and kept thrusting their weapons. Emoyanya broke out her martial spirit. Her hands were twined by lightning and kept radiating verdant crescent slashes, which fell upon the spiders and left them trembling. Shu. One of the warriors sustained a cut on his torso by a spider leg before he could react. His organs spilled out of him along with his desperate cry. He then fell heavily onto the ground. The medicine slaves were so frightened that they couldn't help themselves and hid beneath the ground dragon. Some slaves lost their mind. They ran in between the spider legs in order to escape, but were nailed to the ground by the spider's legs and died instantly. Shi Yan contained himself, his eyes filled with a strange light. He almost didn't move behind the warriors the shackles ringing with clear sounds. Crack! The warrior in front of Shi Yan, who was of the second sky of the elementary realm, bumped into another warrior while moving. Before he could evade, a spider leg cut through his neck and his head was sent flying. Shi Yan was showered with his blood. Shi Yan's eyes were blurred by the blood. Suddenly, a desire of slaughter broke out in his body. The cyclones in his 720 meridians swirled madly while a potent strength welled out of the meridians. The headless body of the warrior was spurting out blood. An air current, which could only be sensed by Shi Yan, which was filled with despair, anger and regret, seeped into every pore on Shi Yan. It flowed along his veins until it reached all of the 720 meridians. In a trance, Shi Yan felt as if he was back at the blood pool again where he had absorbed all that blood into his meridians as well. The blood had changed his meridians, produced cyclones, and enlarged their capacity, which accelerated the speed it could absorb the blood. This time, the wisps of air, combined with the despair and hatred of the dead warrior, entered into his body the same way, from the veins to the meridians, in a very rapid speed. The cyclones in his meridians spun hard as if digesting the air currents. Too nefarious. In ten or so seconds, the air current stopped entering his body. The dead body of the warrior had dried up, as if the blood and profound chi were all sucked out of it. Like a dry mummy. The desire to slaughter emerged in Shi Yan's heart. When the 720 meridians spun in his body, the power of despair, fear and cruelty multiplied as well, which urged Shi Yan to begin a massacre. Shwish. A spider leg flew towards Shi Yan's head. Surprised, Shi Yan controlled his urge to kill and moved behind another warrior to escape the strike. Chi. That warrior was blocked by the spider, when he thrust his weapon into the spider's eye with all of his strength. The blind spider went insane and brandished its leg, 
cutting into the warrior's waist. The warrior was cut into two pieces and died quickly. After moving near the warrior, when Shi Yan was just about to find a safe zone, things changed again. The absorption power of his meridians erupted again. The air currents of rage and regret from the two pieces of the warrior's body insanely rushed into his vein and meridians. In an instant, that warrior became mummified too. Shi Yan was dumbstruck. Without a second thought, he assumed that there was another martial spirit hidden in his body. This martial spirit was based on his meridians and was able to absorb a dead body's power. Shi Yan was frightened by this evil martial spirit. Just then, a jade blade spider let out a strange whistle, and the remaining six spiders flew back into the thick forest quickly. Apparently they had noticed that it would be hard to fight with this troop. After two of them died, they finally withdrew. Shi Yan's face turned cold. He stopped thinking about that weird martial spirit at once and moved all of his profound chi into his feet. He dashed out with those jade blade spiders as fast as a whirlwind. He could only run away among the spiders. Suddenly a warm stream welled out of the meridians and into the profound chi inside Shi Yan. His thin chi was twice strong as before. Shi Yan thus gained more confidence and went into a state of ecstasy. He looked back to Mo Yanyu afar, running along with the spiders. He said coldly, Mo Yanyu, wait and see, I will fuck you one day. Catch him. Mo Yanyu's slim body trembled, her eyes on fire, as she chased after Shi Yan. Master Karu was even faster. The vicious alchemist kept quiet on the ground dragon as if waiting for something. When Shi Yan ran away with the spiders, he jumped up and flew high after Shi Yan like an eagle. Kid, I've waited for you so long. Master Karu smirked in an evil voice while he was still up in the sky. Chapter 9, The Escape As soon as Master Karu touched the ground, he accelerated like a flash of lightning towards Shi Yan with terrifying speed. The power and strength of a nascent realm warrior was far beyond that of an ordinary elementary realm warrior. Mo Yanyu also chased after him with a killing intent in her beautiful eyes, leaving her own troops behind. She swore to catch Shi Yan and kill him as soon as she got her hands on him. Shi Yan's face turned serious. He concentrated all the profound chi inside his body into the veins in his legs. Every time he took a step on the hard ground, his skinny body would fly forward for seven or eight meters. Soon he was closing in on the giant jade blade spiders. Ka! 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 The jade blade spiders were moving in the wetland with all their eight legs plugged into the mud. Soon they disappeared into the thicket. Shi Yan followed them into the thick bushes which were five to six meters tall. His face was getting more and more nervous. He already forgot how terrifying the jade blade spiders were and kept staring at one of the spiders at front. Once they got into the bushes, the jade blade spiders suddenly slowed down. Two jade blade spiders suddenly turned around with a strange light in their eyes. They seemed to be annoyed at being chased all the way into the bushes. The jade blade spiders didn't know Shi Yan's intention. Being chased by three humans, they probably thought that they wanted to fight. One of the jade blade spiders screamed with a strangely sharp sound. Suddenly, the four other jade blade spiders all turned around and looked straight at Shi Yan. Shi Yan still remained calm. He didn't slow down at all, but streaked towards the jade blade spiders with a much higher speed. Shi Yan was more focused than ever. His mind became as clear as a mirror. Suddenly, he had entered that marvelous stage again. Everything around him became so clear to him. He could even hear the low-frequency communication among the jade blade spiders, as well as the fast movements of Master Karu behind him. He couldn't miss anything. Who? With Shi Yan's fast movements, the air around him was split in half and he soon generated a strong wind around him. He could hear the sound of air flow louder and louder next to his ears. Just as Shi Yan had almost run into those jade blade spiders, he suddenly changed direction in the air and flew past one of the jade blade spiders by a millimeter. It was so close that he almost got nicked by the spider's blade-like legs. 
Shi Yan soon passed by the group of jade blade spiders and continued running forward with no hesitation. The jade blade spiders were seriously provoked and irritated. The six jade blade spiders felt like they were fooled by this man in front of them. They had never felt so humiliated. With a sharp scream, the six spiders started racing towards Shi Yan. Master Karu and Emo Yan ran into the bushes one after another, but they had lost track of Shi Yan and only saw the six raging jade blade spiders. Master Karu suddenly stopped chasing, and said with an icy light in his eyes, that boy must have hidden somewhere in these bushes. Maybe he has run through the flock of jade blade spiders and is ahead of them right now. Emo Yan Yu asked with a frown and some uncertainty in her voice. Master Karu sniffed, even if he is bold enough, he couldn't have survived the jade blade spiders. The eight spider legs are like meat grinders. This place is the proprietary land of the jade blade spiders. If he did become the target of those spiders, he would have already been killed without a doubt. Yeah, that makes sense. Emo Yan Yu agreed with Master Karu. The two of them then split up and started to search the bushes for traces of Shi Yan. On the other side, Shi Yan was crazily looking for his way out of the bushes in this dark forest. He was running as fast as he could, but so were those six jade blade spiders behind him. Soon the spiders were closing in on him. In this part of the dark forest, there were no tall trees, nothing but low bushes which seemed to be continue on forever. Shi Yan couldn't see the end of them. The bushes were not that strong, and were easily destroyed simply by a scratch of the spider's legs. Therefore, Shi Yan couldn't find a tree to hide or rest. All he could do was to keep running like hell. He really hoped he could get rid of those jade blade spiders behind him. Luckily for him, there was a magical energy spilling out from his meridians which flowed into his veins and mixed with his profound chi. His profound chi was therefore much stronger and more concentrated than ever. Otherwise, he couldn't have possibly kept up this pace for so long, and probably would have been slaughtered by those fearsome jade blade spiders and their sharp legs. With the strong movements of the profound chi inside the veins in his legs, Shi Yan felt like they were full of power. Every time he stepped hard on the ground, he would fly up as light as a feather and flew several meters forward. Shi Yan couldn't help admiring the amazing power of profound chi and was more and more determined to become a great warrior. Shi Yan couldn't remember how long he had been running for his life, but now he was really exhausted. After such long time running, he could feel the power of the profound chi inside his legs declining sharply, and he was not running as fast as before. As he slowed down, the jade blade spiders didn't. These demon beasts had one of the strongest physiques. They didn't need the support of any extra energy to rampage all over the place. Damn. Those eight-legged bastards are really a pain in the ass in the dark forest. The jade blade spiders were drawing closer to Shi Yan and were almost upon him. Shi Yan's heart was beating like a jungle drum and his back was sweating like a waterfall. According to the situation, he knew that sooner or later he would be captured by those jade blade spiders. By that time, he would have already run out of profound chi and would have no way to defend himself against those giant spiders. Water. Suddenly Shi Yan could feel a moist vapor coming from his left side with his sharpened senses. Shi Yan took a deep breath and smiled with joy. He suddenly changed direction and rushed towards his left. There is water here. Shi Yan concentrated his senses and listened closely to his surroundings. Not surprisingly, only a few minutes after he changed direction, Shi Yan could hear the most wonderful sound of water flowing in the distance. Only a few minutes later, a new landscape spread out in front of Shi Yan's eyes. There was a large waterfall, with the water curtain disappearing into the deep pool like shooting stars in the galaxy. Some of the falling water sprayed onto the giant rocks on the shore, with water drops spilling and jumping all over the place like pearls and dense water vapor rising above the pool like a net. Splash! Shi Yan quickly jumped into the freezing pool like a swift arrow. He felt instantly relieved, and thought that he could finally ditch those jade blade spiders. Splash! 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 However, 
the six giant spiders also followed him into the deep pool, one by one. They were floating above the water like boats. With their eight giant legs moving around in the water, they swam quickly towards Xi Yan. Damn it! There was no time for Xi Yan to take a break and he was absolutely desperate. Seeing those jade blade spiders approaching, he had no choice but to dive into the water and swim towards the bottom of the pool. Xi Yan kept holding his breath and dived deeper and deeper into the pool. He only dared to look up when he was already more than seven meters under the surface. From beneath, he could clearly see the sharp legs of those six jade blade spiders. The spiders were stabbing their legs, which were as sharp as knives, into the water and chopping around. The jade blade spiders were not afraid of the water and they had no difficulty floating above the surface. However, it seemed they didn't want to dive under the water. The six beasts were just blindly stabbing and chopping their legs into the surface, but only the surface. Seeing this, Shi Yan was quite relieved. He held his breath and waited patiently in the water. Holding his breath was one of Shi Yan's strengths. He had participated in a lot of extreme sports programs like this before and therefore had rich experience in this. With one breath, he could survive underwater for more than ten minutes. The jade blade spiders didn't stay long on the water. After chopping their legs for a while with no trace of Shi Yan, the six giant beasts soon left the pool one after another. Only then could Shi Yan float to the surface. When he saw the six jade blade spiders still by the shore, he instantly stopped floating up and started observing those demon beasts very carefully in secret. The six demon beasts soon left. Only then did Shi Yan rise to the surface. He took a deep breath of the surrounding damp air, and dived back to the bottom of the pool. After exhausting his breath, he would rise again to the surface near one of the giant rocks on the corner of the pool. He repeated this process over and over again, breathing, diving and rising, breathing, diving, and rising. He was a little worried that those jade blade spiders would come back, but was more worried that Master Karu and Emoyanya would find him by following the tracks of those giant beasts. Therefore, he was extra cautious, not willing to come out of the water too soon. At the bottom of the pool, Shi Yan was still holding his breath and doing his own meditation. He started to think about the strange energy he had appeared from his meridians. He remembered that when the two warriors died, he happened to be nearby, and it seemed that he had stolen all their profound chi through his meridians. Regardless, he definitely had gotten something valuable from those two warriors. When he was running from the jade blade spiders, he could strongly feel a strange energy spilling over from his meridians. This energy was so pure and when it mixed with his profound chi inside his body, the energy instantly made his profound chi increase much faster and it almost doubled in minutes. But Shi Yan couldn't figure out why. Could it be that his meridians had absorbed the energy from those two warriors, refined this energy into a much more pure and concentrated force, and empowered Shi Yan's own body? Chapter 10, Drag Her Down At the Bottom of the Pool Shi Yan had gradually recovered his profound chi that had been exhausted from running from those jade blade spiders. He had been secretly watching the surroundings of the pool very carefully. He wasn't sure as to whether the giant spiders would come back or whether Emoyanyu and Master Karu would come here. Just to be safe, he decided to stay in the pool for a little longer, and would only leave when he made sure he was no longer in danger. With the profound chi flowing around his body, Shi Yan felt this short period of resting had already recovered the majority of his profound chi. His senses had become sharper and he could even hear the wind blowing through the grass and trees on the surface, despite the fact that he was still underwater. Before long, he saw a beautiful figure show up on the shore. She was standing by a giant rock on the shore, probing her surroundings with a cold glint in her eyes. Shi Yan suddenly became nervous and secretly dove three meters deeper. He would only swim around in secret when he had made sure that Emoyanyu couldn't see him from the shore. Shi Yan was moving very slowly, afraid to make any ripple on the surface of the pool. He was very focused, swimming like a fish at the bottom of the pool. He even swam to different parts of the pool, just to make sure there's no danger from different areas of the shore. 
After making sure that Emoyanya was the only person on the shore, he secretly swam closer to the rock by which she was standing. He stayed there for a minute, looking up at the vague figure of the beautiful woman from the water. Shi Yan hesitated for a while, but still kept moving up in the water, very slowly. Fucking bastard! Don't let me catch you, otherwise I will make you suffer so much pain that you will beg for death. Emoyanya was cursing on the shore. Her face was twisted with anger. Splash! Suddenly something rose up from the water beneath her feet. Emoyanya was shocked. Before she could react, one of her beautiful legs was grabbed by something. She instantly felt stunned by a strong wave of energy and her body weakened and fell into the pool. Boom! She felt her soft abdomen heavily punched by something and a sharp pain was spreading to her whole body. Emoyanyu started to sink with a higher speed. She could barely breathe and had already swallowed a lot of water from the pool, which almost choked her tears out. When she finally came to her senses, Emoyanyu found herself grabbed by someone and dragged to the bottom of the pool in a brutal manner. When she could finally take a closer look, she instantly realized that she had fallen into Shi Yan's trap due to negligence. Oh crap! Emoyanyu was shocked by this. She knew that she was not a good swimmer so she wouldn't want to fight with Shi Yan here. She was grabbing the water with both hands, trying hard to float up to the surface to plan her next step. Hey, want to run? Try me. Shi Yan couldn't help but snort. As soon as Emoyanya was dragged into the pool, he could tell that she was not good in the water. At that moment, Shi Yan realized that this was his best shot get revenge for himself and humiliate Mo Yanyu at the same time. How could he let such a great opportunity pass by? With one hand firmly grabbing Mo Yanyu's beautiful leg, Shi Yan kept dragging her down with all his might. His other hand kept pounding hard into her abdomen with a strong fist, determined to make her swallow some more water. Boom! With another fist on Mo Yanyu's abdomen, Shi Yan felt her skin, which was previously soft, suddenly became as solid as a steel. After this hit, she was not frustrated at all, but still working very hard to reach the surface of the pool. On the other side, after the hit, Shi Yan felt an intense pain on his fist. She is using her profound chi for self-defense. Shi Yan instantly realized that Mo Yanyu had started her own defense. Seeing her flailing in the water with both hands, getting closer and closer to the surface. Shi Yan suddenly came up with a thousand ideas. In three seconds, Shi Yan had come up with a new plan. Mo Yanyu was still trying her best to reach the surface of the pool. Noticing that Shi Yan had stopped punching her in the abdomen, she got a little too proud of herself, assuming that Shi Yan had exhausted his means. However, not long after that smile appeared on her face, Mo Yanyu suddenly turned very pale in panic with a terrible look on her face. With one hand still grabbing her leg like a clamp, Shi Yan started to shamelessly harass her ass and the part between her thighs. This is the most precious and sensitive part of her body, she had not allowed any man to touch or violate it. But now this man in front of her was insatiably groping her thighs as if she were his bitch. Mo Yanyu felt so ashamed she almost couldn't breathe. Just when she was about to burst into rage and fight with Shi Yan, Mo Yanyu found that the silk pants she had been wearing had been stripped down by Shi Yan. He had even torn down her little panties and left her entire lower body exposed in front of Shi Yan's eyes. She had never shown any man this secret part of her body. However, this man had successfully humiliated her in such an outrageous way. Mo Yanyu's mind suddenly went blank. Suddenly, she could feel a big finger forcing its way into her body and it felt like she was being struck by a bolt of lightning. With a thread of electricity flowing through her body, she instantly went numb in her lower body. There was a warm wave of energy making its way out of her body. Shi Yan also felt shocked, but it didn't feel as good as he thought. He was actually hit by the lightning that came out of Mo Yanyu's body. It seemed that her body would defend herself by discharging a jolt of electricity shock when violated. This lightning had struck him pretty hard and he suddenly couldn't feel his hands. All of a sudden, Shi Yan had lost his power. 
At the moment, Mo Yanyu suddenly felt herself much lighter in the water. She realized that Shi Yan had released her. She suddenly regained her senses. Forcing her way through the water with all her might, Mo Yanyu finally rose up to the surface of the pool, filled with grief and indignation. On the other hand, Shi Yan was still floating in the water, feasting his eyes on the million dollar view above his head. He could clearly see the two sexy legs of Mo Yanyu moving around on the pool surface, her ass which had such a nice curve, as well as the delicious parts between her thighs which were apparently his favorite. However, he was affected pretty heavily and couldn't feel any strength right now. He couldn't do anything but let Mo Yanyu keep swimming towards a big rock on the shore of the pool. Before long, Mo Yanyu had arrived at the rock. She grabbed the rock with one hand, and screamed with a raging fire burning in her vicious eyes, You fucking animal! Come out! Having lost her pants, Mo Yanyu couldn't get out of the pool and still needed to hide her lower body in the water. She couldn't do anything but scream like hell. Her hatred was burning and lightning was dancing around her fingers. She would pay any price to burn Shi Yan into a crisp. After slowly operating his profound chi inside his body for a while, Shi Yan felt his discomfort had been mostly alleviated and he had recovered his strength. Still hiding in the water, Shi Yan stared at Mo Yanyu by the big rock on the shore for a while with a greedy look. He couldn't help licking his lips and fantasizing about the woman's body. Although she had a heart as dark as a scorpion, she had the most attractive look to any man, one in a million. He couldn't get enough of her. Now that Mo Yanyu had already set up her defense, Shi Yan knew that it was impossible for him to drag her down into the water again. This woman had achieved the nascent realm for warriors and possessed the scary lightning martial spirit. If she was already on alert, there's no way that he could strike again. If Mo Yanyu kept screaming and shouting like this, it wouldn't be long before Master Karu and the other warriors from the Mo family found the two of them. If he didn't get away now, he probably wouldn't get another chance later. Having thought about this, Shi Yan didn't hesitate at all. He quickly swam from one side of the pool to the other, away from Mo Yanyu, and got up onto the shore. He kept his little brother pretty aroused, teasing Mo Yanyu across the pool with a proud smile on his face and a big bulge in his pants, back then, just what the heck was that stuff coming out of your pussy? It was pretty warm and sweet. You must have enjoyed me back there. With her lower body still naked in the water, Mo Yanyu didn't dare to come onto the shore. Hearing him saying this, Mo Yanyu's body felt like it was hit by a lightning bolt. She screamed like crazy, I'm gonna kill you. You bastard. I am so killing you. I swear. I will cut you into pieces. Shi Yan replied with a snort on his face, bitch. I've already tasted your pussy. How are you gonna get married? Kill me? Hey. Next time, you won't be this lucky with only my finger inside of your body. After saying that, he shook his little brother in an exaggerated manner in front of Mo Yanyu's eyes, putting on a teasing smile and left before she could burst out with rage. Shi Yan quickly disappeared into the bushes. Mo Yanyu was so angry that she could hardly breathe. She fired waves of lightning towards Shi Yan, but the lightning could barely cross the pool, degrading into little electric sparks and disappearing after a few hundred meters, to say nothing of hurting Shi Yan. Gasping heavily, Mo Yanyu could feel her hatred burning in her eyes endlessly. As much as she would like to strike back, her lower body was still naked in the water, so she wouldn't dare to make a move. After a while, after making sure that Shi Yan wouldn't come back, she swam to the middle of the pool to retrieve her pants which were floating on the surface. Miss Mo, I remember you were chasing somebody. How come you jumped into the pool to take a nice bath? Mo Yanyu heard the creepy voice of Master Karu from behind her as she finished dressing on the shore. Startled, she quickly turned around, seeing Master Karu staring at her with two horny eyes. Master Karu was like a starving wolf, staring right at her wet body, which looked so delicious with its beautiful curves. Mo Yanyu was offended but couldn't say anything to Master Karu. She held back her raging anger and replied mercilessly, 
I was dragged down into the water by that motherfucking asshole. Oh. Master Karu nodded. His greedy eyes still didn't stop roaming over Emo Yanyu's sexy body. He said with a horny smile on his face, Miss Emo, you, didn't let him do things to you, did you? Hell no. Emo Yanyu denied with a cold face, it's just I'm not good with the water, so he took the chance to get away. Which direction? Master Karu said with a weird frown, that guy had the strangest body structure. Even my gut-cutting poison couldn't break him. He was indeed a good trial subject. I won't let someone like him escape. Then let's not waste any time. Emo Yanya was already furious. She didn't want to waste too much time with Master Karu and started chasing Shi Yan right away, heading in the direction he disappeared. Once she turned around, Master Karu started staring at her sexy curves with his creepy, cold snake-like eyes. After staring at her wet plump ass for a while, the beautiful body of Emo Yanyu disappeared into the bushes. Master Karu laughed with a horny smile and followed her with lightning speed. Chapter 11, Strike Back A crowd of people had started to gather in the dark forest, which was filled with all kinds of trees and plants. Warriors from the Emo family had separated into groups and were searching for Shi Yan in their designated areas. They all had a depressed look on their faces. Emo Yanyu's face was as cold as ever. She gave her order in a sharp voice, go search for that bastard. Now. Once you have found any trace of him, set off the blue smoke bomb. Don't fight him individually. It has been three days and we still cannot find that guy, but we keep finding traces of him. Is he that poor at covering his tracks, or has he been intentionally playing with us? Master Karu said with a sour face, apparently irritated by Shi Yan's tricks. For the past few days, the whole crowd had been looking for Shi Yan in the dark forest. They could occasionally see the footprints and broken tree branches he left behind on his way through. He must have been around this area for days, but no matter how hard they searched, they couldn't find anything, not even the smallest clue as to the whereabouts of Shi Yan. Search a bigger area. Emo Yanya was pissed off, and shouted her new order, start from here and search separately. Do your best. Once you see him, release the blue smoke bomb. I will be there in an instant. The warriors of the Emo family all complied obediently. Is it okay to leave the ground dragon alone? Master Karu frowned, and said worriedly, all my medicine bottles are with the dragon. If that boy goes over there to mess with my medicine, he would cause me more trouble than I could handle. Master Karu, don't you worry. The ground dragon is being guarded by Johnson and seven other warriors. Johnson has already reached the third sky of the elementary realm. That asshole is no match for him. Emo Yanyu said with a proud face. Master Karu nodded in consent. The warriors of the Emo family had moved further and further away and the members had become more and more distanced from each other. With one hand on the blue smoke bomb, the warriors were not that stressed. As soon as they saw any trace of Shi Yan, all they had to do was to set off the blue smoke. Simple enough. One of the warriors was walking in the shade, cursing Shi Yan at the same time with an angry face. He looked up at the tree branches above his head, and then checked the bushes around his ankles. They had been searching this area for the past three days. All for a junior warrior who had barely reached the elementary realm. There was no trace of him at all. They didn't even believe that he was still in the area, they all thought that Shi Yan had already left. Therefore, all the warriors were not happy when they were ordered to search this area again, complaining in secret and thinking that they were wasting their time. There was no point for them to do this. The warrior arrived under one of the aged trees, shaded by all the thick branches and leaves. This time, when he looked up, all he could feel was a chill, cold and evil, pouring down onto him. All of a sudden, Shi Yan jumped down from the tree like a fierce wolf, crushing the warrior's face with his knee. Boom! With a strong blow, the warrior's face was instantly covered in fresh blood. He fell on the ground with his eyes filled with blood and tears. For a moment, 
he couldn't see anything. All he could do was stab his dagger wildly, shouting in panic, Here! He's over here! Before he could release the blue smoke bomb in his left hand, an intense pain spread from his left wrist. He couldn't stand it and let the blue smoke bomb be taken away from him. Boom! 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 Shi Yan put on the cruelest face he had ever made. Before he could realize, his eyes had already turned dark red and there was a murderous look in his eyes. He moved swiftly around the warrior, hiding away from his random stabbings and continued stepping on his face, showing no mercy. With his profound chi running wild through both of his legs, Shi Yan's every hit was as powerful as an iron hammer. Under such strong attacks, it only took five strikes for the warrior to stop breathing. Seeing this, Shi Yan stepped towards the dead warrior, grabbed the dagger from his lifeless hand and stabbed straight into the warrior's neck with a precise and cruel cut. Shi Yan's face remained calm and cold all this time. All of a sudden, a strong wave of invisible energy spilled out of the warrior's body, mixed with strings of emotions such as distress, anger, and panic, all pouring out at once. The energy was quickly absorbed by Shi Yan and flowed into his meridians. Within a few seconds, the warrior had lost all his profound chi and turned into a mummified body. Shi Yan approached the dead body again. He searched through his pockets with a frown, and only found a packet of food and a few dozen purple crystal coins. Shi Yan took away his possessions and quickly left the scene. He didn't want to stop in one place for long, making his way swiftly through the dark forest swiftly like a fox, and soon disappearing into the trees. This was the first time that he had ever taken a man's life. However, he was not at all nervous or panicky. He had remained calm and cool-headed the whole time. When he was stepping hard onto the warrior's face, he felt nothing but an overwhelming thrill, a great satisfaction that he couldn't describe with words. He was free. He felt like he was a warrior by nature, and that he was born to kill. The killing had brought him a feeling of euphoria it was the most wonderful moment that he had never experienced. All the unpleasant feelings that had been haunting him for days were instantly cast away the moment he cut that warrior's neck. Deep down, Shi Yan knew this wasn't right, and that there must be something wrong with his body. No normal person would be this calm and steady when killing his first victim, not like him. Normal people wouldn't feel this kind of thrill or bliss either. However, he was like an obsessed drug addict when it came to murder and killing. As the profound chi from the warrior's body rushed into Shi Yan's meridians, there was again a strong urge of murder flaring up inside his body. Before long, a strange energy poured into his profound chi, making it even stronger and more concentrated than ever. This felt so good. For five days, Shi Yan was like a ghost in the dark forest. He was everywhere, always killing and always precise and accurate. The murders all happened in sneak attacks before those poor warriors had chance to release their blue smoke bombs in their hand. Within days, another three warriors became Shi Yan's victims. Every time, when their bodies were discovered, they had already become mummified, with all their blood and profound chi sucked away. Mo Yanyu became more and more agitated. She searched and searched around the dark forest with Master Karu, desperate to dig Shi Yan out. Both of them had started to smell a crisis on the horizon. For the first victim, his face was terribly destroyed, with a cruel blow to his head, and there were still some traces of a struggle. For the second and third victims, they were both secretly attacked from behind, with several brutal stabs in their hearts and abdomen, with only traces of a brief fight still there. However, for the last warrior, he was killed instantly with a clear cut on the throat and there was no trace of a fight at all. Judging from the four dead warriors, Shi Yan was becoming more and more skilled at killing. The dark forest had become a perfect arena for showing off his talent of murder. He skillfully used the landscape to cover his own tracks. Like an experienced hunter, he was secretly hiding in the forest, watching and waiting for his next prey. The death of those four warriors had made the other warriors all very nervous. Mo Yanyu and Master Karu were also starting to take this seriously. As per their new orders, the warriors were not allowed to act individually. 
they were only allowed to move in groups of two. This way, if one of them was attacked, the other one could come right over it help, in order to avoid the tragedy that had happened before. In the dark forest, on the top of an aged tree, wrapped and covered by layers of leaves, Shi Yan sat cross-legged in silence, looking at those little human figures in the distance through the leaves. Hey, not as stupid as before, Shi Yan sniffed from the inside. He knew it wouldn't be that easy for him to strike and kill now. Shi Yan didn't rush into attacks. He watched those warriors for a while, and noticed that after the death of the previous four warriors, the M.O. family warriors had started to act in groups of two, hence they couldn't cover a search area as large as before. Right now, they were not coming in his direction, but moving away from Shi Yan's location. After making sure that the warriors were not coming his way, at least not in a short period of time, Shi Yan closed his eyes quietly, and started to circulate the profound qi inside his body. The profound qi of those killed by Shi Yan over the past few days had all been absorbed by Shi Yan's meridians shortly after they died, and was purifying his meridians and strengthening his profound qi in a powerful way. Shi Yan started to circulate the profound qi inside his body faster and faster with his mind. He could clearly feel that his profound qi was much stronger than before, rushing through his meridians like an intense lightning all over his body, from his abdomen and all the way to his right arm. Shi Yan held his breath, cleared his mind, and concentrated all his attention in pouring the profound qi into his right arm. Now. He released this burning energy all at once. The profound qi inside his arm was flowing rapidly towards his right index finger like wild horses escaping from their reins. Shoot! Some silver-colored light smoke suddenly shot out of his right index finger, making a strange sound the air. The light smoke didn't gather in the air and only lasted for a few minutes before it faded away. Shi Yan opened his eyes, with bright stars shining in his black eyes and a surprised smile on his face. He had successfully managed to push his profound qi outside of his body. This marked him reaching the third sky of the elementary realm. After his rigorous practice over the past few days, he had finally made it to a new level with the help of that strange power inside his meridians. Although the profound qi that was forced from his body was not in a concentrated shape, and couldn't make itself into a sharp beam, he would be able to infuse his profound qi into all kinds of killing weapons and could directly rupture the enemy's organs with his profound qi shot, which meant that he had already reached a milestone in his control and operation of profound qi. Chapter 12, The Mysterious Martial Skill in the Blood Vein Ring After Shi Yan withdrew the profound qi that had flown out of his body, he set his eyes upon the crimson ring on his left ring finger. This mysterious ring, which he had named the blood vein ring, came from the blood pool, and had some connection with it. As he was thinking, he recalled the time when he wore the ring for the first time. Back then, the profound qi in his body was very weak, but the moment he wore the ring, it rushed toward the ring in a wild manner. But since it was too weak then, his qi couldn't flow into the ring across his skin. Now he had already reached the third sky, meaning his profound qi had been strengthened and refined to the point that it could move out of his body. What would happen if his profound qi went into the ring? Shi Yan was curious and guessed that there was a secret inside this ancient ring. Maybe after studying this ring, he could find out the reason why his meridians changed. Through the leaves, Shi Yan observed for a while. Three warriors from M.O. family were moving away from him, and would not come back for a short time. Shi Yan decided to give it a shot. At first, the profound qi was flowing slowly in his danshan, then it suddenly accelerated and rushed into his left arm. His qi moved rapidly and he felt a numb pain in the veins of his left arm. The qi, rushed all the way into the ring finger on his left hand with a crushing force, and lashed against the skin under the ring. Like smoke, the profound qi leaked out from between the ring and the skin, making the sound of steam coming out of a kettle, and the pure energy dived right inside the ring in an instant. The blood vein ring let out a crimson light, as if the protective layer of the ring had been ruptured. At this point, a strange energy jumped out of the blood vein ring and flew back into Shi Yan's arm. It went straight up his neck and finally arrived in his mind. 
martial skill, rampage. The energy coming out of the blood vein ring was a series of memory fragments. This rampage, was a strange martial skill. The training procedure became deeply engraved in his mind. Martial skills taught warriors how to operate their profound chi, and contained a skill for attacking with profound chi. Just like the ranking for alchemists, it was divided into five grades, mortal, profound, spirit, sacred and god. But there were some differences between the ranking of martial skills and that of alchemists. Every grade of alchemists consisted of seven sub-levels, while martial skills contained no sub-levels. High-grade martial skills brought the best out of the profound chi inside a warrior and provided them with an enormous ability to attack. The higher the grade of the martial skill, the better it tapped their profound chi. If a warrior was to train with a high-grade martial skill, he had to reach a high level first. The stronger the martial skill, the stricter the conditions it required. Generally speaking, Warriors of the elementary and nascent realm were suitable for training mortal and human level martial skills, disaster realm for profound and earth level skills, nirvana realm for spirit and sky level skills, spirit realm for sacred level skills and true god and king god realm for god level skills. It was a waste of time if a warrior of a lower grade tried to train with high grade martial skills. If one's grade was too low and their profound chi was not intense enough, one would not succeed in learning a high-grade martial skill. Even if they barely succeeded, he could not use the power of a high-grade martial skill proficiently, as their realm and power would not be enough to sustain them. It was best for a warrior to train with martial skills which matched their warrior realm. For example, even if a warrior of the nascent realm possessed god-level martial skill, it would be a total waste of time, because he would never be able to train it with his low realm. Conversely, if a warrior of a high realm trained with a low-level martial skill, he couldn't put his power to good use either. If a warrior of the true god realm had only low-grade martial skills of the mortal and profound grade, his ability would be restricted. For, if his martial skills were too low for his warrior realm, he could only use 70%-80% of his ability. On the Grace mainland, martial skills were more treasured than pills from alchemists they were the most valuable treasure on this earth. Generally speaking, martial skills were controlled by those honorable families and all sorts of forces. It was one of the attractions for warriors, as such they often joined to those honorable families to have access to them. The higher the grade, the more valuable the martial skill. Warriors of a high realm would be severely restricted if they didn't possess a high-grade martial skill. They would be at a disadvantage sometimes resulting in them being killed in fights. Thus, in order to acquire a suitable high-grade martial skill, those high-leveled warriors would sacrifice anything. Sitting straight up in the foliage, Shi Yan sorted out the memories of Rampage in his mind little by little. After he put those memory fragments in order, he found that the Rampage martial skill consisted of three levels as well. What got imprinted in his mind now was only the first level of the training process. He had no idea what martial skill grade Rampage was, or whether Rampage suited him or not. This martial skill leaked out from the blood vein ring and rushed into his mind in a direct yet weird way. To train in this martial skill one needed to reverse the flow of their profound chi, which was of the opposite most martial skills. Shi Yan hesitated, could he train this incomplete martial skill, whose story was still unknown. As one of the five biggest families in the merchant union, the Shi family had its own martial skills, the highest of which reached the spirit level. It was regarded as a family heirloom by the family head of Shi family, Shi Jian. This old man was the only person who had reached the realm required to train with it. Nonetheless, apart from this spirit level martial skill, the Shi family also possessed mortal and profound level martial skills. Shi Yan had decided to return to Shi family and train with their mortal and profound level martial skills with his new identity. But now, the blood vein ring had produced this mysterious and unknown martial skill. He was totally confused, should he train with it or not. With a rigid face, Shi Yan tried to refine his profound chi and pushed it into the blood vein ring, only to find his profound chi blocked by a protective screen within the ring. No matter how hard he tried, 
his profound chi couldn't break the screen. He came to the vague conclusion that there was something behind that protective screen, but he would never know until it was broken. Behind that protective screen, there might be more information about Rampage. Most likely it would be the process of the other two levels of training. Sadly, his profound chi could not break that screen until it was strong enough. Helplessly, Shi Yan withdrew his profound chi from the ring. He arranged the incomplete memory fragments of the martial skill again, but he was still hesitant. To train with it or not. Being wrapped in foliage with his eyes shining, Shi Yan's facial expressions kept on changing. After a very long time, he decided to see what would happen to his body if he trained in the first level of rampage. His profound chi moved towards the Jugu Meridian slowly. After it arrived, according to the spinning process of first level of rampage, Shi Yan slowly injected his profound chi into the Jugu Meridian. Instantly, it started to spin rapidly. Negative moods buried in that meridian, such as hatred, despair, and insanity, were all triggered in a burst, which turned into a certain force and began to change the veins, bones, blood and flesh around the Jugu Meridian. All of a sudden, he felt a severe pain. The blood and flesh around the Jugu Meridian suddenly contracted and his muscles became tight instantly. After a quick thought, Shi Yan began to reverse the flow of his profound chi in no time. An unbearable pain suddenly raced through his whole body and felt that his veins were very nearly torn apart. After it traveled several inches, Shi Yan made up his mind and forced his profound chi up. His profound chi jumped across the Jugu Meridian and rushed to the Jianzhen Meridian like an angry beast. After it accumulated in his Jianzhen Meridian, his profound chi spun just like before, which again brought out those negative moods of hatred, despair, and anger hidden in the Meridian all at once. The blood and flesh in that area began to contract again. To Shi Yan's surprise, there was even a vague grey fog rising up from each pore on his shoulder, which was mixed with despair and hatred. Haunting. The profound chi reversed again. Shi Yan felt a splitting pain in his right arm and his forehead and back were both soaked in sweat. Severe pain. Biting his teeth, the insanity inside Shi Yan broke out abruptly. Despite the pain in his arm, Shi Yan continued to urge his profound chi in the direction of Wulai Meridian. After an unknown passage of time, Shi Yan moved his profound chi all the way from his Jugu Meridian to his Yangqi Meridian near his wrist, all while suppressing the desire to vomit. All sorts of negative energy inside the meridians of his the right arm seemed to be brought out at once. Examining carefully, Shi Yan found the muscles on his right arm had contracted, so much so that they were much thinner than before. The dim grey fog curled up his arm ceaselessly, conveying those negative moods. Merely by looking at it, one would be easily affected by its power, feeling extremely terrified. The profound chi was moving back and forth in his arm. A strong power which could burst a dam was surging in his arm, combined with all sorts of negative moods. Shi Yan felt enormous power in his right arm, as if it would burst out at any minute. In the bottom of his heart, a series of whims containing killing and cruelty showed up. Breathing heavily, Shi Yan's eyes showed a murderous look. Among the trees, he started searching for targets, viciously like a wolf. How he wished he could grind every person he saw into powder with his right arm. It wouldn't be content until he smashed those people into mud. A short while later, two shadows, along with loud curses, were moving towards his direction slowly. They were both warriors of the M.O. family. After searching other places but finding no trace of Shi Yan, they were sent by M.O. Yanyu to search this area. Where is that bastard? I'm gonna cut off his head at sight of him. Crap. My mistress is still waiting for me in the merchant union. I have wasted too much of my time here because of that bastard. Damn. A stout warrior was viciously cursing, whose face was buried under a heavy mustache. Zhen Tai, be careful. That bastard killed four of us. He must be a tough one to deal with. He ate twice what we eat for one meal, so strange. Don't underestimate him. The other warrior looked cautious, and he kept looking around, 
being more careful apparently. Don't worry. We are both at the second sky of the nascent realm. And we are two people. It's asking for death if that bastard tries to attack us. Hmm. Let us kill him soon so that we can leave. I have enough with this crazy place. I want women. Women. The warrior named Zhen Tai seemed too eager for a woman that he began to shout in the woods. Yeah well. Miss Mo is a woman too, that cautious warrior mocked in a low voice. Well, Miss Mo is a woman. But she is out of our league. I noticed that Master Karu went to Miss Mo quite a lot these days. Maybe he has a good chance. Look at Miss Mo, that face, that ass, hmm, let's see which lucky bastard could get her. Our level is too low. There is not even a slightest hope in this life. Zhen Tai lowered his voice, wearing sinister smile on his face. He seemed to be having some fantasy. When it came to a joyful part, he straightened his body and laughed loudly. Stop daydreaming. Miss Mo is already engaged. That Ling Xiao Feng is a very tough guy. If he knew you are fantasizing about her, you would be dead. Upon hearing Ling Xiao Feng's name, Zhen Tai looked panicked. He whispered, that kid is too strange. I have heard that he has almost reached the human realm. I have seen him kill. He is unimaginably cruel. Even Master Karu would not escape if he annoyed Ling Xiao Feng. Seriously, we have to be careful. If he heard what we said. Zhen Tai shivered. Apparently he was too scared of Mo Yanyu's fiancé. With rigid faces, the two discussed Ling Xiao Feng as they walked toward where Shi Yan was, not knowing that in the thick leaves above them, there was a bloody beast. Chapter 13, Surprise Kill Shi Yan couldn't control his bloodlust anymore. He panted, suddenly jumping up from the thicket. His profound chi was flowing in his right arm like waves with a fierce and violent killing energy which was about to explode from the inside. Crap! The warrior who had been on alert suddenly paled, and screamed loudly for help. Landing on top of his head, Shi Yan started his strike like a sharp sword as his profound chi formed into a thick smog around his arm. Ahead of him, Shi Yan cast his profound chi out like a net, which tightly wrapped up the warrior's head in an instant. In that moment, an intense wave of negative feelings, blended with endless resentment and desperation, suddenly rushed into his nose and mouth. The M.O. family warrior felt like he was standing in the middle of a bloody ocean with thousands of evil spirits flying towards him, grabbing him with full force and tearing him apart. He couldn't move even if he tried to. Thump! Shi Yan's iron-like fist struck the warrior's skull with a mighty force. With a clear sound, the warrior's skull exploded, he didn't even get to scream before he breathed his last breath. All his profound chi rushed out and was directly absorbed into Shi Yan's meridians. The other warrior named Zhang Tai, looked absolutely horrified and instantly set off his blue smoke bomb. The blue smoke bomb flew up into the sky and exploded with a shining blue light even brighter than the sun. Look! Over there! Seeing that blue light, Mo Yanyu suddenly got excited. She turned around, and quickly flew towards that direction with no hesitation. Master Karu didn't move at first. He sneered for a moment, and then followed Mo Yanyu. You bastard! Let's see how you get away this time. After releasing the blue smoke bomb, Zheng Tai was not as panicky as before. He stared at Shi Yan with burning eyes and sneered, We have been looking for you all this time. Finally, you came out. This time, where can you run to? Shi Yan was breathing heavily. With the bloodlust becoming more and more concentrated in his eyes, Shi Yan could feel an endless surge for blood within his chest. That warrior's profound chi which flew into Shi Yan's body after he died had further fueled this killing impulse within his body. It was as if there was a voice whispering into his ears, continuously encouraging him to indulge in his desire for blood. Seeing that Shi Yan was just standing there panting, instead of making a move towards him, Zhang Tai felt a bit relieved. He kept his distance from Shi Yan and sneered, Hey you, Miss Mo and Master Karu will be here in a moment. 
you are gonna die for sure. With a roar rising out of his throat, Xi Yan suddenly flew towards Zhang Tai, like a caged beast running wild. There was a beam of white smoke surrounding his right arm which looked just like a giant snake. The snake suddenly jumped out and came right towards Zhang Tai's neck. Zhang Tai was already prepared. He didn't directly counter Xi Yan. Instead, he moved away from by a couple of meters. However, that snake of white smoke was not that easy to get rid of. It kept chasing Zhang Tai as if it was alive. Even though Zhang Tai stepped back, it didn't give up and still followed him, intending to wrap around him like a cocoon. Zhang Tai was a little surprised. He sniffed a little and started to cut the smoke snake with the sharp blade in his hands. The white smoke snake was cut into half instantly. However, it didn't stop. The two parts of snake rose up and started to wrap around both of his arms. At that moment, two waves of evil spirits rushed into Zhang Tai's head. His body froze, both eyes filled with bloody scenes and creepy skeletons. He felt like he was suddenly deprived of all his power. Boom! Shi Yan arrived right in front of Zhang Tai and hit him in the face with all the force in his right fist. In just one hit, an ocean of bloody and turbulent profound qi exploded out of Shi Yan's fist and drilled straight into Zhang Tai's head. With blood all over his face, as well as a terrified and unbelievable look in his eyes, Zhang Tai felt a chill running down his body and he collapsed face down on the ground. His profound qi flew out just like those dead warriors before him. The bodies of the two warriors gradually turned into mummies, without a trace of blood on their faces, drained of all their profound qi. Despite all the fierce bloodlust roaring in his mind, Shi Yan retained his rationale and carefully checked the belongings of those two dead warriors. He collected all the valuable food and crystal coins and climbed into the ancient tree like an agile monkey. He hid himself among those thick leaves and branches, and told himself to calm down, over and over again. However, the crazy desire for blood was still there in his mind. Shi Yan sat there and started to operate his profound qi. The profound qi that had been flowing within his right arm a moment ago was gradually maneuvered into his abdomen and his right arm had returned to normal. Shi Yan tried his best to control his breath and withdrew the flying evil spirits back into his body. The killing light gradually disappeared from his eyes. Through the thick leaves, Shi Yan looked at the movement on the ground in full concentration. Before long, a crowd started to gather under the tree. The first two were also warriors from the M.O. family. Like Zhang Tai, they were also elementary realm warriors that had reached the second sky, and couldn't push their profound qi out of their body yet. They looked alert after they arrived, and they kept looking around for traces of Shi Yan, afraid he might strike again. After a while, M.O. Yanyu and Master Karu arrived one after another. M.O. Yanyu arrived first. She took a quick look at the two dried bodies lying on the ground, and said in a firm voice, Yes. It was him. A cold killing light started to spread within her eyes. She moved around, trying to find some trace of him. She started to study the leaves and branches, trying to figure out whether he had left or not. Before, if Shi Yan tried to escape, he would have broken some branches of the tree, or left behind some heavy and messy footprints. In that short time, there was no way for him to cover his tracks. Mo Yanyu was right about that. But what a shame. Shi Yan hadn't left at all. He had been hiding in that ancient tree all along. Mo Yanyu searched everywhere, but couldn't find a thing. Her beautiful face held an ugly frown, damn it. Fucking hell. There is no trace of him at all. After Master Karu arrived, he looked around with his shrewd eyes and suddenly looked up and shouted, You little shit! Come out of the tree now! You think you can get away with this again? Shi Yan was surprised by Master Karu's reaction. He couldn't help but lose his control. A freezing light flew out of his dark eyes, the killing desire that he had been suppressed inside of his body was unleashed. There you are! Master Karu sneered and instantly summoned a creepy grey bomb in his hands. The bomb was suddenly thrown towards Shi Yan's hiding place in a flash. You fucking asshole. 
where can you hide this time? Mo Yanyu put on a scary face and also struck the place where Shi Yan was hiding with her powerful green lightning kill, mixed with beams of electricity. Who? Shi Yan jumped out of the leaves. He didn't lay eyes on Mo Yanyu or Master Karu at all. Once he was out, he instantly ran for the next tree with the thickest leaves. However, both Mo Yanyu and Master Karu were warriors of the nascent realm, which was superior to Shi Yan's elementary realm. Unless Shi Yan attacked them by surprise, there was no way that Shi Yan could confront them face to face, to say nothing of one versus the two of them. Don't lose him! With a loud shout, Mo Yanyu flew after Shi Yan, while the two warriors of the Mo family followed behind. Master Karu didn't chase Shi Yan instantly. He watched the grey bomb completely destroy the tree branches where Shi Yan had been hiding, waved his hand, and summoned that creepy grey bomb back into his palm. He sneered again and then followed Mo Yanyu at the speed of light. The two warriors of the Mo family were soon left behind. Mo Yanyu and Master Karu were chasing Shi Yan one after another. They were soon closing in. Boom! A bright blue light ball suddenly exploded right in front of Mo Yanyu and Master Karu, with the shining blue light almost blinding the two of them. Mo Yanyu and Master Karu were too busy following Shi Yan to pay attention to their surroundings, and were instantly surprised and blinded by the shining flash of the blue light. They collided into two giant trees. Before they could regain their eyesight, Shi Yan was already miles away. A blue smoke bomb. Damn it! Mo Yanyu shouted and continued to chase Shi Yan with an angry face. Master Karu was apparently irritated too. He swore something and suddenly flew ahead of Mo Yanyu. This time, he was not holding back his real power. Fucking asshole! This time, I'm gonna make you beg for mercy. Boom! Another blue smoke bomb exploded in front of him. But this time, Master Karu was prepared. He closed his eyes just in time and continued to chase Shi Yan after the bright flash of that blue smoke bomb faded away. As a warrior of the nascent realm, Master Karu's power was way above that of Shi Yan's. He flew just like a wind, as fast as lightning. After the second blue smoke bomb, he soon closed the gap between him and Shi Yan. The Grey Bomb Master Karu summoned another grey bomb inside his palm. He put on an evil face and lifted his hands when he was about 20 meters away from Shi Yan. Boom! That grey bomb was cast out just like a cannonball, heading straight at the back of Shi Yan. Boom! Shi Yan released another blue smoke bomb. The blue smoke bomb and that grey bomb crashed into each other and exploded, releasing bright green light which covered the whole sky. The green light fell onto the forest and started a wildfire. Thanks to that blue smoke bomb, Shi Yan had won some time to escape. He kept running like hell. Once he sensed that Master Karu was closing in on him, he would release a blue smoke bomb that he had taken from the warriors before, and buy himself some time to run away. But finally, Shi Yan had run out of all the blue smoke bombs in his hands. At that moment, he suddenly felt a strange warm stream of energy flowing throughout his body from his meridians. The profound chi he had extracted from those two dead warriors had been purified by his body and become part of his own profound chi within his abdomen, enhancing his power to the next level. Instantly, Shi Yan turned around, and started running towards Master Karu as if he were crazy. Master Karu put a creepy sneer on his face again. He did not panic at all. He slowly operated the profound chi inside his body, preparing his plan. Within seconds, his whole body was covered with a layer of dark light, half a meter thick. He was using profound chi to protect his body. Shi Yan was a little shocked, but he didn't slow down because of this. Even with his profound chi concentrated within his left hand, Shi Yan didn't release it up front. He held his iron like fist like a sharp knife and stuck it right at Master Karu's stomach. With the look of contempt in his eyes, Master Karu didn't move at all, as if he was waiting for Shi Yan's strike. Boom! With one hit on the layer of dark light covering Master Karu's body, Shi Yan felt like he was hitting a layer of cotton. 
he only hit the layer of dark light, he could not hurt Master Karu's body at all. Humph! You low-grade elementary realm warrior! Wanna break my dark light shield? It's not that easy! Master Karu sneered, and with a wave, a grey bomb sped out of his palms, right at Shi Yan's chest. Shi Yan was struck instantly. With an intense wave of power storming into his chest, Shi Yan flew backwards, his mouth filled with blood. He could even hear the sound of his bones crushing inside his chest. Falling on the ground, Shi Yan felt like his whole body had shattered, and felt an unbearable pain all over. His mouth was filled with blood. You have no idea who you are dealing with, Master Karu shook his head, and slowly walked towards Shi Yan with a dark face, you boy. Come back to be my medicine slave. Don't ever attempt to run away again. You should know that I didn't strike you with my full power. Otherwise, you would have been dead already. Again. Shi Yan stood up. He wiped the blood from his lips, and rushed towards Master Karu again with a terrifying look in his eyes. Hmm. You wanna die? Sure. Master Karu laughed like crazy. This time, he didn't hide either, and activated his dark light shield again. His entire body was instantly covered by a shining dark light. Shi Yan held up his right fist and rushed towards Master Karu, as if he wanted to try the same attack as last time. Master Karu sneered, Come on boy, you are certainly looking for death this time. As Shi Yan was rushing forward, something strange suddenly happened to his right hand. Before he hit Master Karu's dark light shield, a layer of white light appeared around his right fist. A strong wave of negative energy, combined with desperation, fear and a killing lust, rushed out together instantly. Master Karu became anxious. However, it was already too late for him to make any contingency plans. The next moment, a terrifying storm of horrifying negative desires, filled with craziness and desperation, struck Master Karu's dark light shield. The dark light shield, that was more than capable of defending from a full strength strike from an elementary realm warrior, shattered into pieces within seconds. The evil spirits entangled around Shi Yan's right fist smashed right through Master Karu's body, storming through into his body like a wild wave. Under the influence of that overwhelming killing power, Master Karu's mind, as well as his body, was completely frozen. He had absolutely no time to react or prepare his defense. Shi Yan took out the dagger that he had been hiding in his left sleeve and swiped right across Master Karu's neck. A hot wave of blood streamed out of Karu's neck, splashing all over Shi Yan's body. A head flew up into the air and fell onto the ground three meters away. The profound chi inside Master Karu's body was now running wild. Mixed with all those terrifying thoughts inside Master Karu's mind right before his last breath, his profound chi was now flowing into Shi Yan's meridians with an unstoppable force. Shi Yan could clearly feel the strong energy within this unique wave of profound chi. His whole body trembled slightly with excitement. Different from previous warriors like Zhang Tai, Master Karu was a nascent realm warrior. The profound chi inside his body was much thicker and more concentrated. The profound chi that Shi Yan got from him after his death was way more powerful than what he got from the previous warriors. Shi Yan was standing still. He couldn't move at all. It took him almost a minute to absorb all the profound chi inside Master Karu's body. After taking off the only bag that Master Karu had on him, Shi Yan felt like his whole body was aching, as if he had lost all the power in his arms and legs, especially his right arm which he had used for his previous attacks. He couldn't use any strength in his right arm, as if this was the consequence he had to face after such an intense attack which had caused some backlash in his body. Don't let him get away. Not far behind, he could hear the shouting and screaming of Emo Yanyu. Although the several blue smoke bombs Shi Yan had set off had successfully slowed her down, she had managed to catch up after a couple of minutes. It seemed that she wasn't alone. Chasing along with her, were a few warriors from the M.O. family. At the moment, Shi Yan could feel that some energy within his body was caged for the moment, so he didn't want to fight against M.O. Yanyu or those warriors directly. 
Shi Yan took Master Karu's backpack, jumped into the thick bushes, and started running like hell once again. Chapter 14, Music from Heaven Mo Yanyu suddenly stopped. The four warriors from the Mo family, who followed her out of the thick forest, were filled with a heavy look on their face. On the ground, lied Master Karu's corpse which was still warm. However, the corpse had already been deprived of all its profound chi, and lay there dry as a mummy. Looking at the scene, all four warriors stood by Mo Yanyu's side with terror in their eyes. One of them came up to Mo Yanyu after some hesitation, and said Miss Mo. Mo Yanyu was trembling. After a while, she replied with a frown, Stop the chase. But Miss. The warrior wanted to add something. Master Karu had already achieved the second sky of the nascent realm, the same level as me. Moreover, he had far more fighting experience than me. Mo Yanyu shook her head with a hopeless look, I don't know how he killed Master Karu. But this means that he is capable of killing any of us right now. If we keep chasing him, we probably won't even be able to make it back to the Merchant Union. So we just let him go like this? Miss Mo, we have spent a lot of money in order to get Master Karu to work for us. That warrior said in a low voice. So Li Tian, if we don't give up, can you come up with a better idea? That warrior suddenly went silent. Mo Yanyu kneeled down beside the cold corpse of Master Karu. She searched through his body and cursed in a low voice, Shit! That bastard has taken everything from Master Karu, all the medicine and medical books. This time we are literally here for nothing. All the other four warriors went silent together, they didn't dare to say anything. Go back to Johnson. From now on, we must act in groups. No individual movement is allowed. Mo Yanyu took a deep breath. Then, she stood up and turned back to the way they came. From that moment, she hated Shi Yan's guts. On the other side, Shi Yan was still running for his life in the dark forest. The bloodthirst was still running wild inside his body. It was devouring his consciousness bit by bit. The negative energy of madness, brutality and bloodthirst was invading his mind uncontrollably. Gradually, his sight blacked out and his body felt on the verge of a breakdown from the wild energy. At that moment, he was extremely weak and tired. He couldn't gather any strength in his arms or legs. He must avoid a fight with anyone. Otherwise, he would be dead for sure. Shi Yan wasn't sure how long he could hold on. He never expected his body to react in such a strange way, so he had made no contingency plans. Boom! The wild bloodthirst inside his mind finally exploded. Shi Yan was panting heavily as he totally lost his sight. There was only one voice in his head, whispering, repeating the same word, Kill! 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 Shi Yan knew that before long, he will have lost all his sanity, and become a mindless bloodthirsty beast. He would be filled with the intent to kill. A beautiful music suddenly flew into Shi Yan's ears from a distance. The music was like water drops falling onto a jade plate, like the wind shuttling through a silk curtain. It was as soft as a bird flapping its wings, as light as a gentle stream flowing through a quiet forest. The music was so beautiful, so peaceful as if it flew down from heaven. The beautiful music was like a soft hand soothing his heart. It had taken away all his bloody and crazy desire. Slowly, it also helped Shi Yan regain his sanity, which was on the brink of breakdown. Thanks to that soft and soothing music, Shi Yan gradually regained his sanity before he lost his mind. He slowly walked in the direction of that music with an intoxicated look on his face. He felt like his whole body was soaking in that beautiful music, and all the bloodlust inside his body had totally disappeared. In a small valley full of unique flowers and special plants, Shi Yan saw a beautiful figure playing the zither. She was just sitting cross-legged in the middle of the flowers. She slightly lowered her head and was completely putting herself into the music, unaware of Shi Yan's presence. Shi Yan moved closer and closer and stopped around 100 meters away from her back. 
He stood there and was flabbergasted with the beautiful figure in front of him. He stood there with closed eyes, trying to immerse himself in the beautiful sound of zither. After a while, the sound of zither gradually slowed down, and finally stopped. Shi Yan felt awakened from a pleasant dream. He found that his anger and bloodlust were completely gone, as if they had never existed. However, his body still felt heavy. The intense pain in his chest was especially intense. It seemed that he was still suffering from that blow from Master Karu. Shi Yan concentrated his attention and could feel the flowing profound qi within his meridians. He could sense that his body was still processing the profound qi that he had absorbed from Master Karu. The beautiful figure at distance slowly turned around with an ancient zither in her hands. She slightly frowned and looked straight at Shi Yan. Shi Yan couldn't help but tremble. His eyes were staring at the beautiful girl in front of him unceasingly. So beautiful. He unconsciously blurted out. That girl was around 18 or 19 years old, dressed in a white overskirt. Her eyes were sparkling, her teeth were gleaming, her skin was soft and smooth, and her figure was delicate and slim. She could be described as a beautiful goddess from heaven, but at the same time, also as the cute girl that lived next door. She was so perfect. Shi Yan couldn't tell who was more beautiful, Emo Yan Yu, or the girl in front of him. The lovely girl gave Shi Yan a single glance. She then turned around in silence and walked slowly towards the little creek hundreds of meters away with the zither in her hands. Shi Yan couldn't help admiring the beautiful women in this world. Overall, he had only met two women in this world, but they were both so breathtaking, like one in a million. Miss. Thanks a lot for your beautiful music. Can I, seeing the girl was walking away from him, Shi Yan couldn't help but shout. Hey, stop it. Enough is enough. Suddenly, a strong figure jumped from the giant ancient tree in front of Shi Yan. It was a middle-aged man with a hairy yellow face. He was wearing a grey-brown warrior's outfit. He looked very tall and strong with a huge sword on his shoulder. But he didn't look very serious, just standing in front of Shi Yan, looking at him with a weird smile on his face. No doubt, Shi Yan was caught off guard. He instantly put on alert. Just by looking at him, he could clearly sense a terrifying energy from this yellow-faced man in front of him. It didn't take him long to understand that this yellow-faced man was definitely a warrior way above his level. The yellow-faced man was just looking at him, not intentionally releasing any energy to pressure him at all, but Shi Yan already felt like he was as untouchable as a steady mountain. Shi Yan took a step back, showing that he didn't come with any evil thoughts. Then he faked a smile and said, the music that the beautiful miss played was so enchanting. I just can't get enough. I stayed just to listen to more of her music, nothing else. Don't worry. To Shi Yan, this girl had the most magical music skills. Her beautiful music could apparently help him control the bloody desire within his mind. Shi Yan was not sure when this craving for blood inside of him would come back again. Therefore, he was desperate to find something to help him control this ugly desire inside him body. I can tell that you are just a lustful guy nothing else. Otherwise, I wouldn't have let you live until now. The yellow-faced man laughed, and said in a relaxed mood, but here is not the place for you to be lustful. I suggest you get the hell away from us. Otherwise you will be in a lot of trouble. Okay, as you wish. Shi Yan lifted both hands to show cooperation. He didn't stay any longer. However, he took a glance at that beautiful figure in distance before turning around and leaving. Uncle Luo, I sensed a strong evil spirit in that man. Back then, his whole body was filled with a killing desire and he almost went berserk. However, after his bloodlust faded away, he dared to take such a lustful look at me. I guess he shouldn't belong to the dark world. Mu Yudai said with mild discomfort when she recalled Shi Yan's lustful look at her. That man, it seemed that he could never hide his desire from within. Although there were other men who also wanted her, they would at least do it in secret or cover up their desires when they laid eyes on her. 
they wouldn't expose their dirty thoughts to the world. However, that guy, he didn't even try to cover up his lust for her in his eyes. What she saw in his eyes was a simple and straightforward desire. He can't be from the Dark World. The assassins sent by the Dark World were all warriors of the nascent realm, but that guy was still an elementary realm warrior. Luo Hao laughed and said, but interesting though, that guy was not even a nascent realm warrior, but dare to dream about our beautiful princess who has already achieved the third sky. This guy has some balls. Ha ha. Ah, I am still not sure when I can recover. Currently, I am powerless. Mu Yu Dai slightly sighed with her heart filled with sorrow, Uncle Luo, if the assassins did come and you couldn't defeat them, please just leave me behind. I, can rely on myself. What is this nonsense? Hearing this, Luo Hao was apparently not very happy. He said with a firm voice, We are not far away from the merchant union right now. If we can survive the next few weeks, one month at most, we can definitely get out of this dark forest. Once we reach the merchant union, the dark world can't do anything to hurt us. Ku. Ku. With a strange whistle from the distance. Before long, two men and a woman who dressed like a mercenary came out of the forest with a heavy look. The leader came up to Luo Hao and said, Sorry Uncle Luo, we couldn't keep up with the trackers from the dark world. Luo Hao nodded, and said with a frown, We must set out right now and choose a new location to rest. Otherwise, the assassins from the dark world will soon find and surround us. The five of them did not stay for long. They quickly packed their stuff and left in a hurry. Right after Shi Yan left the girl, the craving for blood slowly rose up again in his mind. This unstoppable desire for blood may have something to do with the profound chi that Shi Yan got from Master Karu. Because Master Karu had the power of a nascent realm warrior, his profound chi was mixed with too much negative energy. Therefore, it would take Shi Yan much more time and effort to purify his profound chi. While his meridians were processing Master Karu's profound chi, these annoying negative energies would spill over from time to time and ignite his crazy desire for blood from inside his body. But that girl's music could help him control those wild desires, so he didn't lose his sanity and fall into an abyss of craziness and chaos back then. However, his meridians were still working on purifying Master Karu's profound chi. Until this process was completed, there was a pretty good chance that Shi Yan would fall into that bloody, crazy state again. Before his body finished the purification of Master Karu's profound chi, that beautiful girl could definitely be his cure to stay sane. Knowing that another bloody urge was slowly creeping up on him, Shi Yan was overwhelmed by a bad feeling. After some hesitation, he still started walking towards that girl's direction. Only the beautiful music of that girl could help him to calm down. And only by following her steps, could Shi Yan get the chance to hear that heaven-like sound again. Chapter 15, Promotion to the Nascent Realm Uncle Luo, there's someone following us. One among the group of mercenaries said to their leader with a low voice, it must be that scout sent by the Dark World. That mercenary had a young handsome face. He looked like 25 to 26 years old, and was already 1.85 meters tall, with a strong and slim figure. He was a nascent realm warrior who had already reached the third sky. His eyes were shining with energy and was always on alert. Just from a simple glance, Shi Yan knew that he was an excellent warrior. No, he is not from the dark world. He is just a horny little stalker, so shameless. No need to pay attention to him. Luo Hao shook his head, and said with a frown, Let's hurry. Just leave him alone. Zhao Xian didn't look happy about this, and said with a cold voice, Is he after Miss Mu? How dare he? Shall I wait here to teach him a lesson? While he was talking, he gave a caring look at the delicate girl named Mu Yu Dai, who was leaning on Luo Hao. No, don't make any trouble if it's not necessary. Luo Hao shook his head again, and asked the girl in a soft voice, Dai, are you okay with this? Shall we speed up a little bit? Mu Yu Dai was looking very pale, and was perspiring heavily. 
She smiled politely, yes, I can hold on. We could go faster. Maybe it would be better if we leave that man behind. Otherwise, he will also be killed by those assassins sent by the Dark World. Luo Hao couldn't help but sigh, feeling pity for this kind-hearted girl. He nodded to her and said, Dai, don't use any more of your profound chi. I am here for you to lean on. After saying that, Luo Hao held the shoulders of Mu Yu Dai as if she were a delicate flower, and ran between the trees in the forest with ease. When he was about to land on the ground, he would control his mighty body to just slightly touch the ground before jumping up again. There were no footprints left behind him. Obviously, he was a first-class master at mano his profound chi. On the other side, Shi Yan was struggling very hard with such a march. It was becoming more and more difficult for him to breathe. The desire for blood had been killing him all the way. His body was also aching from the intense blow from Master Karu. Due to the intense fight he just had, Shi Yan suffered a severe loss of profound chi, which couldn't be restored within a short period of time. Under these circumstances, if he ever encountered Mo Yanyu again, there was no doubt that he would be dead. Therefore, he had no choice but to recover as soon as possible and control his own body which had gone wild. The beautiful music of that girl was indeed his only hope. He didn't care whether that girl liked him or not. Shi Yan felt like he didn't have a choice. Even if she thought that he was a shameless bastard, let it be. He would always follow her steps, as long as she would play that enchanting music again. Shi Yan tried to control his growing urge for murder and had an evil look on his face, Shi Yan moved most of his profound chi, which was not much, to his legs, and tried his best to keep up with the five people ahead of him. Shi Yan completely cleared his mind and became more focused than ever. The only goal that he had in his mind was to keep up with those people. Once he cleared his thoughts, he felt this march not as hard as before. Uncle Luo, I cannot believe that guy was just an elementary realm warrior. In midst of their rapid movement, Zhao Xian suddenly said with surprise. Luo Hao was also wondering. According to his knowledge, a warrior of the elementary realm shouldn't be able to keep up with their speed. Although they had successfully distanced themselves from the man behind, they never managed to ditch him. That man must have some endurance to keep him chasing all the way. This made Luo Hao a little curious, making him wonder whether he had underestimated this warrior the previous time they met. Uncle Luo, I can keep up. You could speed up a little. Miu Yu Dai said with pain and a layer of sweat on her face. No, if we go any faster, you would get hurt. Luo Hao stubbornly refused he said in a low voice with a frown, don't pay too much attention to the man behind. He is looking for death. If he dies, it is not our fault. Awu. As they spoke, a loud roaring as horrifying as that of a wild beast came from behind, which was apparently from Shi Yan. However, that roaring didn't sound human at all. It was filled with craziness and an evil craving for blood and killing, making anybody who had heard it tremble inside. Is this guy human or not? The hot female mercenary named De Yelan couldn't help but tremble, and said with a scared look in her eyes, How could any human make such a terrifying sound? This is even more terrifying than the roaring of a demon beast that had gone crazy. The crazy craving inside his body is eating him up again. Luo Hao started to look nervous, and said quickly, Stay away from him. Otherwise, he might attack us. He has already gone crazy. It's not very difficult to kill him, but it might waste our precious time to escape. The unnecessary fight will certainly draw the attention of those Dark World's assassins, and we would be in a lot of trouble. Just let me help him. Otherwise he will become a crazy monster that only knows to kill, and would start a bloody war in this dark forest. Mu Yu Dai said after a little hesitation, and unwrapped the zither that she had been carrying. Despite the dissuasion of Luo Hao and the other warriors, she sat down with her legs crossed and started to play a song. Luo Hao stepped hard on the ground with anger, he is such a bastard. He is not at all worthy of your help. 
The mesmerizing sound of the zither flowed through the dark forest like a gentle stream, right towards Xi Yan, as if it was specifically meant for him. With both of his eyes turning crimson, Xi Yan was on the brink of going crazy, almost losing to that murderous rage. Hearing the familiar music, he was suddenly awakened. With a light flashing through his eyes, he just stood there like completely lost in that beautiful music. A trace of the negative energy combined with desperation and fear slowly drifted out of his body and started to surround him like a light mist. It felt like millions of tornadoes in each of his 720 meridians and he could feel the unique energy that he got from Master Karu being purified and concentrated over and over again. After a while, Shi Yan's eyes gradually returned to normal, and he began to regain the look of a sane man. At that moment, he realized that this was all due to the generous help of that beautiful girl. She had saved him again. With deep gratitude in his heart, Shi Yan sat down right where he was. He put his heart and soul into this beautiful music and started to operate his profound chi inside his body without a second thoughts. Immersing in this soothing music, he started to relax. Right in the middle of this dark forest, filled with all kinds of unexpected danger, Shi Yan managed to enter the world of the selfless state. He didn't remember how long it took before he awoke. The mist wrapping around him had already been absorbed into his own body, and under his guidance, flew through the different meridians inside his body. Suddenly, thousands of warm but strange streams of energy spilled over from all the meridians in his body and started to propel his profound chi through his veins. Shi Yan couldn't help but tremble. He could clearly feel his profound chi compressing and strengthening with an amazing speed. Within seconds, he could feel his profound chi became five or six times stronger, and it was more concentrated than before. His strengthened profound chi suddenly started to gather in his abdomen, and filled his entire body with power. Realizing that he must have finally purified all the profound chi that he got from Master Karu, Shi Yan was overwhelmed. Shi Yan slowed his breathing and concentrated all his energy in operating all his profound chi towards his twelve major veins and eight special veins. The profound chi stormed through his entire body like a raging flood. Shi Yan was able to unblock all his congested veins, albeit suffering from intense pain. He felt as if his shoulders were finally able to relax. Now that his profound chi had become stronger than ever, he felt like he had unlimited potential. The sun had already set, and the moon was shining brightly in the starry sky. With the last of his veins cleared, Shi Yan was very excited. He was trying very hard to contain his exuberance, while operating the profound chi in a cycle throughout the body. When his cycle was finally over, Shi Yan felt like he was waking up from a very long dream. He looked up at all the shining stars in the sky, feeling nothing but unparalleled happiness. Now that he had broken through all the veins in his body, he could be said to have promoted to the nascent realm. From the profound chi that he got from Master Karu, and through the incidents when he almost lost his mind and went crazy with bloodlust, he had finally purified all the power he got from Master Karu and broke through all his veins with the newly purified and concentrated profound chi. Now he had finally entered into a whole new level. After purification of all the energy he got from Master Karu, the bloodlust that had once tangled his mind had suddenly vanished. Now that he thought about it, Shi Yan realized that every time after absorbing the profound chi from the dead, and until the profound chi was completely purified by his meridians, there would always be some negative energy spilling over from his meridians, which would trigger the darker side of himself and drive him into a state of insanity. Because the first few victims of him were just elementary realm warriors with moderate energy, he could still control the negative desires. But Master Karu was a nascent realm warrior, with the power far beyond Shi Yan's league. There was too much negative energy within Master Karu's profound Qi. Therefore, that time Shi Yan couldn't control the negative energy, and almost lost his sanity. Right now, since he had fully purified the profound Qi that he got from Master Karu and entered a completely new level, Shi Yan didn't need to worry about the eruption of the evil power anymore. Kaka. Shi Yan stretched his body a little and stood up slowly. He was feeling completely refreshed. The broken bones in his chest also seemed to have recovered. 
Shi Yan checked his body for wounds, but found them all healed. This made him extremely happy. He knew that his speedy recovery was not only due to his promotion, but also had something to do with his immortal martial spirit. Right before losing himself to the music, he had felt the cells near his chest wounds repairing and beginning to heal. Looking around, Shi Yan realized that the location he was in was completely exposed, with no tree cover or shade. Realizing that he had been operating his profound qi here, forgetting everything around him, Shi Yan felt lucky that nothing unexpected had happened to him. By practicing his profound qi in such an exposed location, had Mo Yanyu still been looking for him, he would have definitely been captured by her. At present, that mesmerizing music was long gone. He remembered the sky was still bright when fell under the effects of music, however, now it was already midnight. He must have been practicing for a long time without realizing. He felt immense gratitude towards that beautiful girl. She had saved him more than once. The first time she might have saved him unintentionally, but the second time, it was specifically for him. Based on the discussion he overheard from the five people, Shi Yan realized that they were being chased by someone. However, he didn't think too much and decided to continue following them. He didn't like owing favors, and so he decided to pay back the girl's kindness in his own way. Chapter 16, Treasure Beside the small gentle stream, the ground dragon was drinking water quietly, its robust body covered with scales. Mo Yanya was sitting upright in a sedan high on the dragon and playing with a blue smoke bomb in her hand, lost in thought. Recently, she was haunted by Shi Yan. Every time she remembered the cold decisiveness in Shi Yan's eyes, she became restless. How she wished she could catch him and ruin his veins and bones. Given Master Karu's death, she had already released the medicine slaves who were of no use now. With her were eleven warriors from the M.O. family who were only of the elementary realm. Their power was insufficient to help M.O. Yanyu search for Shi Yan. As such, she could only wait for the relief troops from the family. All of a sudden, a pale blue light shot up across the sky some five miles ahead. They have arrived. M.O. Yanyu's spirit rose. She immediately threw the blue smoke bomb up into the sky, and thus the same pale blue light was seen above her. The warriors around the ground dragon rejoiced with a lively outburst of happiness as if they were getting ready for a fight. In less than a quarter of an hour, three dark shadows showed up from afar and flew in their direction. The first of them had a graceful beard and wore an indifferent smile. He approached near Mo Yanyu and laughed loudly. Yanyu, where is Master Karu? Third uncle, Master Karu is dead. Mo Yanyu explained in a very unwilling manner we met a thief midway. He was only elementary ranked, but he still was able to kill Master Karu. I just can't figure it out. Mokoch's smile disappeared at once and his face turned pale, have you got the thing that was on Karu? Mo Yan Yu shook her head, it was taken by that thief. Stupid. Mokoch cursed in a low voice. With a cold face, he observed, we received information that Karu had stolen an incomplete picture of the Gate of Heaven from his teacher. His teacher, Mu Sun, is looking for him everywhere for that incomplete picture. It is said, in the God area where the Gate of Heaven leads to, are martial skills of the spirit and even sacred level. I came here in a hurry with two escorts just for that incomplete picture. But you let him die. How stupid. What? Mo Yan Yu was shocked. How could that be? Why would Karu leave Medicine Valley with you if he hadn't stolen that valuable map from his teacher? You think he was attracted by the wealth of M.O. family? Humph. He was attempting to get shelter in the Merchant Union, so that his teacher Mu Sun couldn't kill him. M.O. Koch thought for a second seriously and reproached, Tell me the details. That man must be still in the dark forest. We have to find him. The picture means a lot. We, the M.O. family, have to get it. M.O. Yanyu started to realize how bad the situation was. She told him all the details, except that she was violated by Shi Yan twice. Dumbass. M.O. Koch scolded again. 
he flew into a rage, you didn't keep tracking him? That bastard is only of the elementary realm. No matter how he killed Karu, he must have paid a significant price. He might have been hurt too. If you had chased him you could have killed him easily. Too dumb. I was afraid that we would lose more, so, Mo Yenya lowered her head in shame. An elementary realm guy, and you were afraid of him. Mo Koch was annoyed, you wasted so many resources of our Mo family. What are you doing now? Show me the way. You. 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 Bring the ground dragon back to the merchant union through the secure route. Others. Follow me and search. Dash. They looked for Shi Yan for two days but still found nothing. Under the moonlight, Shi Yan was leaning against an ancient tree and deep in thought. He had decided to stop the chase for the time being. He took off Karu's bag from his back and opened it to look into the contents. Inside the bag was a volume on poisons, several bottles of poison refined by Karu, and two mortal level martial skill books, Dark Light Shield and Black Formula. Apart from those things, there a dark yellow, incomplete picture, on which were painted two hills. Shi Yan studied it for two days but found nothing, so he didn't take it seriously. Of the two martial skills, to train black formula, required a collection of black chi first. Thinking hard for two days, Shi Yan didn't come up with any idea of where he could find black chi, and so he soon forgot about it. Fortunately, the other martial skill, Dark Light Shield, didn't require anything special. One simply needed to operate his profound chi according to the Meridian map. Shi Yan took out the book on Dark Light Shield from the bag and started to train in it. He was determined to learn that skill and thus made every effort in remembering the mnemonics of the skill. Dark Light Shield was a defensive martial skill. It used profound chi to form a layer of dark light around one's body in order to defend from an enemy's assault. It was just a mortal level martial skill and needed no requirements but one, the flow of profound chi. Shi Yan packed the bag and observed the surroundings for a while. Assured that it was safe, he quietly climbed up a tree behind him, hid himself in the thickets, and started to train the dark light shield. After reaching the nascent realm, his veins were as smooth as silk. Once he thought of moving his profound chi, it would immediately flow into the veins. Sitting in meditation, Shi Yan operated his profound chi quietly and trained according to the meridian map for dark light shield. The profound chi flew around his body like a gentle stream in a controlled manner. At once, Shi Yan sped up the circulation of his profound chi. Pump! Suddenly a hazy black light started emitting from Shi Yan. It gradually started forming a layer over his whole body. Shi Yan was quite sure that he was training in the correct way, so he once again accelerated the profound Qi. The black light emitting his body began to grow in intensity. At first it was only half a meter, then it formed a one meter thick layer, exactly the same as Karu's. A long time passed. Shi Yan exhaled a mixed breath and opened his eyes leisurely. The profound chi in him had already finished six big circulations. Success! Shi Yan smiled. He found that it was very easy to train in the dark light shield. In merely one night, he had grasped the essential part of this martial skill. With his profound chi growing, he only needed to accelerate its circulation and his defense would increase greatly. Up in the sky. The moon had disappeared. Dawn was coming near. Shi Yan was not in a hurry to leave. He calmed his mind and tried to operate the profound chi for a second time. The profound chi flew toward his left arm. Once it arrived at the first meridian, Shi Yan had another thought and his profound chi promptly started rotating in that meridian. After three breaths, Shi Yan changed his mind again. Immediately, the profound chi flew backwards and he felt a splitting pain in that vein. It was the phenomenon that occurred while training Rampage. Enduring the pain in his arm, Shi Yan continued to circulate his profound chi. He tried again as he according the process he previously followed in his right arm. The muscles in the left arm began to contract, and slowly became dry and thin. Thin white fog was coming out of his left arm. 
In the white fog was a mix of negative feelings such as fear, cruelty, and despair, which had the weird power of bewildering people's minds. The negative feelings sourced from the meridians in the left arm and were temporarily bound by the fog. Once he fought with others, they would leak out of his arm directly. The sun was hanging high in the sky. Shi Yan was sweating all over while fully concentrating on his left arm. His left arm was covered with a heavy fog which was sending out a putrid smell. Shi Yan was then filled with a desire for murder. Hu hu hu. Shi Yan was trying very hard to control his desire. He withdrew the profound qi in his arm little by little, back into his abdomen. Therefore, his arm gradually went back to normal, and the white fog around it began to drift back into his meridians through his veins, till none of it remained around his arm. Shi Yan leaned against the tree trunk with a deathly pale face. Exhausted, he was drowned in mixed feelings. This martial skill rampage was able to induce all the negative energy in his meridians, though the negative energy would also disturb his mind. This martial skill was a double-edged sword in battle, which would make him lose his mind. It did bring a warrior enormous power, but it was at the same time very dangerous. Nevertheless, Shi Yan remembered when Rampage broke Karu's dark light shield, and the odd state of Karu when his brain was invaded by the negative energy. Shi Yan thus made up his mind to train this vicious martial skill with his whole body. He wanted to know what would happen to his body when all the negative power within his all meridians was induced. He had this vague thought that as long as he finished training the first sky of Rampage, his body would have a major shift and that his strength would surge by two times. Shu. 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 There came a sound of someone approaching from afar. Shi Yan frowned, and slowed his breathing. He then started observing his surroundings. Not before long, seven shadows, each of whom were wearing a grey gown and a pale mask, stopped under the ancient tree, seeming to be waiting for something. On the shoulders of six of those seven men, were signs of silver stars, while on the last one's shoulder, was a sign of silver crescent. Wuhun. Wuhun. A weird sound came from the grove ahead, sounding like a communication signal. Under the ancient tree, the tall, thin man with the crescent on his shoulder had a cold look in his eyes. He listened to the surroundings for five seconds and remarked, according to the secret message, they have been spotted in a valley twenty miles away. Now chase after them. The troop of seven people passed rapidly. Ten seconds after they left, Shi Yan stuck his head out of the leaves. After thinking for a while, he jumped down the tree and followed after them secretly. Chapter 17, Ten Times Gravity The Serene Valley was now filled with broken weapons. Luo Hao, Zhao Xian, and other men were encircling Mu Yu Dai, defending against the fierce attacks of those from the Dark World. The tall, Thin man in a grey gown, on whose shoulder was an embroidered silver crescent, was directing his eight subordinates to encircle the four of them. The eyes were cold and ghastly under their pale masks. Miss Mew, you'd better come back with us to the Lord of the Dark World, or we don't know what we will do to you. The tall, thin man in grey gown, seemingly the leader, remarked coldly as he was directing his people. Disgusted. Mu Yu Dai shook her head and said firmly, I would rather die than go back with you guys. So you have decided not to cooperate, Miss Mu. Then I'm very sorry if my people catch you. Pausing for a second, the man grinned, Luo Hao. You should know how powerful our dark world is. If you go against us, you are bringing about your own destruction. Ha <laughs> ha. Luo Hao burst into laughter. His voice was resonant. I'm always alone. To kill me, you dark world would have to pay a lot. You are a dark moon emissary of the dark world, with the power of the second sky of the disaster realm. It's enough to bring you with me when I die. Do you think you even deserve that type of death? That emissary shook his head, and vanished into thin air. The next moment, he was standing three meters in front of Luo Hao. He stretched out his left hand, his five fingers shaped like a claw, between them glowed a ghost-like green light, which suddenly flew toward Luo Hao, and started to twine about him like a ribbon. 
the green claw. Luo Hao's facial expression changed a bit. He uttered calmly, Zhao Xian, you three. Protect Dai. Boom boom boom. Luo Hao's heart was beating several times faster than before. Around him, the power of gravity surged ten times. All of a sudden, the eight men surrounding Luo Hao's group felt an immense pressure, as if they were being pressed down by a huge mountain. The pressure almost made them kneel on the ground. Even the crescent emissary was affected. However, he grunted and said, Luo Hao, what a surprise. Your gravity art is truly at an advanced level. Ten times gravity. No wonder you are so arrogant. Ha ha ha. If I can't even do that, how could I claim that I will bury you with me? Luo Hao replied calmly, with an indifferent smile on his face. Meanwhile, the broadsword on his shoulder gave out a dazzling blue light, increasing that monstrous pressure. Luo Hao laughed loudly as he wielded the sword in his hand, and walked right in front of Mu Yudai, obstructing the crescent emissary. After the crescent emissary displayed the green claw, a gloomy green light had pervaded the air. But it seemed to be influenced by the increased gravity, for the crescent emissary had difficulty controlling it. He curved his fingers and pushed forward, as he encircled Luo Hao with other three star emissaries. Zhao Xian, take Miss Mu away. Luo Hao shouted. The broadsword in his hand gave out a bright blue light, and looked like a shooting star when slashed. It was able to obstruct the enemy and bar their way. Shi Yan was hiding behind an ancient tree, some fifty meters away from the fight. He gazed at the fight with a rigid face, with his eyes shining in the dark. All the people from the dark world were at the nascent realm. And that crescent emissary had reached the second sky of the disaster realm. It was too much for him. If he hastily took action, he would be easily killed before he could move near Mu Yudai. Shi Yan was envisioning various scenarios for the best possible approach. A few seconds later, his eyes radiated. He grabbed his bag cautiously and took out the bone-cutting powder, which was wrapped in a soft cloth. Lowering his body, he then quietly climbed out onto the tree branch. Through the long branches of the tree, Shi Yan was moving cautiously toward the battling crowd. Bone-cutting powder was a drug invented by Karu, the alchemist who was unmindful of his work. It made one's veins and bones become numb, decreased their power. Its effect could last for three hours, enough time to change the result of a battle. Zhao Xian. Leave. Luo Ha roared, as his sword radiated with blue light. He, by himself, was fighting against the Dark World's assassins. Miss Mu. Zhao Xian was anxious, he stamped on the ground and said, Hurry please. Mu Yudai looked tranquil, but her eyes showed stubbornness. She spoke softly, I won't leave. If you three stay, we might win. But once we leave, Uncle Luo will definitely die. Without Uncle Luo, we can't win against the Dark World anyway. We would still be caught. Good. Let's fight till death. Zhao Xian was a smart person. Upon hearing Mu Yadai's words, he made up his mind and shouted, De Yelan. Hu Long. Fight. They encircled Mu Yudai, took out their sharp weapons, and charged with all their strength toward those Dark World emissaries. Four of you, go and take care of those three kids. The Crescent emissary frowned and ordered coldly, Don't hurt Miss Mu. The Lord has given the order. Miss Mu should be taken back alive and unhurt. Yes sir, the four star emissaries replied, and in no time rushed toward those three. Just then. Abruptly, a slight sound came from above. The crescent emissary aroused vigilance. As soon as he looked up, he shouted, Damn it! Run! It was too late. Grey dust fell from the sky like drizzle and spread over the area. Everybody, including those from the Dark World, were covered by the dust. No one was spared. The Crescent Emissary quickly realized the situation as he held his breath. Though he drew back, there was still a lot of dust on his gown. However, 
the dust had a strong penetrating power as it entered into his body through his skin. As his hands and feet became numb, he had a quick thought, and operated his profound chi to defend against it. But those star emissaries were not as cautious as he was. Many of them inhaled the bone-cutting powder, which went into their hearts and lungs, which then quickly affected their bodies. In a few seconds, they were numb all over, their bones softened and their strength weakened. Luo Hao's face turned dark all of a sudden. He was a victim too. Exhausted from the fight, he circulated his meager profound chi thorough out his body in order to counter the poison. He looked up into the sky with cold eyes. A thin figure showed up from the branches above them. With an indifferent face, that person flew down from the tree lightly and stood by Mu Yu Dai calmly, with the latter shocked. He took out a medicine bag and said lightly, Smell the fragrance, you will be detoxified. It's you. Astonishment took over Mu Yu Dai's moon like face. She couldn't believe it was Xi Yan who flew down from the above. Gazing at Xi Yan carefully, Mu Yu Dai was even more surprised. Xi Yan had reached the nascent realm in the past few days. How on earth? Miss, you have saved me twice. Once unintentionally, and another intentionally. I will remember that forever. Xi Yan smiled. Seeing that, Mu Yu Dai grabbed the medicine bag. He added, the effect of the bone cutting powder shall last for three hours, which is not too long, but not too short either. You should know how to deal with it, miss. His dark eyes suddenly went cold. Got it. Mu Yu Dai got what Shi Yan said. She took a deep breath of the fragrance, and then passed the bag to Zhao Xian near her, quick. The crescent emissary was still operating his profound chi to defend against the effects of bone cutting powder. Seeing that situation, he shouted with a rigid face, Move! Grab that medicine bag! If they are cured by that powder, none of you will survive. After saying that, he forced his profound chi and dashed toward Luo Hao. As soon as those star emissaries comprehended the situation, they began to besiege Zhao Xian again despite the poison in their bodies. Before Zhao Xian could get the medicine bag from Mu Yu Dai, he was surrounded by numerous attacks. His face turned pale, and he had to give up on the medicine bag. Instead, he concentrated and began to confront those emissaries' attacks. So were Hu Long and Di Yanlin. Under the fierce attacks of those star emissaries, they couldn't even breathe from the medicine bag. Mu Yu Dai held onto that medicine bag but couldn't get a chance to pass it to others, so she became very anxious. Helplessly, Mu Yu Dai turned to Shi Yan. Her beautiful eyes were asking for his help. Everybody else was poisoned by bone-cutting powder, and she couldn't operate her profound chi wildly. Although Shi Yan was low-ranked, he was quite important now. Seeing Mu Yu Dai's pleading eyes, Shi Yan smiled and asked naturally, Miss, may I know your name? Mu Yu Dai. A nice name. Shi Yan nodded, and imprinted that name in his mind. Under Mu Yu Dai's gaze, he darted out instantly. With a dagger in his hand, Shi Yan broke into those emissaries and wielded his dagger with a serious face. The dagger made cold streaks in the air. In no time, the star emissary who was most affected by the bone cutting powder had a deep wound in his neck and fell to the ground on his back. Shi Yan made swift moves amongst those emissaries and left scars on them, his body flashing like a sharp weapon. Uh, Mu Yu Dai combed her short hair to the side of her ear with her hand. Astonishment flashed through her eyes, and there was a weird look on her face, I just... I just wanted him to pass them the bag. Chapter 18, Being Pursued A star emissary fell on the ground, and his profound chi was siphoned off. Shi Yan circled thrice around him, and his meridians were charged with foreign profound chi. Waving his dagger, Shi Yan was covered in dark light. He moved among those star emissaries swiftly, avoiding their attacks while leaving wounds on their bodies. Three star emissaries were completely poisoned by the bone cutting powder. Their hands and feet were losing strength slowly, and their movements were becoming very slow. Assaulted by Shi Yan, 
the three stood in a triangle, supporting themselves arduously. Shi Yan looked indifferent as he moved about like a ghost. Between the waves of that dagger, icy light exploded. Ah! One of the star emissaries was hit in the back, so he couldn't help but shout kill this bastard first. The other two star emissaries nodded in hatred. Letting go of Zhao Xian, Di Yelan, and Hu Long, the three emissaries spared no effort to operate their profound qi. Three streaks of rainbow light sprang from their hands. The rainbow light flew toward Qi Yan like a sentient arrow, reflecting the thoughts of its masters. Be careful. That is the Dark King Spear from the Dark World. Mu Yudai cried, don't keep the image of that in your mind, or it will chase you forever. Shi Yan decisively moved out of the entanglement, dropping any ideas of fighting against the enemy and cleared his mind. In an instant, the three Dark King spears lost their direction and shot toward the grass in the distance. Bits of grass burst out in the explosion. Damn it! One star emissary cursed, and prepared to use some other tricks. Just then, Zhao Xian smelled the medicine bag and gradually recovered from the bone-cutting powder. Realizing this, the star emissary who was ready for trouble, dashed toward him. Zhao Xian swung his arms. His arms started to stretch out and draw back like a snake. Like a snake, Zhao Xian clasped the emissary, binding him from all angles. Hu Long! Mu Yudai shouted, and threw the bag to Hu Long who smelled the bag and quickly dashed out. As Zhao Xian and Hu Long had both rejoined the fight, Shi Yan felt less stressed. After sniffing the bag, the two got their energy back. But those three Dark Star emissaries got weaker and weaker after they poisoned by the bone-cutting powder. Soon they would be killed by Zhao Xian and Hu Long. De Yelan, out of the battle. Give this medicine bag to Uncle Luo. Mu Yudai called to De Yelan as she saw her ready to join the fight. De Yelan understood what Mu Yudai meant, and rapidly ran to Luo Hao. Shi Yan stopped and walked to Mu Yudai. Standing by her, he looked indifferent, but his eyes kept wandering to De Yelan. Bordeaux long hair, bronze skin, De Yelan was wearing crimson armor, which only covered her big breasts, the triangle area, and her cute hips. Her flat belly and shiny long legs were all exposed. Though Di Yelan's face was not that pretty, her figure was really hot, and her dress was wild enough to arouse any man. Even while standing beside Mu Yudai, Shi Yan didn't look at her at all. On the contrary, he couldn't move his gugu eyes away from Di Yelan, and didn't even bother to hide his male instinct. Is she pretty? Mu Yudai frowned and sniffed. Apparently she was a little unhappy. Shi Yan came to his senses and smiled to her, every man will be attracted by this hot girl. Mu Yudai had a gleam in her eyes as she gazed at him for a while, and then she giggled. You are really funny. How old are you? Are you a mature man? Shi Yan was surprised. She reminded him that his body was only 17 years old. And since he was getting skinnier these days, he looked like a 14-year-old boy now. Being in such an immature body and calling himself a man, talking about such erotic thing. Everything he did was really weird. Shaking his head, Shi Yan didn't explain. He pretended to walk away from Mu Yudai naturally and approached Zhao Xian and Hu Long. With a shrill cry, a star emissary spurted blood out of his mouth. His heart was ruptured by Zhao Xian's sky snake. He shook for a moment and then died. Shi Yan came forward. The profound qi from the dead body was slowly absorbed into Shi Yan's body in a way only he knew. At the same time, Shi Yan's eyes began to show a fierce glint, and a killing desire took over his mind. He knew that before the profound qi was purified, that desire would not disappear easily. Having seen what happened with Master Karu, Shi Yan had some experience now. After sensing it carefully for a while, he found that since he had reached the nascent realm, he could suppress the crazy desire in his mind and kept rational after he absorbed the profound qi from the two persons who were of the same level. Shi Yan guessed it was because his level was upgraded. He was merely an elementary realm warrior before, 
while Karu was of the nascent realm, he crossed a realm to purify Karu's profound chi, thus he went that crazy. Go after them. While Shi Yan was pondering, Zhao Xian yelled, and ran with Hu Long in the direction of those escaping emissaries. Stop chasing. Let's leave right now. Seeing that the leader, the Crescent Emissary, was running away too, Luo Hao shouted at Zhao Xian and Hu Long. Why, Uncle Luo? Zhao Xian couldn't understand. Luo Hao breathed the fragrance from the medicine bag deeply, and urged, Someone's coming. Must be another troop sent out from the Dark World. It will be too late for us to leave if the two troops meet. Remember. What is important is not killing those emissaries, but to protect Dai. Hearing that another troop was coming, Zhao Xian was astonished, and thus nodded in agreement. Luo Hao said no more. Though he had not entirely recovered, he came holding Mu Yu Dai's arm and said to Shi Yan, Boy, thank you very much. However, it's none of your business, so don't get involved and suffer. Goodbye. I own Miss Mu a life. Shi Yan did not seem to know how ferocious the dark world was. He looked nonchalant and said, One needs to return in form of a lake for the favor of one drop, and Miss Mu did save my life. I discriminate between love and hate. If someone treats me badly, I would pay him back ten times the hatred. If someone does me a favor, I would also return ten times the gratitude. I will travel with you for a while. Hope I can help. You sure are a man. Hu Long praised. Di Yelan showed radiance in her eyes, and giggled, Kid, you are not only horny, but also righteous and bold. You peeped me for quite a long time. I was going to teach you a lesson, now you are forgiven. You, Mu Yu Dai was stunned. She didn't expect Shi Yan to be so fair-minded. She was a little bit moved. Well, if you insist. I would not stop you. Luo Hao replied and nodded. He held Mu Yudai and began to run. The other three followed them rapidly. Shi Yan inhaled, and followed instantly. Dash. With a troop of warriors from Mo family, Mo Kaoch was moving fast through the woods. Suddenly he stopped halfway, rigidly staring at some emissaries from the dark world who had showed up unexpectedly. The Crescent Emissary was astounded too. He observed M.O.K.O.J. and his warriors with questioning eyes. Not knowing where they came from, the Emissary was a little worried. Maybe they came to aid Luo Hao. Second uncle, M.O. Yanya murmured. Her intuition was telling her that those people were not here with good intentions, so she wanted to remind M.O.K.O.J. M.O.K.O.J. stared into the Crescent Emissary's eyes for a while, and remarked, our target is a skinny boy around 15 years of age, who was last seen carrying a bag. We have no intention of offending you. The Crescent Emissary was secretly relieved secretly. The bone-cutting powder was taking effect in his body now, so he could only utilize 30% of his ability. If he were to fight against M.O.K.O.J., the outcome won't be good. Hearing what M.O.K.O.J. said, he had an idea. He said cunningly, Oh, we have seen that boy. He was with our target. May I know where that boy is now? M.O.K.O.J. asked politely. He didn't notice that Crescent Emissary was poisoned by the bone-cutting powder. But according to the gloomy air of that person, he guessed that the Emissary was a tricky one, so he held his arrogance. Over there the Crescent Emissary directed and answered coldly, You'd better be careful. That bastard is at a low level but he is accompanied by a warrior at the first sky of the disaster realm, who had the martial art ten times gravity. Too tough. First sky of the disaster realm. Hearing that, M.O.K.O.J. frowned slightly, and then nodded, thanks for the information. Let's go. M.O.K.O.J. waved his hand and left hurriedly with the warriors of the M.O. family. This guy was at the disaster realm as well. After they left, the Crescent Emissary's eyes turned dim. He smirked, Little bastard, you ruined my plan. I will kill you when I recover. Chapter 19, Petrifaction Martial Spirit A huge ancient tree appeared in front of Luo Hao. 
dozens meters high, it was so thick that ten people couldn't circle it hand in hand. The leaves almost covered the sky. Luo Hao stopped walking suddenly and released Mu Yu Dai, then gazed at the ancient tree. He looked dignified and seemed to be making a crucial decision. As Zhao Xian, De Yelan, and Hu Long came near the ancient tree, they turned serious as well, seemingly knowing there was something unusual about this tree. Shi Yan frowned, and he began to stare at this huge tree too, not saying a word. Luo Hao took a deep breath and turned to them, speaking in a low voice, to the right side of this sky tree, there are hardly any demon beasts, so most warriors and trade caravans choose this way when they cross the dark forest. This route is quite safe. Even if we encounter some demon beasts, they would be of low level, level 1 or level 2. And this route is closer to the merchant union, merely taking 10 days to get there. Zhao Xian and the other two nodded. Apparently they all knew it. After pausing for a while, Luo Hao added in a serious manner, but to the left of the sky tree, the situation is totally different. It's a longer way to the merchant union, and is haunted with demon beasts and many audacious warriors and soldiers. Those who dare to go this way are mostly tough guys. Being in danger all the time, they follow no restrictions of any kind. If we choose this way, we need to look out for not only demon beasts, but also for those irrational warriors and soldiers, especially when we have two pretty girls here among us. Humph! Anyone who would want to take advantage of me, I will chop his head off. De Yelan made a cutting motion in the air, with coldness in her beautiful eyes. Uncle Luo, what do you think? Zhao Xian asked. If we advance to the right, those from the Dark World will catch up in approximately one day and there will be a nasty fight. Having no choice and depressed, Luo Hao said, no one knows if we would be lucky enough in these upcoming days. And if their reinforcements came, it doesn't bode well for us. What about going to the left? Hu Long asked. If we go to the left, we would come across demon beasts, and more likely, we will be killed by those insane warriors. But it will be the same for those from the Dark World. They have bad reputation, and hardly anyone will go against them in the Fire Empire. Yet in this situation, they are the targets of the demon beasts and warriors. If they meet high-grade demon beasts accidentally, it's possible that they all will be killed. Luo Hao made his speech slowly, and after explaining them the situation, he remarked, to go via the right side, we won't be confronting any demon beasts or warriors, but the dark world will be a huge threat. To the left, we may be attacked by demon beasts and warriors, but the dark world shall also be threatened. Therefore, to go via the left, we have a greater possibility to escape. Go to the left then. Mu Yu Dai said decisively. Okay. Luo Hao nodded, and took a glance at Shi Yan, and said, Hey kid, there is still time if you want to leave. Otherwise, you will have no chance. I will go with you guys. Shi Yan had made up his mind. There was a very irrational side in his personality. That's why he had drowned in extreme sports, which were like games of death, for the past ten years. When Luo Hao was depicting the danger of the left side, Shi Yan couldn't help but get excited. Luo Hao nodded and waved his arm, well, let's set off. From now on, everyone must be on alert. Dash. One hour later. M.O. Kaoj and the warriors from the M.O. family also stopped at the sky tree. Second uncle, which way would they have chosen? M.O. Yanyu asked. I will chase by the right side. If I don't come back in two hours, you guys catch up this way. However, if I don't find them in two hours, they should have taken the left way. M.O. Kaoj thought for a while and ordered them to wait at the intersection. Then he flew away to the right side. After one and a half hours, M.O. Kaoj came back with a pale face, not even a slightest sign of these people. How dare they take the left side? Everybody watch out. There are many demon beasts and warriors on the left side. Never be negligent. Remember, don't make a fuss with those warriors and soldiers. These people are all lunatics. 
Don't provoke these people who don't know what death is. Yes sir. Let's go. Dash. Three saber-toothed rhinos were strolling along a brook leisurely. They were level three demon beasts. A silver glow shone on the back, their teeth were as sharp as sabers, while their fist-like brown eyes glittered with a murderous look. The three rhinos were all covered by hard mud, which formed a natural armor, through which any normal weapon would find hard to cut. The three saber-toothed rhinos were sipping water now and then, while looking around discreetly, seemingly to be looking for game. In the bushes not far from them, Luo Hao made a gesture to imply everybody to be quiet. Until the three saber-toothed rhinos walked away slowly, Luo Hao uttered a sigh of relief. He said, Saber-toothed rhinos are level 3 demon beasts, equaling human realm warriors. They move fast and have sharp tusks. Low-leveled warriors would either be injured or be killed once they met saber-toothed rhinos. Shi Yan kept wandering his eyes over those slowly disappearing rhinos, showing an interest in having a fight with them. Rather than killing the demon beasts here, our goal is to protect Dai. Everybody remember this. Don't bring up any unnecessary ramifications. Luo Hao seemed to have noticed Shi Yan's thoughts, and thus reminded them casually. Shi Yan grinned, and nodded to show he understood. Let's keep going. We need to be watchful here. To keep an eye on the surroundings is more important than moving forward fast. Try to get away from demon beasts and warriors. Don't get ourselves in trouble. Luo Hao added. Then he advanced with the troop. Dash. It was getting dark. Beside a lush tree at the brook, Zhao Xian and the other two separated and examined the surroundings with a cautious eye, in case any demon beast showed up. Shi Yan sat upright on the wet ground with a serious look. Bloodlust was lingering in Shi Yan's mind like smoke. He had an urge to release it. It was high time he purify the profound chi he absorbed from the two star emissaries, thus he was becoming a little impatient. Luo Hao stood beside Mu Yudai all the times. Frowning, he focused his eyes on Shi Yan, lest this boy took any abnormal action. Mu Yudai looked indifferent and she stared at Shi Yan for a while. When she saw the aggressive look on his face, she sat down gently and crossed her legs. Setting the ancient zither on her legs, she began to play. Hearing the zither, the concentrated bloodthirst in Shi Yan's mind seemed to be resolved by a certain power and gradually faded away. Holding his breath and focusing his mind, Shi Yan operated his profound chi peacefully. One hour later, a warm flow gushed out of his meridians all over his body. Shi Yan's body trembled. Suddenly, Shi Yan got a severe thirst in his body. The weird power gushing out from his meridians was absorbed by his muscles and bones, before it could mix with the profound chi in his abdomen. The warm stream went into his muscles and bones, and set root in his blood and flesh. Within several breaths, the weird warm stream from his meridians pervaded into his blood, flesh, and bones all over the body, which astonished him a lot. Thus, Shi Yan began to feel the warm stream flowing in his blood, flesh, and bones. Bang! There was a heavy strike in his head, and the next moment, he felt a strange change in his body. Turning pale with fear, he opened his eyes promptly to find his bare arms turning gray, bit by bit. Petrifaction. Shi Yan was frightened. He began to withdraw his attention from his body, not giving a single thought to the sudden change. As his thoughts changed, his hardening body soon went back to normal. Concentrating, Shi Yan looked at the others. Luo Hao and Mu Yudai were chatting behind a tree not far from him, without noticing what he had just experienced. Relieved, happiness took over his face, as he secretly enjoyed a mirthful time. His body became hard, which meant the petrifaction martial spirit of the Shi family had awakened. The petrifaction martial spirit was exclusive to the Shi family. As one's level increased, it became stronger and stronger, to the extent that one won't be damaged by weapons and the impact of profound Qi. Before, Shi Yan had thought that the owner of his body didn't possess this martial spirit. It surprised him that it had awakened after he reached nascent realm. He was ecstatic. 
the petrifaction martial spirit was beneficial in battles. After petrification, one's body would be as hard as rock, but was still very agile, which would increase one's ability a lot. Apart from petrifaction, Shi Yan also found he also possessed the immortal martial spirit, which could achieve self-recovery. With the help of these two martial spirits and more training, he couldn't imagine how powerful his body would become. No. Shi Yan frowned and thought, don't martial spirits show up not long after birth? But this body is already seventeen, and yet my martial spirit can still awaken? Too strange. Or does it have something to do with the weird energy gushing out from the meridians? An idea suddenly flashed in his mind. The activation of the two martial spirits, Petrifaction and Immortal, were somehow related to the blood pool and the changes in his meridians. Shi Yan guessed that the weird stream gushing out from his meridians could stimulate the martial spirit hidden in one's body. With this thought, he was so excited that he wanted to sing out loud and celebrate. A martial spirit was inherited. Generally, it got stronger as one's level increased. There were hardly any other ways to strengthen a martial spirit. A martial spirit was the gift that a warrior was most proud of, and also the vital thing to define a warrior's ability. Warriors trained arduously to improve their martial spirit. But even if one's level had upgraded, there were limitations in increasing the level of a martial spirit. On the Grace mainland, even those legendary god-level alchemists could barely refine pills effective to general martial spirits. Those pills were rare and precious on the Grace mainland, and were believed to exist merely in legends. Nonetheless, the effect those pills had on martial spirits was also quite limited. After all, martial spirits were an inherited gift, which was very hard to change. Surprisingly, the weird warm stream gushing out from Shi Yan's meridians seemed to go against the rules. It could virtually stimulate martial spirit and increase its ability. Chapter 20, Steel Himself Stars were illuminating the dark sky, surrounding the bright crescent moon. The cool moonlight went through the tree leaves and scattered around, illuminating the quiet and dark forest. Di Yelan and Hu Long were patrolling around, while Zhao Xian was having a rest, leaning against the tree with stable breaths, eyes closed. Luo Hao was standing next to another ancient tree on alert, never relaxing his vigilance. Among the dense leaves of that tree, Miu Yudai was sleeping quietly. After a long day's journey, she was exhausted, for she couldn't operate her profound qi at will. Luo Hao looked up at Miu Yudai, who was resting among the leaves, now and then, showing a rare tenderness in his eyes. Da! Da! Luo Hao's thick eyebrows frowned, as he saw Shi Yan approaching nearby. He asked in surprise, still awake. Yet. Shi Yan nodded and answered in a low tone. He stood still beside Luo Hao, and asked under his breath, wouldn't it be easy for them to spot us here? Of course not. Luo Hao smiled, there is no settled route through the forest, and demon beasts and warriors are always showing up now and then, so those from the dark world will find it hard to distinguish our tracks. In this area, those demon beasts and warriors are whom we need to pay more attention to. That is to say, they won't find us easily. After pondering a bit, Shi Yan asked again, Uncle Luo, do you need to consume too much profound qi to release your gravitational field? Why do you want to know this? Luo Hao was puzzled. I want to steal myself with the help of your gravitational field. Under the gravitational field, I will have to bear a huge pressure, which will strengthen my body. I want to know my limits. Shi Yan replied seriously. He didn't go with the conventional path. Usual training didn't excite him, so he seeked out passion desperately. To steal yourself by using my gravitational field, Luo Hao's eyes lit up, and he nodded, great idea, but are you sure you want to try it? If those emissaries found us while you were exhausted, you couldn't even fight back. I don't plan to use my profound qi. Shi Yan smiled. To steal yourself using merely with your body. Luo Hao was shocked. Yes. Luo Hao fell in a deep thought for a long time, and said, You have just reached the nascent realm, 
so it is beneficial to train your body in a proper way and get used to it. But you haven't strengthened your body before. It is crazy that you want to train in my gravitational field without operating your profound chi. You're sure you can endure that? I want to try. Shi Yan replied calmly. Good. Follow me. Luo Hao nodded, and walked away without making a sound. Shi Yan followed him. After they left in silence, Mu Yu Dai, who was sleeping on the leaves, slowly opened her eyes. Gazing at the two people beside the river from afar, Mu Yu Dai was taken by surprise and puzzlement. She murmured to herself, just reached the nascent realm and he wants to steal himself under the gravitational field. Is this guy insane? Mu Yu Dai became more and more confused as she thought about it, so much that she couldn't fall asleep anymore. Out of curiosity, she slipped down the ancient tree dexterously, and sneaked over to Shi Yan and Luo Hao, in order to see what would happen next. Dash. Let's start with the gravitational field at five times normal gravity first. Generally, a nascent realm warrior's body can only endure this after undergoing specialized training. You have to do what you are capable of. When you feel it is unbearable, stop the procedure at once. Standing still, Luo Hao added, since it's your first training, run laps around me first. If you can run ten laps without using your profound chi, your body will strengthen. Remember, do within your limits. After his speech, a violent wave broke out from Luo Hao's body all at once. In an instant, centering about Luo Hao, the gravity surged by five times. The area around him seemed to have collapsed. The air had become so heavy that one could hardly breathe. An invisible pressure suddenly surrounded him all over. Shi Yan felt as if sand had filled all his cells, and his body was carrying hundreds of pounds of weight. The tendons of his knees tightened, and his heart was beating at a faster rate. Under the effects of the increased gravity, all his muscles were under tremendous pressure. His body slowly adapted to the invisible pressure from the increased gravity. However, he found it hard to breathe, even when merely standing still. Holy crap! Shi Yan was too astonished when he felt that overwhelming pressure. He thought to himself that, Anyone who went into Luo Hao's gravitational field would be severely influenced by it. They wouldn't be able to use their abilities at their best. It was only five times of gravity. What would happen if it was increased by ten times? Realizing the horrifying part of this martial spirit, Shi Yan took a deep breath, and drove all the distracting thoughts out of his mind. He yelled, and then began to run around Luo Hao. His body shook as the pressure increased. His feet seemed to be filled with metal, and were heavier than a thousand pounds. Normal running also became the most terrible torment. In the gravitational field, his body couldn't move easily. He felt as if being pressed by a giant. He could hardly breathe. One lap. His speed had slowed down by half. Three laps. He slowed down by half again. Five laps. Shi Yan was not running. Instead he was walking. On the sixth lap, Shi Yan's face was as red as an apple, while the blue veins on his arms were trembling like small snakes, about to jump out of the skin. On the seventh lap, Shi Yan looked like a beast, as his eyes were almost on fire from the lack of oxygen. On the eighth lap, Shi Yan staggered. Every step exhausted him. After every step he would quiver. At that time, Luo Hao couldn't stand it anymore. He shouted, it is your first gravitational field training. Don't try too hard. You have reached your limit here. Enough. Stop. Or you will be dead tired. Shi Yan raised his head, while his eyes looked as if they were bleeding. He said in a grave tone, he he. That was interesting, let's go on. Luo Hao stood aghast and could only come up with the idea conclusion, this guy went insane. In the bushes not far from them, Mu Yudai was speechless, her mouth covered by her hand. She had never met someone like Shi Yan before. Shi Yan didn't reply Luo Hao. After another beast-like haul, he continued to step forward. 
with his face showing extreme stress, he finished another lap. By the last lap, his body was swaying. He had a quiver in each step, and could fall any time, as if he would die at any moment. With his body in that state, he finished another lap, step by step. After that, he got a weird smile on his face. Waking from his astonishment, Luo Hao was relieved when he saw Shi Yan was okay. He was about to withdraw the gravitational field before advising Shi Yan. Mu Yudai pressed her mouth with her hand, and had an amazed look in her attractive eyes. She had never thought that Shi Yan would achieve this extreme challenge, even if he was at the nascent realm. Another lap. Shi Yan yelled. What? Luo Hao's body shook greatly, and his eyes grew as sharp as knives. He shouted, Enough! Don't fool around. Before Luo Hao withdrew the gravitational field, Shi Yan continued to walk unexpectedly. He was staggering, and finally dropped on the ground. Luo Hao was just about to shout, when he found Shi Yan was using both his hands and feet, crawling like a demon beast. He seemed to be seeking death on purpose. After about half an hour, Shi Yan finally made it to the end, as slow as a snail. Mu Yudai stared at him from the bushes, completely stunned. Chapter 21, Pervert Shi Yan lay on the ground on his back with his limbs spread. His face was red, as though he were bleeding. He was panting heavily and his body was twitching every now and then. Looking at the sparkling stars above, Shi Yan could feel every cell of his body trembling. As his body twitched, his muscles, veins, and bones were all expanding and contracting regularly. Not using his profound chi, he closed his eyes slowly, and began to feel the fantastic shift in his body, the amazing quivers in the muscles and ribs, the destruction and reconstruction of cells, and the slow increase in strength. As a wild fanatic for extreme sports, Shi Yan knew that reaching his this limit this time was merely the beginning of next adventure. The limit of a human body could always be broken, and be surpassed time and time again. The potential of human body was infinite. Those extreme sports experiences had taught him that only by breaking the limit could he obtain rapid progress. With his eyes closed, he could clearly sense the changes happening in his muscle fibers, even without operating his profound chi. Sensing it carefully, Shi Yan soon found the immortal martial spirit in his body beginning to work. It was repairing his body in an incredible way reconstructing and strengthening his torn muscles. Rigorous training under increased gravity enhanced one's explosive force. Only when the muscles tore under these extreme conditions could they become bigger, more powerful and more explosive after reconstruction. As a fanatic for extreme sports, Shi Yan was so aware of the truth, which had been verified by his repeated practices. He knew the fastest way to strengthen his muscles. Feeling the effects of his immortal martial spirit beginning to reduce the pain in all his muscle fibers, Shi Yan struggled to sit up. He took the food out of his bag and began to wolf it down, feeling happy with his progress. Intensive exercise consumed too much of his energy. He had to eat a lot of food to recover quickly and improve his power. The dry meat was eaten and slipped into his guts where it was quickly digested and became nutrition. In a very short time, he had finished enough food for five people. As he felt the changes in his body, his smile became broader. After exercising his limbs for a while, he closed his eyes and began to circulate his profound chi quietly. As the profound chi moved, Shi Yan felt a slight quiver in his body. Just as he had expected. The profound chi was flowing in his meridians virtually 30% faster than normal. His body became more sensitive after the extreme stress and likewise, his meridians became abnormally dynamic. His weak meridians seemed to be absorbing the profound chi flowing through them, and with that energy, his meridians expanded and became firmer. Shi Yan had presumed long ago that strengthening the body was as important as training the profound chi, the two were complementary. Once the body was strong enough, the profound chi would condense faster. The stronger the body, the more beneficial it was when operating and condensing profound chi. So maybe, the two martial spirits hidden in his body would enhance as well. 
His first attempt had successfully verified Shi Yan's hypothesis, so he was grinning from ear to ear. Dash. In the thick grass far away. Dai, why are you here? You should have a good rest. Get plenty of sleep, so your martial spirit recovers. Luo Hao had noticed Mu Yu Dai when he was training Shi Yan with his gravitational field. As Shi Yan was sprawled on the ground exhausted, Luo Hao came to Mu Yu Dai secretly and complained. I couldn't sleep so I am just walking around. I just happened to see you training. Mu Yu Dai smiled gently in fear. She paused, and said with a naughty smile, Uncle Luo, was it too much for him? I remember that when you trained Zhao Xian, you had just tripled the gravity. Zhao Xian was at second sky of the nascent realm them, and had the experience of body strengthening before. Why did you quintuple the gravity for this guy? Wearing a bitter smile, Luo Hao shook his head and sighed, I used the quintuple gravity at the very beginning to stop him from wasting energy and make him quit. Who would have known that he was insane? I was shocked in the end too. I tried to stop numerous times but he wouldn't agree. You mean, you just tried to scare him in the beginning? So he won't ask you to train himself later on. Mu Yu Dai rolled her eyes and felt quite speechless. Yup. Luo Hao sighed again. You know, to control the gravitational field consumes a lot of profound qi, and during that, I can't be distracted. I neither wanted to waste my own profound qi, nor wanted him to be paralyzed tomorrow, which would slow our journey. Who would have known that he is a lunatic? So, Uncle Luo, how many laps did you presume that he could have managed? Four laps. Luo Hao lifted four fingers and said in a heavy voice, Average warriors who have just stepped into the nascent realm without any systematic body training can only manage four laps in the quintuple gravitational field, five laps at most. That guy is so small and thin, so I thought he would ask me to stop on the fourth lap. Hmm but he finished 11 laps. Mu Yu Dai got a weird expression on her face. She couldn't help but take a glance at Shi Yan from afar, who was sitting there as firm as a mountain and training again. God! He, he is upright again. What? He can still move. Luo Hao was stunned as he glanced over at Shi Yan. He shook his head and said, Lunatic. This guy is a lunatic. Too reckless. I guess he couldn't even move tomorrow. With this intensive training, he would find his body hurting everywhere tomorrow. I bet we will have to adjust our plan tomorrow. Well, let it be. What an unruly guy. Mu Yu Dai shook her head and smiled subtly. Dash. The next morning, before the sun rose, there was very heavy fog. Dai, come down. It is time to set off. Under the ancient tree, Luo Hao called out to Mu Yu Dai softly. I want to sleep more. Mu Yu Dai murmured as if in dreams, why so early today? Weren't you sure that he couldn't move today? He is waiting for you. Luo Hao said in a very low voice, his face still trying to control his surprise. Ten minutes ago Shi Yan came to him asking for enough food for three people. Right in front of them. Shi Yan wolfed down the food and patted his belly, sighing with satisfaction, let's go. Luo Hao was totally astonished, he glared at Shi Yan with frightened eyes for a few minutes before he murmured to himself, pervert. That guy is waiting for me too. Mu Yu Dai murmured, rubbing her eyes unwillingly. Yes, he is more energetic than anyone. He smiled bitterly. What? Mu Yu Dai suddenly woke up astonished. She looked for Shi Yan under the tree, to find him sitting straight like an arrow with bright eyes. The same as Luo Hao, she murmured, pervert. Shi Yan scrutinized his own wearing and was sure that there was nothing strange. He frowned, Uncle Luo, and Miss Mu, which part of me looks like a pervert? Your whole body. Mu Yu Dai chuckled and got in a joyful mood. Her chuckle seemed to bring a spring that made the beautiful scenes in the dark forest seem dim in comparison. Zhao Xian and Hulong were fascinated with Gugu eyes, but the soon realized their misdemeanor and lowered their heads to cover it up, 
not daring to look into Mu Yu Dai's eyes directly. Shi Yan narrowed his eyes and wandered his burning eyes on Mu Yu Dai's beautiful face audaciously, Miss Mu, if I were a pervert, I would put my hands on you first. So be careful tonight, I would be unable to control myself. You should scream loudly then. I love women's crazy screams so much. How dare you? Di Yelan sniffed. Oh, sorry, I forgot there is another pretty woman. Maybe you are angry because I ignored you. Trust me, I will go for you too, don't be jealous now. Shi Yan pretended that he just realized that and patted his head to show regret, as if he had forgotten something important. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Mu Yudai held her stomach and burst into laughter in the tree, almost falling down. She pointed at Shi Yan and giggled, You funny guy. Why are you so hilarious? Ha ha. Di Yelan was dumbstruck, and then chuckled too, feeling helpless when it came to Shi Yan. Zhao Xian and Hu Long were taken over by confusion too, and their facial expressions couldn't be stranger. They just couldn't understand that even when they always acted politely with the two girls, and didn't dare to do anything to offend them, they two girls scarcely smiled at them. While Shi Yan showed not the slightest hint politeness towards the girls with his giddy words, but the girls smiled at him a lot. What the hell is with that? Oh. Luo Hao glanced at Shi Yan strangely and smiled, Well, stop it now, let's move. Chapter 22 Shi Family The Merchant Union, Tianyun City In the stone room of the Shi Family Yang Hai, who was a little stout, was sitting on a stone stool with a serious face. Eyes narrowed, he was checking an account book, page by page, and reporting the recent month's production status of the quarry to the family head of Shi family, Shi Jian. Though Shi Jian was in his seventies, he looked in good health. Being the family head of Shi family, he was simply wearing a plain gown which was suited to martial training. Sitting on a brown stone stool, he had a calm demeanor and was listening to Yang Hai earnestly. After Yang Hai illustrated the case, Shi Jian frowned and commented, Hi, the production in recent months has literally decreased by 20%. What's up? It's all because of the M.O. and Ling families. Yang Hai sighed, many skilled peatmen were lured away by their high salary. We are now lacking in peatmen. We were in bad situation due to the secret fight with the two families. Those peatmen feared that we would be beaten by them, plus they were being offered a higher salary, so the peatmen turned to them. Humph. Shi Jian sniffed. They are doing that deliberately. Since Mo Yanyu and Ling Xiaofeng got engaged, the Mo family and Ling families have gotten closer and closer. The Ling family has also been interfering in our secret fight with Mo family. They must have come to an agreement, or Mo family couldn't compete with us. Master, when do we strike back? Yang Hai asked. No worries. I have a plan. Shi Jian looked assured, then he paused and frowned, Is my little bastard grandson Shi Yan still is not back home? No. I was just about to mention that. Yang Hai looked disturbed, that stupid boy said he would go to the dark forest before he left. It's been a year since he left home. I received information a couple of days ago that Mo Kyoj and Mo Yanya were in the dark forest as well. I'm afraid he has had an accident. He didn't take any capable escorts with him. His mother Ching died early, and we have this single child. I am so worried. Shi Jian frowned and kept silent for a long while. Then he sighed, this boy was born without inheriting the Petra faction martial spirit of the Shi family, and nor was he fascinated by martial arts. Instead, he was crazy about those odd things, and would always goof around. Troublesome. Master, it's all because of my humble bloodline. If I had a martial spirit, Ching would have given birth to a kid with a martial spirit. Yang Hai was ashamed. It's all doomed. Shi Jian shook his head, Hi, I found you by the endless sea. Though you are not my own, I treat you as my own son, or, I wouldn't have betrothed my daughter Ching to you. Yes, you don't own a martial spirit, 
nor did you train in martial arts, but you play a key role in the development of Shi family and the management of our quarries. We wouldn't have accumulated so much wealth if it hadn't been for you. Though you don't know about martial arts, you contribute a lot to the family. But nowadays, a strong warrior is much more valuable than anything. Yang Hai smiled and mocked himself, if I had a martial spirit, I would have trained in martial arts. And if Yan had inherited the petrifaction martial spirit from his mother, he too would have trained in it. But a martial spirit is inborn. Shi Jian nodded, and sighed, yes. It's true. A strong warrior is more valuable than anything. Family head, could that little boy be in danger? Yang Hai couldn't help but worry. He shouldn't be. Shi Jian thought for a while, and added, My grandson isn't into martial arts, so the Mo family have never set their eyes upon him. Neither Mo Kaoj nor Mo Yanyu have seen him before. So it's not possible that they would harm him. But I still feel something's wrong. He should have been home. Well, I will tell those soldiers in Silent Town to keep an eye for him. Silent Town was beside the dark forest. Once they spot Shi Yan, they will let us know. So don't worry. Thank you, family head. Why? Your son is also my grandson. Shi Jian glared at him and berated, How many times have I told you? Don't call me family head. I'm your adoptive father, and also your father-in-law. You can call me anything but family head. I got it, father. Okay. Dash. The Dark Forest. A Silent Night. Luo Hao was standing still on the side of the track, with the quintuple gravitational field surrounding him, it was getting very hard to breath. Shi Yan was perspiring from all over his body, as he pounded in the air and jumped around Luo Hao. Blue veins showed up on his face and neck, quivering like little snakes. In the grass, Mu Yudai was gazing at them secretly biting a straw in her mouth. Guess how long could he endure today? Di Yelan asked as she walked up and sat beside her. You finished your task today. Mu Yudai chuckled, without replying her. Zhao Xian took over. It was really dangerous. A single horned silver snake was twining around the tree trunk, and I didn't notice it. I was almost bitten by it. If I hadn't moved quick enough, I would be dead right now. Di Yelan still looked terrified. She cursed, more and more demon beasts are appearing these days. We have to be careful. We have met five groups of demon beasts in the past three days. They walk around especially at night. You'd better take me with you next time you want to peep. Or you will be in danger. You just wanted to say the last thing right. Mu Yudai giggled. Ha. You found it out. Di Yelan didn't disguise herself and said, that guy is really something. He broke his limit every day in the past three days, and got more and more stamina. Though I'm at the third sky of the nascent realm, I don't dare break the rules in the quintuple gravitational field of Uncle Luo. This guy is literally insane. Every time, he won't stop until he faints. Nuts. Nuts. His endurance is most shocking. Mu Yudai shook her head slowly, as her eyes glimmered. Yes, and he recovered in such a short time. Unbelievable. He is only at the first sky of the nascent realm, but he has incredible recovering ability. Di Yelan was confused too. This guy, has so many secrets. Mu Yudai thought for a while and murmured, I have never seen anyone greedier than him. He almost ate up all our food in the past three days. I'm now worried about food. He is such a rice bucket asterisk. Asterisk Ed note, a rice bucket is a slang term for a useless person. Someone who is only good for eating rice. Di Yelan laughed, but he talks in a funny way. Any of his casual talks could amuse us a lot. And he has so many novel ideas that I have never heard of. He says that kings must be voted in by citizens, and merchants dominate a country. By the way, he even composes sarcastic poems. I'm really confused, how could this 17-year-old boy be filled with so many odd things? 
and it is this seventeen-year-old guy who looks as if he wants eat us when he casts his eyes upon us. I have never seen such possessive eyes. Bastard. Too bad. Mu Yudai grinned her teeth, and made an action of cutting in the air, I would let him know how capable I am. Till your martial spirit is back, ha, huh, what's the big deal to let him look at us? We don't lose anything. Also Zhao Xian and Hu Long, the cowards, pretend to not be ogling at my ass when I am right in front of them. I despise them more. Compared to them, that bastard is bolder, I like it. Di Yelan laughed loudly. You are trying to seduce him. Mu Yudai smirked, he is still a kid. Don't seduce him. Have you seen any kid who gives that kind of look? Di Yelan lowered her voice, I am guessing that he is older than he looks. Maybe he had adopted some secret skill to make himself look young. Maybe it's a special secret martial spirit. Could be. Seems we have to be careful. Mu Yudai pondered, and then nodded slowly. Dash. Bang. Shi Yan was sprawled on his back. He was totally exhausted. He asked in a raucous voice, how many laps? Fifteen. Luo Hao answered with a complex look. You made actions of jumping and rolling during the fifteen laps, which made the pressure much bigger. Young man, you really, can bear that. Well we will know tomorrow. Shi Yan found it even impossible to speak. In the past three days, he trained in rampage whenever he had free time. After the arduous training, the meridians in his chest and waist could easily release negative energy at his will, which made him pine away a lot. He almost trained every part of his body to the most, but the hardest part, was his brain. At night, he would ask Luo how to lay the quintuple gravitational field, then he could steal himself under the massive stress. Three days. In those short three days, he broke his limit from 11 laps to 15 laps. While running, he also increased the hardness as he jumped and rolled, to consume more energy. By undergoing this intensive training, he found his body becoming much more powerful than before. His hands, feet, ribs, muscles, and entrails all became stronger. Every morning, when he woke from his training, his body would be full of explosiveness, and he could jump several meters higher in normal gravity. Even his hands and feet became more agile. He could feel the progress every day clearly, thus he continued the training, and wrecked himself crazily. He steeled himself in such strenuous way that his ability increased rapidly, while his profound chi condensed even faster as well. A-A-A-O. A-A-A-O. There came a weird sound from far away. Luo Hao turned pale and cried out, It's the level 4 demon beast, Fire Snake. A Fire Snake is very tough. They don't usually go out at night. Someone must have annoyed them. Uncle Luo. Zhao Xian and Hu Long hurried over, looking anxious. What's up? Lu Hao yelled. A troop of warriors are hunting the Fire Snake and the latter are approaching toward us. The warriors are hell-bent, thus the fire snakes are totally irritated. Zhao Xian was in a panic. Shit. Luo Hao took off the broadsword on his shoulder, and said, Take care of Dai. Then he dashed away. Shi Yan, who was suffering all over, sat up immediately and began to operate his profound chi. Eyes lit and cool-minded, he silently gazed in the direction of Luo Hao. Chapter 23, Tush Mercenary Union Zhao Xian and Zhao Long dashed toward the bush and encircled Mu Yudai. Mu Yudai, who had been hiding in the bushes for a long time, stood up ashamed. She took a quick glance at Shi Yan while blushing, and guessed she had lost face. But soon she found her assumption incorrect, for Shi Yan didn't even pay attention to her. Instead, he was glaring at the direction of Luo Hao, like a wary beast. After a speedy big circulation cycle by Shi Yan, the pain had reduced bit by bit. Looking serious, Shi Yan tried to recover while focusing on Luo Hao. Go after it. The fire snake looks very weak now. Catch it. Don't let it go. Fire the arrows. 
quick. Shoo. Shoo. From the woods not far away, came shouts and wrangles. Arrows flew fast in the air, chasing their targets. Hoo. All of a sudden, there was a fire in the woods. The fierce fire covered the area in no time, and heavy smoke rose quickly and twined around the trees, making people unable to breathe. Ka ka ka. Bang bang bang. Bang. The sound of trees exploding, flying arrows, and fighters on the move, all came at the same time from that brook. A fierce battle was going on in the woods. Someone's there. An unfriendly shout came from the woods, you want to steal our success. Don't get it wrong. I just don't want the fire snake to hurt my people, so I simply stopped it from running that way. It was Luo Hao's voice. He seemed to have a dispute with someone far away. Humph. We, the Tush Mercenary Union, have kept an eye on this fire snake for half a month, you'd better not get involved. I said, I'm not interested in a level 4 demon beast. Luo Hao explained. Uncle Luo is having words with someone, let's go and see. Mu Yudai raised her head from the bushes and frowned. She was a little worried since she didn't know what was happening there. Yes, let's go. Hu Long grunted, I have heard of the Tush Mercenary Union. They have a very bad reputation. We can't let them take advantage of Uncle Luo. Then let's hurry. Hearing that, Mu Yudai began to panic more. Okay. Zhao Xian nodded and said to Hu Long and Di Yelan, You still need to encircle Miss Mu when we reach there. Put her safety in the first place, even during fights. Rubbish. We all know this. Di Yelan was getting impatient. While muttering, the four quietly rushed toward Luo Hao. Shi Yan was not at all worried. He stood up after a few minutes. Feeling the vibrancy of his profound chi in the meridians, he at first moved his hands and feet slowly in order to make sure that they were still flexible after the fatigue. Then he followed the four people at leisure. Whoa! One man yelled in surprise, Beautiful girls, haha, there are two beautiful girls. I have lingered here for two months and have never seen such beautiful girls. Captain, you had promised that you would let us be satisfied. Don't go back on your word. Shut up. They are unavailable. Dash. Shi Yan walked up slowly, and began to look around with a rigid face. On the ground, was an eight meter long huge snake which had patterns of fire all over its body. Its tail was blazing and its body was covered with arrows. Meanwhile, a large quantity of blood was flowing out of the wound between its eyes. Eight mercenaries, in warrior uniforms, were standing around the fire snake. They looked robust and rough, and each of them got a tattoo of Tush on their left arm. All of them were at least nascent realm. The captain's short brown hair stood like steel needles. There was a long scar on his left cheek which extended to his neck, making him look extremely savage. When Shi Yan arrived, those mercenaries were staring at Mu Yudai and Di Yelan with lustful eyes. They looked rather infatuated. However, the captain was not looking at the girls at all, but exchanging glances with Luo Hao. The captain's right hand was at the cuff, where silver light was glowing now and then. He was prepared to have a fight. Go home and look at your mama. Under those mercenaries' salacious eyes, De Yelan couldn't help cursing them. Ha ha. This woman has a fiery temper. I love it. An uncivilized mercenary with a bare and hairy chest burst into laughter. He patted his thigh and shouted, Captain. I want this woman. Son of a bitch. De Yelan drew out the sword beside her waist and posed to fight, come on. Let me see if you are a real man. Haha, <laughs> here I am. That big guy was joyful and was about to rush forward. Tamu. Bernard shouted, then he lowered his voice, don't make a fuss. Everything is negotiable. Okay, Captain. That man with hairy chest, whose name was Tamu, smirked and shook his legs to De Yelan, and laughed cunningly, bitch, you will know how manly I am when we are naked. I will cut off your balls. 
Di Yelan shot back. Disgusted, Miu Yu Dai frowned but didn't utter a word. She had gotten used to such remarks. Who let you come here? Luo Hao got a little worried. He knew those mercenaries well. These mercenaries, who stayed here to kill demon beasts, were leading an extremely dangerous life. They could be killed by demon beasts at any time. Under that stress, they didn't care much about morals or laws, and did a lot of nasty things. Miu Yudai and Di Yelan were both pretty, and prettiness was the rarest thing in this area. The soft bodies of these pretty girls were the best comfort for those brutal mercenaries, so Luo Hao got a bad feeling at the sight of these men. Shi Yan came up and stood beside Luo Hao silently, and began to observe the Tush Mercenary Union. Tamu. The scar-faced captain of the Tush Mercenary Union, Bernard, yelled out viciously, Take the things. At the same time, he was gazing at Luo Hao and Shi Yan with cold eyes, silver light glowing from the cuff. Yes, Captain. Tamu stopped teasing De Yelan and commanded his people to move. Thus, three mercenaries walked up with daggers. They operated on the fire snake with blood all over their bodies. Ripping the skin, gouging the eyes, pulling out the tusks. They were doing it carefully and skillfully. Bernard and the rest of the mercenaries kept staring at Luo Hao and others. They were all ready to assault them once Luo Hao made any move. Looking rigid, Luo Hao held his glowing broadsword and said, We don't have a slightest interest in the fire snake. You are busy, we are going. Luo Hao knew Bernard was tough, so he don't want to ask for trouble. To bring Miu Yu Dai to a safe place was most important. Seeing they were leaving, Bernard was a little stunned, as he called out, Wait. Luo Hao got serious as he turned around. He said, Hey buddies, I don't want to have a dispute with you guys. You guys don't go too far either. Yeah well, Bernard smirked, the muscles on his face relaxing, Friend, you got us wrong. I just want to make a deal with you. Nothing else. What deal? Luo Hao was surprised. What about one fire snake's eye, three tusks, and two meters snake skin for the two women? Bernard pointed at Miu Yu Dai and Di Yelan, and smiled, My people haven't touched women for a long time. They need to be satisfied. All women here have a price, and my offer is quite fair. What do you think? F. Hu Long's eyes were almost on fire. Zhao Xian grunted. Miu Yu Dai bit her teeth as well while Di Yelan waved her sword and shouted, Come if you dare. Only Shi Yan kept silent as he gazed at the captain. Luo Hao stretched out his hand to stop Di Yelan and shook his head to her. Then he turned around and said to Bernard, I'm sorry, they are my friends, not my possessions. They can't be traded. Well, never mind. Bernard nodded, and said casually see you. See you. Luo Hao looked into his eyes, then yelled, Let's go. Luo Hao glared at Di Yelan, suggesting her to keep silent. Zhao Xian and Hu Long were both furious, but they could do nothing after seeing Luo Hao's eyes. They had to encircle Miu Yu Dai and leave. Shi Yan touched his own nose and left without a word too. Dash. Captain, the same as usual. After Luo Hao and others disappeared into the woods, Tumu giggled. We know what type of woman you like, so we won't touch that little girl. But that hot bitch, Captain, you have to give her to us. Bernard's eyes got colder and colder, and he nodded gently, collect the things on the snake first, and then do what we usually do. Got it. Tamu smirked, that woman wanted to cut my cock. I would F her to death later. She is a beautiful flower with thorns, and though lower than you, she is at the third sky of the nascent realm. You need to be careful. Don't fail miserably in an easy task. Bernard grunted. Remember to kill those men first, don't merely indulge yourselves in the woman. Be cautious, don't let anyone run away. Yes, Captain. Chapter 24, Trouble Uncle Luo, why are we retreating? As they were marching, Di Yelan cut tree trunks with her sword and was angry, 
how dare that bastard tease Miss Mew and me. Shit. Nothing would have happened if you two didn't show up. Now we've gotten ourselves into trouble. Alas. Luo Hao sighed and said, stop babbling. Let's leave. Hopefully we can escape it. Uncle Luo, we've already left, what's wrong? Mew Yu Dai got confused. It's more complicated than what you think. Luo Hao shook his head, none of those mercenaries are good men. That captain was so salacious when he looked at you that he wouldn't let it go easily. The four mercenaries operating on the snake appeared to be indifferent when we left, but they were much more interested in you, thus it's unreasonable that they would give up. They must know their captain's plan well. Mew Yu Dai's pretty face turned pale, Uncle Luo, are you guessing that they would pursue us? Not a guess. I'm very sure about it. Luo Hao sighed again, they didn't take action at once, for they were considering the materials on the demon snake. Other warriors and mercenaries may have come up to collect their prey when they were fighting with us. So surely they will chase us after they get the material on the snake. The Tush Mercenary Union have a really bad reputation. I have heard about them doing a lot of bad things. Uncle Luo is right. Hu Long added. Uncle Luo, sorry, we were worried about you. Mu Yu Dai was in low mood. I understand. Luo Hao replied. However, he suddenly stopped and put Mu Yu Dai down gently. Thus, Shi Yan stopped as well. He asked while frowning, What happened? They are pursuing us. Luo Hao glanced at Shi Yan in appreciation and nodded, replying with a rigid face, Must be them. Uncle Luo, what should we do now? Hu Long was furious and he yelled, They went too far. Let's fight against them like hell. Luo Hao looked serious. He thought quickly and ordered, De Yelan, carry Dai and go first, and send signals to us all the way. Young man, you go with them, and be careful. Choose untraversed regions, and don't get into high-level demon beast areas. What about you? Shi Yan asked calmly. We three will stay. Without Dai amongst us we can do sneak attacks easily. After delaying them, we will catch up. Those guys won't fight with us if they don't see the girls. They should stop soon. Luo Hao replied fast. Got it. Shi Yan nodded and smiled lightheartedly, don't worry uncle, where there are these two pretty girls, there will be me. Okay, go. Luo Hao replied. Di Yelan wanted to stay and fight but she had to compromise under Luo Hao's firm gaze. She stamped on the ground with regret and crouched to carry Mu Yu Dai. Then she ran to the thickest part of the forest. After some hesitation, Shi Yan took out a paper bag from his bag and put it in Luo Hao's hand, I got this poisonous powder by accident. It is called Seven Snake Saliva, which is made from poison fluid of seven types of snakes. It's very easy to use. Just wipe it on the weapon, and when it cuts even a little it will take effect. Before Luo Hao could say anything, Shi Yan smirked and advanced in the direction of Di Yelan. Uncle Luo, wasn't it too mean? A warrior has his own self-esteem. To use poison is contemptible. Zhao Xian frowned and looked at the poison powder in Luo Hao's hand with contempt, then he murmured, We know nothing about that boy, and he's got so many vicious things. It's dangerous to let him stay with Miss Mew. Zhao Xian, there are not many rules here, so cut the crap. We would have been dead bodies if it weren't for his bone-chilling powder, and you wouldn't be here talking about righteousness. Luo Hao reproached angrily and said, Everybody gets to keep some powder, but don't use it too early in case it irritates those mercenaries. If it gets worse, don't hesitate to wipe it on weapons. You can reproach that boy again only when you two are still alive, understand? Got it. Dash. In the woods. Bernard and his seven people were flying fast in the woods with cold faces and obscene smiles. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Arrows flew out from the woods one after another, hard and quick, which made the mercenaries stop and react. Bernard stopped at once and smirked. 
his right hand in the cuff finally stretched out it was a shining silver iron hand. Rays of silver light exploded as the iron hand stretched out, and the light then divided into seven crescent knives in the air, and flew toward Luo Hao's hiding spot with a rush. Ka ka ka! Tree branches in the woods exploded, and fell one after another as the knives flew by. The knives let out frightening silver lights and bombarded heavily in the place where Luo Hao hid himself. Bang bang bang! An ancient tree collapsed suddenly after being cut by the knives. Luo Hao's figure showed up for a moment and disappeared into the woods again quickly. Tumu, go ahead with Kinmo. We will take care of this side. Bernard smiled cunningly with his heavy face, and added, The superior warriors are all here, while the women and that boy have run away. Remember, I need the women alive. If you kill them, you won't get even one crystal coin. Be at ease, Captain. I promise, I will bring that woman to you clean and beautiful, so that you can make her serve you however as you like. Tumu laughed loudly, Kinmo, let's go first. Ha ha. That hot chick, ha ha, I will have her first. You are lucky today, you can taste her after me. Yeah, I can't wait any more. The ugly mercenary with pimples all over his face laughed too as he advanced with Tumu. It's bad. Luo Hao was stunned, and was about to send a signal. He didn't presume that Bernard was so experienced with this kind of situation. Bernard saw through Luo Hao's plan at once and sent people to chase De Yelan pointedly. Stay here. Bernard sneered as he rushed to Luo Hao, My friend, you wanted to delay us, didn't you? Now, I won't leave, so don't you leave as well. Let's trade blows and exercise our muscles. As soon as Bernard moved, the other mercenaries separated too to search for Hu Long and Zhao Xian's traces. Dash. Carrying Mu Yudai on her back, De Yelan shuttled back and forth in the woods. Every time she touched the ground, her well-shaped long legs would pedal on the earth and thus her bonny body bounced several meters high, like a female leopard pursuing its prey. While up in the air, her short skirt under her armor flew with the wind, and her plump ass showed an attractive shape, looking extremely elastic. Shi Yan was staring at her figure joyfully and couldn't stop praising her hot body. No wonder those mercenaries couldn't get rid of De Yelan in their mind. Little bastard, stop looking at my ass. Take care of the surroundings. Keep an eye on any demon beast trails around here. De Yelan seemed to have a pair of eyes on her back, as she shouted while running. It's fine. Shi Yan broadened his mouth, there are no trails of demon beasts for the time being, but it seems that someone is chasing us. I seem to hear their light steps. Someone's after us. De Yelan was stunned, it couldn't be. The three including Uncle Luo are there. They weren't able to stop those crazy dogs. Shi Yan then stopped, bent down, and leaned his ear against the ground. He said with a serious face, Uncle Luo wasn't able to stop all the crazy dogs. Two of them are almost here. De Yelan was astonished as she stopped in front, she observed with a pale face, Kid, carry Miss Mew and leave fast. I will stay and fight with them. No, I will stay. Shi Yan shook his head, took a deep breath, answering in a low voice, I was just thinking about testing the results of my recent training. Keep going, I will catch up. Hmm, by the way, I will leave some signs as well in case Uncle Luo Hao loses trace of us after dumping those mercenaries. You, on De Yelan's back, Mu Yudai turned her head to Shi Yan and gazed at him numbly. Then a glow crossed her eyes, and she said with a complicated look on her pretty face, you could have gotten out of this trouble, originally. I know. Shi Yan smiled, but for you, I'm in. I still owe you a lot. Once I pay it back, I will leave even if you ask me to stay. Waving his hand, he urged De Yelan, Sister, what the hell are you doing? Move. De Yelan felt it a little heartbreaking to see him again, so she turned her head away and said, Little bastard, live on happily. If you can catch up again, I, I will allow you to touch my, butt. In an instant, 
she stamped on the ground and dashed out rapidly. Haha, then keep yourself clean and wait for me. Shi Yan laughed and shouted to her, I will be back soon. Di Yelan quivered, and almost fell. She gritted her teeth and cursed in her mind with blushed face, this damn bastard. Chapter 25, Ghost With his dagger, Shi Yan first engraved ugly patterns of butterflies on two tree trunks, then he climbed into one of the trees, cut down a branch as thick as an arm, chopped it into five pieces, sharpened one end of each piece, and wiped the seven snake saliva onto the sharpened ends casually. It took him two minutes to do all these things. After two minutes, Tumu and Kinmo, the two mercenaries from the Tush Mercenary Union, showed up as expected. Tumu and Kinmo didn't even take Shi Yan and the two women seriously. They were still discussing how to enjoy De Yelan with salacious faces, while shuttling in the woods. Shu! Shu! Sharpened branches went through dense leaves and flew toward Tumu and Kinmo. Tumu didn't care about it at all. He wielded his axe aimlessly and chopped two tree branches down, then he laughed happily, look at this guy, too shallow, haha. He treated us with these tree branches to lose our face. Poor guy. Kin Mo shook his head and sneered. Shoo. 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 Another three tree branches came over mightily. Tumu got a little impatient that he drew a semicircle in the air with his axe which was as long as an arm, and three tree branches fell on the ground in the silver light. Shi Yan showed up from among the bushes slowly and stared at them coldly, you two will fight together, or come up one by one. Narrowing his eyes, Tumu raised his head and examined Shi Yan. Then he shook his head disappointedly, a young kid. Of the nascent realm at most. You talk big but have limited ability. Sorry, but I'm not interested. After saying that, Tumu turned his eyes away from Shi Yan and walked away with his voice, Kinmo, take care of it quickly. Catch up to me soon, or I will F that bitch twice. Ha ha ha. Kinmo sniffed, then threw his huge wolf tooth stick onto the ground mightily, which stuck deep in the earth. Kid, come down, I won't use my weapon and don't let me climb the tree to catch you. I'm in a hurry. Be quick. Yeah, I'm in a hurry too. Shi Yan replied with indifference and calmness in his eyes. Then he jumped down the ancient tree at once, and threw his dagger out with all might into the earth beside that wolf tooth stick. Bang! Shi Yan stood ten meters away in front of Kinmo, raised his hands and waved at Kinmo, I won't use a weapon either. Hey kid! You're rather audacious. Kinmo broadened his mouth as all the pimples gathered on his face. With vicious eyes, he rushed toward Shi Yan at once. All of a sudden, Kinmo's hands swelled and blue veins popped on his fists. All his fist strikes were so heavy handed that they were making a hoo 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 sound in the air. His aggressive assault created numerous images of the fists. After five steps, there appeared dozens of fist prints ahead of Kinmo. Mortal level martial skill, star fists. Shi Yan narrowed his eyes and began to operate his profound chi calmly, clearing his mind of any other thoughts. There was only the fist images in his eyes and only the idea of kill Kinmo in his mind. Bang! With a heavy shake in his mind, he suddenly entered a different world. His eyes, ears and body suddenly got much more sensitive than before. All of the surroundings grew much clearer. Gazing at Kinmo, he could specifically sense the speed and rate at which Kinmo's profound chi flew in his arm. The fist images which had pervaded the air disappeared in an instant, and the air got clearer. Only Kinmo's waving fists were left in his eyes. Furthermore, he could even see the path his fists were traversing. After taking a deep breath, Shi Yan shouted and his arms contracted and dried at a speed which could be seen by naked eye. Soon his arms were twined with vague, white smoke. At the same time, from his neck, his skin began to petrify into grey rock, which looked as hard as iron. Dim black light spilled from his skin and covered all of his skinny body. Kinmo's iron fists, with the power to shatter rocks, struck toward Shi Yan's chest. The dark light shield twisted, and after being struck by Kinmo's iron fists, 
it turned into dark light spots, exploding in an instant. Kin Mo's fists went through the dark light shield, though with less power, and struck Xi Yan's chest heavily. Bang! Car! The sound of striking and bone breaking came at the same moment. Kin Mo's face twisted at once. The nasty pain on his fists made Kin Mo realize that it was not Xi Yan's chest, but his fists that had been splintered. Waving the painful arms with a hideous face, Kin Mo looked at Xi Yan, who was as cold as a rock, rather terrified. He seemed to remember something at that moment, thus shouted, Petrifaction Martial Spirit from the Xi family. You are from the Xi family of the Merchant Union. Brilliant. Xi Yan smiled with coldness. Kin Mo realized that he was at a disadvantage and thus tried to run, but it was too late since he was too close to Xi Yan. Xi Yan stretched out his hand like lightning and held Kin Mo's neck. The white fog around his arm, containing all the negative emotions flew into Kin Mo's body, all at once. Kin Mo was so frightened that he felt himself fall into hell and screamed while quivering, No! 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 Kin Mo kept screaming hard and waved his iron fists aimlessly, as if he couldn't see a thing, and tried to defend from the ghosts which were approaching him. Shi Yan had released his hand a long time ago. The white smoke had disappeared and his face had returned normal. He was counting the time in his mind. One, two, three, four, five. While counting, Shi Yan walked leisurely to where his dagger was struck. He pulled it out and walked over to Kinmo with light steps. When Shi Yan counted to seventeen, Kinmo seemed to be calming down gradually. His eyes were becoming clear and he was about to come around. Seventeen seconds was far more than enough to kill a person dozens of times. Nodding his head lightly, Shi Yan got to know more about the situation. He moved like lightning and slashed across Kinmo's neck with precision. Blood jetted out of his neck as Kinmo finally came back to his senses. He stared at Shi Yan in hatred and fell down with regret. Squatting down beside Kinmo, Shi Yan wiped off the blood on the dagger with Kinmo's coat, and examined Kinmo's body. He found some food, hundreds of purple crystal coins and the two sharp tusks of the fire snake. After putting these things into his bag without any hesitance, Shi Yan took a deep breath. He felt Kinmo's profound chi had all went into his own meridians. Then he stood up and murmured, someone at the second sky of the nascent realm would lose their senses for seventeen seconds under the negative power of Rampage. This martial skill is really too weird. Maybe, the more the negative power is concentrated, the stronger its power. He talked to himself for a while. Then he pulled himself together, took a deep breath and rushed in the direction where Tumu ran to. Dash. Bitch. Too damn hot. Haha. Ha. But I love it. Tumu was laughing happily and having a fight with De Yelan with his axe. Mu Yu Dai's eyes were cold. Cuddling her zither, she looked panicked and seemed to make a difficult decision. The heavy axe looked light as a feather fan in Tumu's hand. As the axe shone now and then, De Yelan's short sword was at a disadvantage. Once the short sword touched the axe, De Yelan's thin body would shake. Apparently, Tumu had a much stronger profound chi than De Yelan. Tumu's axe left shadows in the air as he wielded it, and the shadows entangled De Yelan, like rings. Between the light reflected from the axe, De Yelan's long hair flew up and down, and her short skirt was shredding through which her thighs showed up now and then. Bitch, you know my ability, hey? Don't worry, you will know soon that my best thing is not my martial skill. Ha ha ha. Tumu laughed with joy as he planned to defeat De Yelan slowly. He was teasing her deliberately. De Yelan was very furious, but she couldn't talk back and could only defend with every effort. Sister, need any help? Shi Yan's casual banter came from the woods all of a sudden. The next moment, Shi Yan showed up with the dagger in his hand. He wandered his eyes over De Yelan's thighs and butt, visible through the cracks on her skirt for a while and praised, round and smooth, plump and cute. Too good. Terrific. De Yelan was very surprised. Since she had no time to talk back now, 
she took a step back and answered loudly, You bastard! How did you survive? Tamu's face was frozen and pale. He didn't continue to chase after Di Yelan, but turned his head to Shi Yan and asked in a low voice, Is Kin Mo dead? What do you think? Holding his dagger, Shi Yan walked toward him step by step, wearing a mysterious smile. As he was advancing, his arms dried up again. The negative power flowed out from his pores, and twined around his arms again. Kin Mo's profound qi was not all purified, but as Shi Yan began to operate rampage, Kin Mo's despair and hatred before his death suddenly gushed out from his meridians, forming the hideous shadow image in front of Shi Yan, which looked just the same as Kin Mo. Kin Mo. Tumu was so astonished that his robust body quivered. Impossible. In front of Shi Yan, Kin Mo's ghostly shadow which was as light as a feather was rattling his saber. The dim eyes which were filled with hatred, showed that he would even want to kill all the people in the world. Di Yelan and Mu Yudai were astonished too. With their thin bodies shaking, they couldn't help screaming, What the hell is that? Even Shi Yan himself was astounded. Looking at the ghostly shadow in front of him, he didn't know what to do. Kin Mo. Kin Mo. What happened to you? Under Kin Mo's eyes which were full of unforgettable hatred, Tumu stepped back and shouted, I'm your companion. You enemy is behind you. Tumu's cry reminded Shi Yan. His will changed. Now there was only one thought in his mind, to kill Tumu. The negative power around his arms shot out like a weird, pale snake to Tumu. Kin Mo's shadow seemed to be stimulated by the negative power and flew lightly towards him and brutally caught him. Kill. Shi Yan yelled and rushed out. Surprised, Di Yelan raised her sword and struck toward Tumu too.